Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Thursday. It is 9 o'clock. It is our last day of budget workshops for this time. And I do call this workshop to order. Those present are Vice Mayor uh, Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, Commissioner Emmerich. We do have a quorum. We have City Clerk Taylor, City Assistant City Attorney Mr. Golan, City Manager Lear, Police Chief and Deputy Chief back there, and a lot of staff. At this time, we'll go ahead and, run and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by uh, Vice Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All righty. So at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Golan so he can um, read into the record about this hybrid type of emerge uh, <coughs> workshop meeting. Good morning, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 20-69 and the City Manager's Emergency Order number 2020-03, no in-person public attendance will be permitted during this public meeting. This meeting is being broadcast live on the City's website and on YouTube. Information about ways to watch this meeting and provide public comment are posted on the City's website at cityofnorthport.com slash online meetings posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and attached to the agenda for this meeting. To provide public comment, please submit a written comment via the online public comment form on the city's website at www.cityofnorthport.com slash public comment. The form becomes active at 9 a.m. the day before the meeting and will be deactivated at the end of public comment during the meeting. Public comment may also be made by leaving a voicemail message via telephone at 941-429- 1032. Voicemail messages will be accepted the day before the meeting from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. Required information is referenced on the online form and in the outgoing voicemail message. Comments meeting the requirements and, uh, and are timely submitted will be accepted and included in the official record of the meeting. Any comment received that does not meet the public comment requirements will be rejected and will not be included in the official record of the meeting in the city's City Attorney's opinion, these measures satisfy all applicable legal requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So um, before we get started, I, I want to share something I learned yesterday that I think is really important based on this new um, budget book that we received through GovMax and Finance. Prior to GovMax doing this, our finance department created and used Excel spreadsheets. I don't know how long they had been using those Excel spreadsheets to create the budget, but I know for the past three years that's what it was. And I have to give them huge props to create a Excel spreadsheet of that detail. That's phenomenal. And I think those Excel spreadsheets far exceed what we're seeing with GovMax. The detail that you guys had in there, off the charts. And I wish we could take that and put it here, but I had to make sure that you guys were recognized. I never knew that those were Excel spreadsheets. I thought that was a canned kind of program. So huge props to you guys. I think there was a lot of tweaking over the years to get <coughs> to what it was, what we saw, because mm -hmm. every year that I've been on, there's been a tweaking and an, a change and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I expect same thing out of this program. I mean, it's fresh, new. Uh, it's a learning curve to everything that's new, and actually I'm getting a little used to it and enjoy it. So looking forward to more tweaking. <laughs> well, a little background on those spreadsheets. They've been around since about 2011 or 12. Um, yes, they've been tweaked slightly every year, you know, just like with anything. Yep. If you all ask for something different, if there's a way we think that it can be better, they've been tweaked every year. Um, one of the, probably the biggest downsides other than just the sheer workload that they create to have to enter everything there, as well as making sure that it's in the HTE, is when things are in multiple places and you go to make a change, you 
you know, for lack of a better word, hope and pray that you catch all the places that you have to change it in. Right. And that's one of the pluses of this new GovMax software is when you make a change, just like with most softwares, it should flow right through the whole system. Um, you don't have to change it in three, four, five different places. And then hopefully import it correctly into HTE when everything is done. Um, elimination of manual processes or multiple processes into one automated process does do a big part for elimination of errors. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Um, I've had the same learning curve that you all have. The only benefit I have over you all is I started mine sooner. Um, I'm sure I drove finance nuts this year asking, what does this mean? What's this? Uh, um, so don't feel alone in that. Um, and I'm sure all the departments had their own struggles with it too. We just all started before you. So it is a process we will refine. We will get better with it. You all will get more understanding of it. It will be better, but the idea is was to get rid of a manual, highly working, uh, labor-intensive process and make it a lot easier and hopefully better. Absolutely, but just to create that manual documents, those manual documents, phenomenal, and and they they worked well even though they were extremely labor-intensive. But whoever created them and whoever tweaked them through the years, great job. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I thought it was a canned program. So good job, guys. So city manager, with that said, we will go ahead and turn it over to you for our CIP work. Eric. I'm sorry. Oh, public comment. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I am so sorry. We just I'm have one. To it right here. <laughs> it's Fred Coley. I am very, very disappointed in these workshop discussions. For two days, all you have done is nitpick nickel and dime expenditure requests like light bulbs, power washers, iPads, and so forth, yet you totally ignore the big pink elephant in the room, the 10.51% increase request in the general fund, the 10% increase request in our ad valorem taxes, the undisclosed increase requests in our non-ad valorem assessments. Let, remind, let me remind you, five commissioners, while the 725 city employees remained employed and were paid in full, the vast majority of us, other 70,000 Northport citizens, have endured coronavirus layoff, wage reductions, and major reductions in our savings accounts, 401ks, and retirement nest eggs over the past three to four months. The vast majority of us citizens are now operating with less money in our personal general funds and saving accounts due to no fault of our own. So I have to ask you, why would you even consider an, any increase in the city's general fund, let alone 10.51%? Why 10% in ad valorem increases? Why increases in non-ad valorem assessments? You commissioners should demand the city manager and city staff general fund request get zero increases, and you should be demanding and discussing areas where substantial decreases and cuts need to be made to the city's general fund to match the income reductions us citizens are experiencing right now. Us citizens have less money, so the city should operate with less money until prosperity and better times return. Again, it is time to make city operating budget cuts, not increase the general fund or our taxes. You five elected officials were elected to represent the citizens of Northport, so do your jobs and represent us, the citizens. Make city reductions and adjustments like us citizens have to, had to do. Do not allow any increases to the city's general fund for 2020-21. That's all. Is that all the public comments? Yes. Thank you. And I'll just reiterate one more time, we are not raising the ad valorem taxes by 10 plus percent. We are keeping the ad valorem rates the same. The only increase that we are talking about, talking, it's not final, is 5% to the fire department. That's it. So with that said, do you have anything there. to add, city manager? Uh, yes. Thank We've you. heard the same comment for three days now. Um, <laughs> it is not entirely true. While the budget, the general fund's budget may be increasing, um, part of those are contractual. Part of the statements I, I get, you know, because yes, people's savings accounts temporarily have gone down if the stock market is recovering, so there should be recovering as well. Um, I'm not denying what's happening in the world. I am telling you that we have union contracts that we have to follow. Um, if we don't want to follow those, then we'll get sued um, and lose because they are signed contracts we all agree to. There are automatic increases that we have no choice but to pay for. Also, 
this is an incredibly lean budget compared to previous years. Um, the statement made that, well, we should do what the citizens are doing, and I completely agree with that. But the same gentleman came in here last year when things were going great in the economy and told us we should still not increase our budget, told us we should still find reductions. So why is it OK for us now to do what the citizens are doing, but not in previous years? Um, also, if, if we, one of the things that people typically do when they have reductions in income is reduce their outflow. We can do that. They also cut back on the things they do in life. I don't think this commission or our community wants to do that because that will, remain, will mean reductions in services. We will lose police officers. We will lose firefighters. We will lose other services because that's, those are the biggest areas in this budget. As I've said many times, the police department takes up almost 100% of the ad valorem taxes that come in. So it's not meant as anything other than the statement of statistical fact. If you want to cut the budget by a large number, it means people. And if we want to cut people, let me know. Because that is, that is what that would mean. It's, it's not a fun scenario. We've done it before, and I have no desire to ever do it again. But we've lived through it once. Um, this economic downturn due to COVID, everybody believes is temporary. As soon as everything starts getting back, which we are in the process of getting back, the market is going up. Jobs will be recreated. There has been stimulus packages issued by the federal government to help these businesses get through this like the rest of us. So, you know, like I say, if that's what the commission directs, then that's what we'll do. But so far, I haven't heard anybody say cut services. I've actually heard the opposite of keep the core services that we've always had. That was our assumption back in March, and I've not heard anything differently. So with that, um, we'll move on from there. Did anybody want to say anything? Well, we already had a meeting in regards to the budget, you know, where every for this year, and we cut, what was it, like $3 million or something like that. We already know going into this year this budget that everything was tight and we were going to have to keep it tight that's why there was to be no increase to the millage uh, the natural increases of property and growth within the city you have to have growth within the services to meet that standard within the city so we're, we're not looking at anything more than what come through that new growth and development so uh, I think we're staying the course and doing what we need to do, keeping the belt tight, but not uh, screaming panic. City manager, go ahead, please. All right, well, before we move on to the CIP, one of the things that was kind of brought right at the end yesterday was the health insurance allocations. So <coughs> if, if you all will indulge that, I'd like to jump into that before we get to CIP. So I have HR here. I believe they've met with all of you, giving you an overview of our health insurance situation. But with that, I'm going to ask Christina Sandy to come on up. Good morning. For the record, Christine McDade, Human Resources Director. Um, as you know, um, Sandy met with or talked to all the commissioners went over um, what we would be looking at this year in terms, it's, it's that renewal time and it's time to make some decisions. We have open enrollment that usually takes place in uh, August. So we're hoping just to get some feedback and direction so that we can move forward. And we're here for questions. Right. Good morning, Sandy Good morning. and benefits manager for the record. Ready. Uh, as you speak, just for the edification of uh, constituents listening, mm -hmm. would you explain how in the mid-year we had to switch companies, but in all reality how that benefited us? Could you? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, as everybody's aware, uh, we switched to Aetna effective May 1st. Um, we went out to bid um, different policies where we had um, some respondents. So we signed a 17-month contract with Aetna. And what that did for the city is we were able to lock into a lower rate of the insurance than what's actually um, coming into other entities for their 
because we locked in a little bit earlier than the height of the pandemic. So essentially our 7.2% increase to the insurance was a benefit to us. The other entities are seeing a little bit higher when they're being self-insured. So I don't, does that explain that? It does. Some enough? of them were as much as 15% increase. Yeah. So we were about half. So, so we're fortunate. We were. Sort of. <laughs> uh, doing things right brings a blessing and a positivity. So that was ours for doing that. <laughs> Thank you. Were you planning to go over, because we had a one-on-one -on -one with you, we yes. understand for the benefit of the citizens okay. and employees, could, could you kind of give a quick overview of what we, we know we're going to be discussing? <laughs> right. Thank you. So we met with, um, we meet with the broker, Sean Fleming from Gearing Group, and we get a couple scenarios on the cost of the health insurance with the increases. When I met with the commissioners, we presented the two um, scenarios that we typically present, which is a zero pass to the employees or a shared of the increase, which is what we recommended this year. With the, um, the economy and the uncertainty of where everything is going, the unions had been notified that we were going to share the cost of the increase. And... Um, do you want me to go over line item of the increase per plan? I don't think that's I don't think necessary. that's necessary. Yeah. But um, how it's being split. Yeah. The seven and a half percent is being shared among the employee and the employer, the seven point two percent, sorry. Equally. Not percentage wise. Percentage wise. Yeah. Yes, percentage wise. So we had a 7.2%. I'm trying to summarize it. And, and mm -hmm. if you can do it better so than I can, please. We had a, <laughs> the, our rates have an increase of 7.2%, like you were saying. So rather than the city absorbing all of that or the employees absorbing all of it, both sides will have a 7.2%. Since the city pays the majority of that, the mm -hmm. dollar amount is larger to the city, but the percentage increase on both sides is going to be 7.2%. Why wouldn't it be 36 3.6 employee, 3.6 the city. Why would it be 7.2? Because then you'd only have a 3.6% increase in the amount. Everybody pays 7.2. So if if you paid $100 and I paid $100 and we both had 3.6%, it wouldn't get you to the numbers that you need to get to. So it's 7.2% it's overall, and it is being split based on the percentages that they were previously contributing. So oh, because of the different policies. Correct. And it's based on that individual. Now, exactly. I, now I understand. Thank you. Yep. For, uh, for double to break it or to get a little more information to that, the increase of the 7.2 on the city side is paying the employee portion, not the um, spouse, family addition to it, correct? It's an increase to all of it, the 7.2%, not just the employee. Because we cover it, we also pay for a portion of the family coverage for employees that have either children or spouse or their whole family covered. The city has contributed to that as well over the years. So it, all of so the numbers it's continuing are continuing the same percentage, just mm -hmm. increasing everybody by 7.2. 7. Okay, thank you. Yes. So the request that you're asking is, do we want the city to absorb it 100% or do we want to split it 50-50? Yes. And just so we're there, what's this. in the, right now, what's in the budget, the way this document you've been going over the last couple of days is prepared, I believe, has it being split equally. Yes. Which I am in agreement with. Sharing the cost. So let's get a consensus so city manager knows that we either want to keep it the way that they had prepared the budget with the cost sharing, or do we want it, the city to pick it up 100%, or do we want the employees to pick it up 100%? So there, there's three options on the floor. Um, Commissioner Emrich. I'm, I'm fine with the sharing. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, shared. And I'm, a, I'm shared also. So. Um, appreciate the one-on-ones. You knew how to do this. I don't know how the other commissioners were in line. So, um, city manager, you have your consensus. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys.
manager, do you want to move on, or is there anything else that you need That's to That's all jump? I needed. Okay. And I'm ready to move on. VIP? Yep. Go for it. So we'll call the police department up first. Um, as you know, while they're on their way up to explain their CIP projects, um, we have the capital improvement program. It's a five-year program. Only the current year that you're presenting with the budget is what's actually um, budgeted. The mm -hmm. rest are all potentials for the future. They're plans, um, but the amount that's in there for the upcoming year is what's in the actual budget. Before we get started, let's refresh. Okay. Um, last year, we collected 100% surtax. Surtax is sales tax percentages and stuff. What is this budget based on? That 100%, did it increase, did it decrease? What, what did we already take into account preparing this? We planned for, correct me if I'm wrong, a 7.5% reduction in what was planned to come in for surtax for next year. So we reduced that before we even started um, of how much we were going to get. So hopefully we're wrong. Hopefully we actually get what, you know, because by the time that revenue starts coming in will be October. So hopefully, like I stated earlier, the economy continues to recover. People start traveling again. People start buying stuff. And if we have more money, you know, but that being said, we had to plan for the scenario of what could happen. We do know we've had some reductions in the last couple months of what's come in, um, which is why we had the meeting that we did back at the beginning of the month, and the commission postponed about approximately $3 million worth of projects. I believe those were three in total projects that have been delayed pending whether the money comes in or not. Um, so we've already taken some fiscal measures to shore up the negative scenario that may may happen. And if it doesn't, then we'll be able to reactivate those projects. But right now, they're on hold. That being said, like next year's plan in already started with a 7.5% reduction for the whole year. 7.5% um, while, um, like Mayor mentioned at the meeting we had at the beginning of the month, We've had some higher percentage reductions in the last couple months spread over the whole year. We were ahead before this happened. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of smoothed that out and took 7.5% off the entire year's collections for next year. Do you, and I don't know how much forecasting you've done, and I know with the, the social climate across the country these past few months and these past few weeks, um, our forecasts for tourism and um, to this city, to this area, still similar to what it was last year? Or are they reducing those numbers also, um, so, especially tourism, in light of what's been going on with shutting down interstates, traveling, the rioting that's going on in communities? Um, are they forecasting that to have an impact? Um, at least temporary one. It already has had a temporary one. Um, but some of the, like the short-term rentals, those are starting to come back. Um, people are starting to, to rent places. Uh, most of it's in-state right now. But um, as um, you may remember when we had the Council of Governments meeting, the, air, the airport in Sarasota is starting to pick back up. Um, other people are starting to travel as the airlines pick back up. We will, you know, we will see those numbers start to increase as shopping places start opening. Um, I myself was at UTC a couple weeks ago because I have a daughter that graduated high school this year, so that required graduation purchases. So fortunately, things like that, it, it's starting to pick back up. People are shopping. People have continued to shop online. Now they're just doing it at our local businesses um, in person. So as those numbers start to increase, I believe that we will see a, a rebound in some of these things. Thank you. But we were conservative, as you know we always are. We always keep the revenue numbers low. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty, Chief. I guess we're going to turn this over to you now. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Todd Garrison, Chief of Police, Deputy Chief Chris Morales. Um, we're going to present to you our CIP projects. Uh, Deputy Chief Morales is my project manager on these projects, so I'm going to go ahead and let him speak about these uh, items. It's part no. of the job description. Somewhere in there. If not, it will be. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little caveat line. 
Okay. He works for Cookies Home. Thank you. PA. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commission. Um, currently, uh, PD has uh, four CIP projects. Um, display your first one, as, as you're aware, is the uh, CIP for the police expansion. Um, that currently, as you know, that we've been in uh, a feasibility study. Uh, we, we spoke about this in the previous meetings. Um, and that's kind of where this has stayed with right now as far as um, expenditures on this project. Uh, and I believe we're not carrying any uh, funding into uh, 2021 fiscal year. Um, so that project has been actually uh, stagnant right now with just a feasibility study. Yes, ma'am. Uh, something that I was wondering about, if it's all right, Mayor. Uh, are they done with their presentation? Well, it's on this topic. Oh, OK. Uh, You've got um, 453000 in there for that project. Because this is for an expansion of your facilities and stuff, could that money be used for the lease or the rent or the configuration of a building for the storage that you were talking about yesterday? For the other CIP project we're going to be talking about as far as the vendors, is that what you're referring yes. to? Uh, Sam, do you want to? Sure, sure. No, the short answer is um, it okay. can't be used for the lease. It could be used for capital things, but it could not be used to pay the lease payment. It could not be used to pay. Um, so if we wanted to retrofit uh, the Al Gore building to make the ceiling higher or something? For it that could be used for something thing, like that. It could be used. OK, thank you. Okay. Any questions on? This one project, I, I, I figured I'd go from project to project. Or would you would, like to okay. go? Okay, just were you talking about the police station construction first? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. I, I just wanted to make sure that yep. that's where we were. <laughs> e Thank you. I didn't have any questions. Does anybody have any questions on the project for the police station construction? One. Is this going to be something where? We'll have to just continuously keep saving because there's, I mean, this isn't even close to what you're going to need. This will most likely require some kind of debt financing. That's okay. All right. Because I was looking at, I'm like, what's that going to get you? A box? <laughs> Front door. And just yeah. for, just for the. Can I have a permit? <laughs> <laughs> I was going. <laughs> for the public's uh, information, there's no money being put into this project this fiscal year. Correct, correct. correct. Want to make sure that's very clear. <laughs> it won't matter. Okay. Um, our next CIP uh, project is going to be uh, PD 21 DT, which is the driving track. Um, currently, uh, I want to say over a little over a year ago, the um, the city and the school board had a lease agreement where uh, I think it was back into the early 90s that um, the uh, Sarsonite School Board was leasing the land there next to utilities. Um, in an agreement for I think it was a dollar a uh, dollar a year with the school board uh, last year we broke um, the lease with school board took back um, control of the of the track in the in the land there and the driving track the actual asphalt uh, is in dire need to be repaved I think it's been over well over a decade um, since that uh, has been resurfaced probably in the 90s uh, the sheriff's office uh, back in 2018 uh, end of 2018 had done some quotes um, before the track was turned over to us uh, to get it that resurfaced and um, we took those quotes and pretty much um, gave a good estimate of what the cost would be today uh, to have that track resurfaced um, because it is in, in desperate need to be resurfaced uh, out there. Uh, there is a, a possibility of, of a uh, partnership with that cost um, but we are paying the full amount right now of what it would be if we had to uh, pay it all ourselves. So there, there could be some cost savings in that, that total number that you see in front of you today. Does anybody have any questions on um, the public safety driving track resurface? Uh, well, it's not really about the res resurface. It's more about our, we were talking about the fire um, tower that got next for this area, correct? No, ma'am. Um, that's, that's a project that's been in there for years and years. Right. Um, and the fire chief, when he comes up, will give you an update on where they are. But they're they're 
getting very close to where they'll be able to do something there at that same place. The reason why I'm asking is that maybe there's a cost allocation that the fire can help with in the district as well as PD so that they can, I know that it's somewhat a similar, um, a separate area per se, but maybe there's a way that you can share cost in the whatever needs to be done there. We're already looking for, because if you remember last year, we talked about a, a public safety and training complex, which is what's going to be this right. entire piece of property once we find a new home for the utilities admin center. Um, so it's, it's a phased project because the fire training tower is ready to go. Good, okay. So. Just trying to reduce the general fund budget. <laughs> This is coming out, this of, is coming sur out of surtax, well, and actually most true. of the training tower is as well. My, my question in regards to that whole thing is, I mean, and this deflects the question I was going to have when fire department come up. So does all of this have to wait until utilities is moved, or can we go ahead? I know paving, you can go ahead, but the whole... Putting they're, that whole complex they're, together. They're, they're doing a good job. That's why part of why I mentioned it'll be a phased project. They're like the training tower. They're looking at how the whole property, including the utilities property, can be set up while realizing what can we do now with the pieces that we already have. Okay. That's what I needed to know. I didn't want to prove something and then you gotta wait three years or something. All right, thank you. That's it. I have a couple of questions. Um if you re in this is just making sure that we're doing it in the correct order. If you resurface and then you have construction of the tower, will that harm the resurfacing that you just Won't did? No. Won't even come close to correct. it? Okay. Um, and now I guess this is a question for city manager. I remember when Price Boulevard got resurfaced, we could not use surtax because you're not increasing capacity. So how can no, you, you can use impact fees? Impact fees. You gotcha. can use surtax. Okay. Now I, I routinely. I, I was on the right track, wrong, yep. wrong bucket. <laughs> all righty. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else have questions? All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, next CIP project uh, is going to be PD21LP. Um, these are the automated license plate readers. Um, we're looking, as you can see, the improvement uh, in enhancing our license plate readers throughout our city. Uh, it enhances the safety of the community and law enforcement by providing the immediate alerts uh, when wanted vehicles or people are located uh, within potential, uh, <coughs> with the potential to prevent crime. Uh, the LPRs uh, further provide strong leads to investigations when a vehicle is used in the commission of a crime within the city, uh, which could lead to quick identifying suspects, quickly identifying suspects and locating uh, loved ones who have been reported missing, silver alerts, abductions, etc. The selected locations would capture vehicles traveling in and out of our city through the main points of travel. Staff is recommending a two-phase implementation approach, fiscal year 2021, approximately 13 uh, location sites to be installed, and in 21-22, approximately 10 uh, additional location sites to be installed. Does anybody have any questions on this? One. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm understanding it's phase 13 and 10, so I see where uh, a little over half a million next year for it. But down at the bottom, it says future funding requirements, 27,000. Yes. What? That, what that's put in there was um, inflation costs because of the second year for equipment, because we're not buying it all in one, one shot. We're doing two phase approach. So we have to have a, a, an inflation cost in there for equipment because we're buying it into the second year. So I'm, I'm not sure what the equipment's gonna cost again uh, for that into that second year okay so it might be the uh, 539 plus 27 right for a total of 1.2 i believe it's going to be but you're talking about getting the what was it 13 this year 10 following year that those are the locations site locations yes so 13 locations this year yes right and 10 the following right and you'd save the 27 if you got them all at once, or is it even possible to get them all at once? Probably not. Uh, I think it, we can get it all at once, but the infrastructure part of doing that all in that year is going to be very time. So I think the best approach is 
we want to do a two-phase approach. In the first approach for phase one, and I, I know, uh, commissioners, you're all familiar with, with this technology, is that we would put them in the main, uh, the main corridors of our city. And then the second phase would go on step, the outer approaches. So um, I recommend, and so does the chief, when we approach this to do it in a two-phase approach. I had no problem with that. It's just trying to understand the... And, and this would be something in, we would be working. I didn't mean to cut you off, Vice Mayor, I'm sorry. I saw uh, Chuck speak uh, from uh, Public Works that we've been working with Julie's team uh, in the actual teamwork in doing the infrastructure part of, of these uh, locations. Uh, and as I was saying, it wasn't really questioning what you're doing. I was just, it was more of a financial question. You know, it's showing up here under program funding what the fiscal year 2022 would be, but then down at the very bottom, future funding requirements, 27,000. I didn't know how to read that, it, you know, that learning curve. So that's why I was wondering why it said for the future 27,000, but at the top it's saying that next year they're gonna fund, or they want to fund 539,000, just trying to figure the programming of the budgeting out. If you look at the box where it starts 1.1 million program funding budgeted for fiscal year 2021, it says 634. Going over to fiscal year 2022, it says 539. Continuing, continuing at the very, very end, it says future funding 27 million, and I didn't know what that was either. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out how to read it. So to the first thing, it looks like it was added to the project activity, but not to the budget. The twenty-seven thousand. This would be a next year cost. It's a next year item. Depending though. on what they, you know, what they negotiate for next year's for the ten, we may need it, we may not. It's just kind of a placeholder to let you know it may go up a little bit next year because it's a two-phase project, mm -hmm. and it would also come out of their tax. Why not just put twenty-seven? 27,000 plus 539,000 in fiscal year 2022. That way then it's there. We know it's going to be there for next year. We can do that. Because this, I thought, was operations. I thought this was like maybe repairs that might be needed or something like that. So um, if, it, if they need this 27,000 for fiscal year 22, it should be added to 2022. For, for inflation, I would say it would yeah. just show the larger. The, price, the construction price index for the Tampa Bay area. Right. So that is just in case inflation. You brought uh, up a great. I'm sorry, were you, were you finished, Vice Mayor, with that? Did you it's get your answer? It's about that. I, I got I got my answer. Are we going to be combining it yeah. or okay? okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, you. I, you brought up a great point. Is um, maintenance? Is there a built-in cost for the maintenance of this? Yes, um, there is. Um, there is maintenance and licensing moving forward. That's built in to the cost. And obviously, um, the more cameras you have, the less cost in licensing. And in the licensing, in the warranty, it's all included. Uh, and it would be a five-year uh, uh, warranty and maintenance coverage uh, for this project. But there would be reoccurring costs each year. Um, and also with this project, um, there is also another possibility of reoccurring costs, cost savings sharing with other entities that would want to that would want to be involved. So the reoccurring costs, what are those each year? Um, we'll say 27,000. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shouldn't be that much, should it? Yeah, it's whole. So the reoccurring costs for the first year would be approximately um, If we had those partnerships that we talked about, um, around twenty-seven thousand, um, and then in the second final, uh, the second year would be thirty-seven thousand, when we're fully operational. So that's what the twenty-seven thousand actually is—is is the main or the ongoing maintenance? No no, 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 no. That's just if we were to buy all the equipment in the first year, um, 
and get that cost savings, that would be great. But I don't think we can, and Chuck and, and his team and Julie, I don't think we would be able to get that all done in one year as a, as a big project. So if we were to buy that all in one year, then I have all this equipment sitting that's gonna lose its warranty. Mm -hmm. Does that make, does that make yeah, sense? Absolutely. Actually, our executive system brought that up and because she's good at figuring that out, that we would buy all this at one time, <laughs> business manager, so. And uh, business part right there, which didn't click. We would have all that sitting, and I'm out of warranty for the first year. So we would probably do with what we can handle that phase one approach. And again, this is something both between public works and police, as far as working together for infrastructure, that that is doable. So we don't want to we don't want to do something that we can't meet and and waste and, and waste money on that. So our our approach is to let's do the phase one and phase two approach and buy. And if there is an inflation cost, but again. With vendors, you can always talk with them and, and, and work with them with the, with the pricing. And the more you buy, the less, obviously, you know it, it is. But um, with this, I don't think we can we can approach all those locations at one okay, time. Let, let's say we go through this year, we go through next year, and your program has got the 23 places, and you're done. What's the maintenance yearly for those 23 locations? For the first year? Or the when we... How much you would, I mean, is it a five-year contract with somebody? Is it? So each year, uh, if we were to be at full, okay, and having the partnerships between, I believe, public works, because there is there is some vested interest with public works with these uh, uh, license plate readers. Um, and um, I just want to leave us as other entities without mentioning names because I'm not committed to the year. We're looking at around 37000 in the second year. That's when we're fully operational for the licensing fees and maintenance. So if anything breaks down, any updates, we don't pay anything. If anything breaks, um, it's it's replaced. One one camera is twelve thousand dollars. So that's covered for five years with that maintenance agreement. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have questions? I just have one. So if you have thirteen sites. Does that mean you're buying 13 cameras? No, ma'am, no. Multiple cameras per site. Okay. Different directions. So how many cameras are you looking at buying for these 13 sites? I know I can do the math, but I'm just asking you because I'm sure you have it very quick and handy. Total, uh, total sites? No, total cameras. Total cameras for the entire project. For the first year, for the 13 sites. Well, some sites may have one, some sites Hold on, may I have one. I got it here. I got it. I know I do. Stand by. <laughs> I swear. It's like pressure. All right. I'm going to do my math to see if I get it done first. 36, what, 36 cameras. Year two is 26. 26, you said, for year two? Yes, yes ma'am. 36 year one, 26 year two. Okay. So when I hear these... Um, license plate readers, I hear they're able to be moved around town. Do you sound like these are stationary? They're fixed. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Anybody we else? We do have the ones that you can move around currently. You only have one? I thought you had more. We wish we had more. We are, we are in the process of trying to obtain more that helps us isolate locations in a more defined area, as all of you are aware. Um, they're, they're very, very, very valuable, so we are trying to get approximately two more. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. And those are through grants, by the way. Yes. And just for the public, um, this is going to have uh, impact for surtax of $634,000. For, for this year? Yes, ma'am. Yep. All right. Next one. Uh, next one, Mayor's PD uh, 21. Uh, it's going to be for our property evidence, uh, construction of building. We're looking at leasing the Benderson project. Um, as you're aware, uh, they are building a in commercial industrial building off of Tweedle Blade by Panacea. And we have been in talks with them as trying to get estimated costs uh, per year um, in actually leasing 13,000 square feet of their facility for our property evidence uh, storage area and staff. 
I have I'm, questions. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go first this time. We'll, I'm going to try and rotate it. Um, I have an aerial, too, if they want to pull up to show the, the Benderson project here. So in the title, it says construction of building for property and evidence. But what I read is that it's for the rental space at this at this new Benderson location. So two, two parts. So in our in our budget, we we provided the leasing. Correct. This would be the uh, the build out inside of the, the structure. All you're getting is a is the shell. shell. So now you're building Completely. inside yeah. the They'll shell. They'll bring us now water and electric there, and we have to take it from there. It'll be an empty shell. So this is for the build out of this space right. once you get in, and that can be done with Surtax. Thank you. Well, that sure explained a lot. One little word. Thank you. That way it gives us the opportunity to design it for our space needs and future expansion there. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Commissioner Carson. So the total for this build out is what again? 1.3 million and they're using Surtex. 1.3 million to build out someone else's building. Inside, the inside, right. Why wouldn't we just purchase a property and build our own storage facility versus paying rent to them on an annual basis? That just seems like a lot of money for, what was the square footage, 13,000 square feet? Mm -hmm. It's 13,000 square feet. It's, it's approximately, I want to say with the insurance and taxes, it's around 985 a square foot. And it runs through about probably approximately 10,000 a month. Um, but one of the things that we didn't capture that uh, Derek Applegate uh, from the city uh, let us know when he was looking at the plans, he goes, you know, even though you have 13,000 uh, square feet that you're paying for, he goes, you actually have 26,000 square feet. So I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, from floor to ceiling is 32 feet. Oh, wow. Okay. So there is a potential that you, there is a lot of room in this building that we could go through design up and have more space in the back. So technically, the way the building is and not the height, it's actually 26,000 square feet. Tomato, build. tomato, you, uh, but, I get it, but point over the is, course of 10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. If you, you I guess if you own. take the, over the course of the, uh, say it's 128,000 a year and we do for seven years, it's a little over 800,000 over the course of seven years um, to lease that. We did a seven year, uh, our proposal is a seven year lease because we don't know with timing and everything, um, how long it's gonna be to where we would see a new facility or an expansion. Um, so with that, that's around 800,000 plus this, I think we're still going to be a lot less than buying land, building a, a building for the next seven years uh, with what we need now. We, we need to do something now. So uh, I think that's gonna take, even if we were to buy a building and build and construct, that you're, we're still looking about two, three years out, two years out maybe. And two years is a rush. Well, my concern is that we're going to spend this money and then when it comes time that this isn't going to do it anymore either, we spent all this money when we should have just done it right the first time because that's kind of... Sure. Why aren't we just spending the 1.7, essentially, um, and building the building? Like, I, I think that there's merit to making the investment in your own versus serving someone else's pocket. That's just my theory. I mean, come three years down the road and this million is now gone, you know what I mean? Like, okay, now what do we do? And we need to find a larger facility, but all that money was already spent. Do we renew the lease? I mean... I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. And how long until that building is going to be completed? Do they have a deadline of when it's going to be completed? They have uh, approximately, and speaking with the Bendersons uh, yesterday, is they're looking at third quarter next, next year. year. Next year in the late uh, March? July. March, you think? I would say between July. April and June. Anywhere Probably. between April and June. Mm -hmm. So that's nearly an entire year. Is the um, is the monthly rental 
a part of this budget? And no. no. Okay. All right. Nope. So that was in our 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 budget presentation. I believe Mayor brought it up about the the seventy. I think it was around seventy thousand. They were talking about that was right. in there. Um, and he actually, believe it or not, that's money we probably may or may not spend because even the in speaking with the Benderson um, team is that when they do open in June, they would allow anywhere from five to six months of construction to us be in there before we actually charge, you know, the rent, they would give us that uh, a grace. But I was going to say, whenever you negotiate a lease, I know this from commercial yeah. leases, we always say, you know, look, we're going to put this kind of money in the improvements, but in sure. return, you're going to give me a six month sure. free space. I don't know. I guess I, I'm a little concerned about spending this money for someone else's building when we should be doing it ourselves. That's all. I mean, you guys are the professionals, you know, what's best but I I just wish that we in the past I can only go by the the sins of our past and that is invested in ourselves ahead of time so that we weren't here where we are today and and I just hope that we do a better job at that if, if that makes sense and to piggyback off that yesterday when we were talking about the lease and I said hey what about portables hey what about using Al Gaul? And it was reminded to us, well, you have to have electric, you have to have bathrooms, you have to have this, you have to have that, which is basically what that lease space is saying you have to have $1.3 million for. Mm -hmm. so, so you're, when I said, hey, how about portables? It was, and how we, because we have to do all this, well, now that I understand this 1.3 million is for build out, I have to go, well, wait a minute. Let's go back to the idea about these portables and, and finding other storage. I, well, the portables, I we already put had a problem with that. In airport units. Okay, no. so it's because I mean, of the property evidence to storage. To, I'd be able to secure that. Yes. So I, I, I go back to an existing building that we have that is currently vacant and it's going to be vacant probably for three years. I don't know the square footage of the Al Gaul Center, but. I'm sure you can get in there, you know, and, and redo the shell. I, I don't know. I'm not a construction engineer. I don't know the, the things with the Al Gaul Center, but that is free space that you can use for this storage, maybe not for the vehicles. Maybe you can use the Al Gaul Center for other storage and shrink what you're trying to do at the um, Benderson location. One of our One of our major concerns is the vehicles that oh, yeah. is a huge component to this problem solving mechanism oh, yeah. is that um i mean i recently we had zero space left in the back parking lot of the police station because it was tied up with homicide vehicles um traffic homicide vehicles actual homicide vehicles i mean the one traffic homicide investigation alone we brought in five vehicles um so we don't have, we need to do something with those cars. And the other thing is, is we, we need to try to secure them as evidence as best as possible. And ideally in that back parking lot is not the best practice to secure evidence, especially in capital cases. Can I speak so, to uh, Hang on one second, if you don't mind. Just throwing it out there, can you, can you, I know they make lifts that you can store vehicles on top of each other maybe that'll help cut you know put them on top of each other i i, I don't know i'm just I'm, i'd be I'm kind concerned of, about cutting that all gall open though well i i just even <laughs> back here you can do that you know put them on top of each other they have those kind of lifts those the kind of problem is lifts. is that i still need to try to secure them as best as possible right to the limit that people get yeah, yeah that's a restricted parking lot mm -hmm. that is not a secure parking lot it's a restricted parking lot it needs to be enclosed and air conditioned, essentially. We have to pay air conditioning to. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I am um, in agreement pretty okay. much with Commissioner Carazel. Uh, this, you guys as police department don't own extra property, but the city does. And to slap up a steel building to be able to store all of your vehicles in, um, you're going to end up with that building in the long run. And it's kind of like renting versus buying a house. Mm -hmm. uh, your rent money goes down the drain. But if you're putting it into a construction that can be utilized and kept, and it, 
that has more value to it. So I would be more inclined to finding some property. Steel buildings can be secure, heavily secure. You can put a fence around them. You can put security cameras, alarms, uh, code a gate, just like you have for your back. I mean, there's a lot that can be done to a steel constructed uh, building. It's your vehicles are out of the sun. Uh, it's pretty much fireproof. Uh, so I would be more inclined to seeing where it might take a little bit more money than this to build that, then you have but to. it's yours then for the next um, you know, 30, 50 years rather than a seven year mm -hmm. time Band frame. Aid. And you're not going to be having the money into it outside of the maintenance and steel buildings. Trust me, been in the business. Uh, they're not that much maintenance, but your equipment is your cameras and stuff like that, you know, would be cloud based. And so there would be some reoccurring, but it's not going to be 120 to 150,000 a year going into somebody else's pocket. I agree. Thank you. And let me clarify about the air conditioning. The air conditioning it would be for the property evidence. I know that that has to be kept if it's going uh, to be evidence. Got to be final. Yeah. Right. Well, Cars that's why I said steel but building. But like, this, this not all of this is air conditioning. Right, right. Yeah. Well, steel building can handle the vehicles. And you said the largest problem was the vehicles. Well, so that largest problem could be addressed with that. But in the steel building, if you want to put property evidence, you build you out that, out. and you put your air conditioning in there. My whole property, you're right, the vehicles is a large part of it. My whole issue is property and evidence. As you all have seen, right. I, we've converted our holding cells into property storage. That's, that's not what they were designed for. So, I mean, it's ideally we're out of that space, and we keep growing. And, stay and, and I want your here. problem solved, mm -hmm. but I want it to be done as fiscally sensible, I don't, I don't not disagree to with be you, wasteful, but to have something you'll be able to use for 50 I, years. I don't disagree with you. Our mindset behind this is this is ideally not the direction we originally wanted, wanted to exactly. go because the build out of the police station expansion was going to solve these problems, which that would still probably be addressed in that plan when it comes forward to you guys. But you know what, Chief, when that comes, we may be seeing a whole different problem. Like it may be beyond that study. So because we're so far behind is what I'm trying to say is that by the time that study comes up, it might be, well, this was good then, but now we've had this happen and we really need more. Right. Um, you know, studies are only as good as, as the day they're done. Let's put it that way. Um, I just feel like we've not done enough investing in our future growth and trying to forecast our needs versus just addressing what's happening right now. And as the other commissioners have said, I would rather see us put more money into something that's yours, that's designed the way you need it, wherever that property may be, and, and then you take care of that and you make it whatever you need it to be and steel buildings are very mm -hmm. easy simple um and they're hurricane proof and security and we, proof we've seen steel buildings i actually chief garrison took me down to um lee county sheriff's office and they're just off the interstate and it's a, it's like a, a hanger a plane hanger yeah and it's all yeah, open yeah, in that concept yeah. so we've seen that he's he's come from that concept so absolutely i, I really think Sorry. Finish. I just think that it's it's the more prudent way to address something like this. I know there's a need immediately, but we're talking about an entire year before you're even yeah, able to. Yeah, that's not immediate. Yeah. So I think finding the property, putting up the building might actually be faster than getting into that building. That's my Mr. opinion. Mr. Yeah, the only question I had, I'm, I'm in agreement. You guys, you definitely need this, but you had mentioned staff. Would that be moving all of your evidence staff yes, from yes. this building to this location, yes. and then they'd be working all out of it? Absolutely. Staff would go there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I wanted to know because that would free up a lot of room as well over there with with staffing. So I just wanted to put that out there and ask that. Going I'm going to just 
add one thing because it came to mind after having the discussion about the rental yesterday. That rental is also all contingent on Benderson completing that project. And there is absolutely no guarantee, given the climate that we're in, that that project is going to be completed next year. I mean, we saw we saw Legion. Yeah, we're going to be done. Mm-hmm. We're going to be done. And then uh, look what happened with Allegiant. <laughs> so while I, I fully expect Benderson to move forward, we have no guarantee that they are. And then what are we going to do? If, if maybe you guys could come back to us with more options in July or maybe put this on hold um, and instead of construction for build out, come up with a, a plan B or C so that way then we can address your needs immediately within six to nine months versus a year or so. I, I, would, like to I would recommend that <coughs> if you just excuse, leave this one where it is, the, the funding. Right. Let, exactly right. what you just said. Right. Mm-hmm. That I, I want to make sure that we can't bring you options if you take the funding away. So right. I, no, I, I'm I know not you didn't say that. I just want to be no, clear. Yeah, about it. Yeah, I'm not it's saying to take the funding away. I just want to be clear so that everybody knows we're not <laughs> removing that. Um, we can removing look at everything. Yeah, right. we can look we at everything you've said here. Our options. Um, I, I do have concerns about the Algal building being used because of other things you already have our, us working on to at, for that property. Um, so if, if all that happens, then that's not an option either. But let us bring you options. We may have some others we can look into also. Um, and if this still turns out to be the best option, then maybe that's the one we'll move forward with. But we'll bring you more options for the July meeting. And the only reason why I keep bringing up Algal is it's space available now. That's the only reason why I keep bringing it up. It is an instantaneous Band-Aid. Um, and that's why I kept bringing it up. But if it's not a viable option, I don't know that until somebody says, this is not viable, then it goes, sure. okay, out of my brain. <laughs> yep. So, so we'll bring you all well, the options. It was for the just goal. looking at all options, right. all availability. My brother has two huge steel buildings. Uh, the last one he built uh, has a full court, basketball court in it. Uh, has a hanger for an airplane. So you're saying we can put a basketball court in our design? <laughs> I would like a roller. He's got, he's, got, he's got a workout start, start center skin. in it. He's got a sauna in it. He's got an he office that's built out. So he works out of it. Board. Full wood shop in there. People I mean, you can do, built you can do anything in these steel buildings and build them out. Anything and, but a basketball court for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he coaches You basketball. can't put a hot water heater in there. I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, he, I mean, that's something that he has all utilities. Uh, he heats it, he cools it. I mean, you can do whatever you want to in these steel buildings. And he had the large one. Well, both of them were slapped up uh, within six to nine months. Yeah, ours complete. was done within a month. And I, I, I appreciate your all's support on knowing that the, the need for this, that why we're pushing forward is that we have to do something yeah. now because of the constraints we're in and knowing that the future, it's gonna be several years. And that's why the you know the chief and I are very strong on, we need to do something, we can't still sit and wait. So I appreciate that we're just presenting options mm-hmm. and I appreciate what you want us to look at. And we will definitely work with the city manager on, on getting back those options to you uh, very, very soon. And that's the only reason this is coming before you. Because, Absolutely. You know, we don't want to not spend the money wisely. Right, but, right, right. You know, when this, this feasibility study and this project kind of derailed a little bit and, and now you're looking at multi-year push out, mm-hmm. I have to look at the, Short the, term. the immediate yeah. needs. Right. Solve those so. problems now. It's triage. I, can I just, Go ahead. I just want to make it very clear, we all understand your Thank immediate you. needs. Thank you. I think what we're trying to do is say, we also see there's going to be a future need. And so investing in that all together now will save us money later. We don't disagree with you. And and I know that you all are trying to be as fiscally conservative as humanly possible. I know that you're really trying to just address the issue today. And and I think that this commission is willing to address the future needs as well. So let's let's get this done because it's not going away. It's just gonna get worse. So let's get a consensus to have city manager um, adjust the description of this project accordingly for July. 
I'll keep it very open and broad. Keeping the funding. Is that good enough, uh, city manager? Based, Just to keep it open? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. We're going to do, we're going to keep the funding, but we're adjusting the description because you're going to come back with other options. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm good. Um, yes. yes, Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Armitage. Yeah. The, uh, the one, only one thing I wanted to add on to that, I'm a yes on that. Um, the only reason I'm not in favor of, of Algol, it's, it's not an immediate fix right now because it does need to be refurbished, this, that, and the other. But I would much rather lean towards new building Absolutely. on a new property to where it can be more design specific for their needs. So, you know, I, I would much rather look at that and not waste time on Algol. And, that's, and that's just my opinion. And that's why I made the statement I thought it would help with the immediate right now need yeah. that they have. Hearing that that's not an option, Al Gall's out of my brain and it won't be mentioned. No, no, I, that, <laughs> I, I just wanted to put that out there since that was on the table. And Commissioner, you bring up a good point. When it comes to property evidence, there is a lot of additional, and they call it hardening of a building in certain, in certain, um, what's your, bless you. Yes. Julie. <laughs> in certain um, components within property evidence that has to be hardened. And uh, like I said, one of the things you bring up is that part of accreditation standards, you have to have a self-generator at that location. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, right there is, is a big price tag just on that alone. So there brings up a good, a valid point that just the, the construction alone, it's a lot more hardening than a normal building would go up just for property evidence because of security. Thank you for the education on yeah. it. Thank you. And I just want to say this because you guys don't know, but Pete would, and definitely, Chris will. Uh oh. Just thinking of Algal Hall <laughs> reminds me of the old police department and the property evidence that was kept at that old police department and what happened to that property evidence at the old police department. We had department. a lot of happy mice over there, we didn't sure we? We did. <laughs> <laughs> so I just can't even. Think saying? of it. <laughs> I remained silent during the whole golf. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you for bringing up because I 100% agree with you. It was just the first thing that popped in my head. Is there anything else, Chief? No. Thank you, Mayor. No. Thank you. Okay. Now, I, now that you're finished, I have to ask. Um, I see your black thing on there. Is is it for anybody local? Yeah, it's Any for the FWC officer that was shot and killed in LaBelle. He was Thank off you. duty trying to stop a hit and run yeah. incident, and the subject shot him. Phenomenal gentleman. I mean, I've been heard watching a lot him. of great stories about oh, him. Goodness, He's yeah. loved by this community. So, yeah. very sad. Thank you. But thank you for asking. Thank you for the thank respect. You. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate thank you. it. All right, city manager, moving on to who's the lucky next victim? I mean, fire chief. Fire chief. And finance, what page is fire chief stuff on? Thank you. <laughs> It'll help save us some time. So now that we got done saying yes, it's time to switch to no, since it's fine. Didn't we say that last time? Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I thought so. Who is that masked man? Yay! Thanks. Are your eyes doing better today, Chief? No, just... unfortunately, I've had an ongoing problem, and I've been trying to get a specialist through the whole COVID thing. I was not able to. Yes. When it's open back up now, I don't have an appointment until the 20, 24th or 25th. Oh, no, don't That's we know time. that feeling. Yeah, so, but we'll get through. If there's something I can't read, I have, I have help. You have a backup. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, Scott Titus for Fire Chief for your Fire Rescue District. Um, today to talk about CIP, the, the impact that you're going to see in the fiscal year 21 budget um, for our CIP um, for the current year that's being proposed. The only change is additional funding for the Fire Station 81 remodel project, which we touched on a little bit yesterday. Uh, there is uh, 3,000, oh, 3,000, I wish it was 3,000. There's 300,000 dollars scheduled um, from the Fire Rescue District to go into that project because we believe that project is underfunded. And then there is an additional money. It is $95,850 dollars which was the escalated cost 2.8% construction increase that was provided by finance. So that was just, that was scheduled in. That was a 95,000? Yes, sir. Uh, it's 95,850 95, if my right. eyes are. No, I was just, I, I've yes, seen sir. that number. I was just making sure that's what I it was for. Again to make sure I well, I wanted to make you use your eyes, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I'm, I am prepared to answer any questions. I can go through each of the other CIP projects if you prefer. They have been on the uh, books for a while. There's no changes that for fiscal year 21. I believe the only additional change at this point uh, involved fiscal year 22. We added um, some funds to the um, public safety training complex, $82,500. Um, and I think that's something that as we continue to grow and expand um, that training complex for both police, fire, tech rescue, um, all those things, that, that money that's scheduled in there is intended to be for a, a prop that we would build and it will serve multiple functions. So it would be able, we would be able to do confined space entry with that prop, we would be able to do tech, trench rescue, all of our tech rescue um, uh, disciplines, we would be able to train with that. It would help us, one of the things we're seeking is to become a regional training center for USAR. Um, mm -hmm. So that would help us have what we need to do there to do that. Uh, the police department could use it for searches and things like that. So there's some multi-purposes to it. Will you be able to start construction of it this year? Uh, of the of the tr training tower, yes. We, we absolutely will. Of the uh, money that's scheduled for 22, we, we would not. We would wait until, obviously, fiscal year 22, when we talk about it, make sure that it's approved, make sure that our numbers are are correct and everything else and that and that we've completed everything else we said we were going to do first so thank you yeah and with that training tower you said from start to finish that was going to be a pretty quick construction correct once once they're on site it's very quick construction this, you know i you know, steel yeah as you <laughs> well they're 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 metal um they're metal boxes they come in it's kind of like legos they put mm -hmm. them together yeah. uh, they can them do things like that the to our steel building. I know, right? <laughs> the time is, uh, is of course, in the preparation of the property, doing the engineering and all, and all of those other sure. things. So, um, right now, we have a contract with Pannoni uh, that was approved by you all in May for that mm -hmm. project. Um, there was a project kickoff meeting to discuss the project and the schedule, which has been worked on. Property uh, has been surveyed, which was completed on June 16th. Uh, there's an on site meeting scheduled with Pannoni on July 7th and 8th to discuss the layout of the facility and review the survey. And we hope to have initial documents into SDR for review by the end of July. Looking forward to the grand opening of that. We're very excited. I wanted to show you a picture today, but I actually kind of wanted to be a surprise. But we're, we're I think, Look for those of you who've been here for a while and even those of you that don't. I was just going to say, I'm telling you, this is one of those deals that I feel like has lasted my entire lifetime to finally get Me done. <laughs> and Me too. I cannot wait till it's actually accomplished. I mean. In 1995, as a new firefighter, the uh, chief at the time sent out an email and said, hey, does anybody have any idea for project ideas? So the first time I submitted for a training tower, I was a firefighter that had been here for two years, fire training complex. So that's when it started and yeah. we've been pursuing it. Ever since. Uh, uh, since then, he kind of laughed at me, I think, at that time. <laughs> and look at Just because I was a new firefighter, not because yeah. it was a bad idea. Obviously, I think it was something that they were working on as well. But it's uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's gone through you know, a lot of different phases, a lot of different mm -hmm. things. We were close a couple of times. We've never been uh, where we are now, and we're very excited that our personnel will be able to, to train and actually do those things here in the city. It'll be um, nice if we could get it, like you said, the all safety, and then we could do our in-house um, shooting range for the police department's training, because that's another thing I really want to see accomplished at some point. <laughs> I really do. And if maybe we could purchase the lands on the other side of that little waterway and you have a little bridge, and I got all, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Kumbaya. Yes. Chief, I got one question. This training tower, and I know that it's it's being designed and and for our staff to be trained at. Yes. Does I remember? I think it was last year or the year before. You also had a vision of it being used for outside agencies to be able to come and train here. Would there be a possible revenue component for that? So yes. Yesterday we talked a little bit about, if you remember, we introduced into the budget, there was kind of an in and out of, of, of training money so that we had an ability to accept revenue and actually show a line item for it. And then an expenditure, if we were to bring in funds through certain training classes, we had the ability to expend funds for things like, say if we're putting on a rope rescue class and we needed extra harnesses or some things like that. If the cost of the class would cover those, we would be able to buy those items and have an expenditure line for it. So an in and out, it would be an offsetting cost, but it would give us equipment for future classes that we wouldn't have to expend and then we could. So it gives us the ability to kind of improve our, our some of our cash flow equipment if we were to put on classes. 
And um, our goal would, uh, would always be to put on more classes than we even had budgeted and have the problem of having to come back to you and say, we brought in more money than we said we were going to, and we'd like to spend a little extra. But we're going to do baby steps. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if we become a USAR training complex, and even if it's not recognized by USAR per se, um, the classes that we can teach there, we have the instructors and the ability to teach technical rescue classes there, which there's a potential for some revenue, um, which would certainly bring people there. The fire training tower will be built to current academy standards and with an idea of what potentially could be needed in the future. All the props won't be there, but the property is there so that if someday we were to say, we want to have Northport Fire Rescue's own fire academy where people would get hired, go through our fire academy, and then come to work for us and they would meet the state standard, we would have the ability to do that. That's, I think, on down the road. Mm -hmm. um, or we could do something like that in partnership with uh, the technical college and we've had those conversations on and off for years we have a great relationship with them so we would want to be um, an, an adjunct to what's going on in the county not a competition with the technical college so um, but again those are a lot of future conversations there but it gives us great options excellent anything else on this project okay that's awesome I think unless uh, unless you want to talk about all the projects or current status of the ongoing projects, which we can do that. That's that, the only that's thing all we have the budget for this okay. year. So no. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question on the um, Station 81 renovations. Yes. Um, it has $395,850 budgeted for this year. How is that being budgeted? What What is that funding source? And I, I know I got these sheets yesterday, but it still isn't really clear the, because it gives account numbers. 300000 that comes out of the district budget. Okay, so this is all district funds? Not all. Oh, Three hundred. That's okay. Um, 300000 comes out of district funds, and the balance of that um, is from, I believe, additional surtax. Not I believe. I know it is. We talked about that. That's, that's the... Uh, 2.8% increase that was scheduled in. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. that. Mm -hmm. and city manager, maybe next year this will be a common thing. If, if we could have it broken down, I, and I know they have the account numbers. We're not the accountants. We just go by <laughs> district funds, surtax funds, general funds. We'll work um, on it. But on this sheet, because it doesn't break it down here either. Oh, okay. And here, all it has is three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. We don't know how that on the CIP sheet itself is being broke down. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's got the funding sources, but it doesn't break down the three ninety-five. It breaks correct. down the entire amount, but it shows the funds that it comes from. Yeah, but like I thirty-four. Yeah, if okay. you'd have okay. to look multiple places. You'd have to look yeah. at fifteen different places. That's what we've been doing. Years, well, the CIP sheets right. last year had it all in one spot. CIP sheets last year it had it did, broken down. But it didn't have like previous year budgeting. Sure, it did. And it only had like one year. Here. That's last year. Well, yeah. yeah. But it, it shows surtax in prior years, this yeah, year's. Prior years. It doesn't have it broken down like that detail. Right. So. Do we do? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat you up for feeling better too. Thank you. I feel great. Like I said, um, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I learned Braille. Anybody else have anything else before he disappears? <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, Thank you. While you can, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I I assume I T is next. Oh boy. I like the tie. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Eric Hello, Ryan, Dan. IT Manager. We have two projects starting on page 38. IT 20 is for network infrastructure. Um, this year, we're currently replacing network equipment in City Hall, so this uh, CIP project is for replacing equipment at the Family Service Center, Parks and Grounds, and recreations. And in 22, it'll be the fire station, public works, water plant, and the wastewater plant. I have a question on that one. Um, 
If you look at the amount appropriated to date on your CIP sheet, it says 264000 But when I look at last year's budget in fiscal year 1920, it only had 260000 Where did the $4,000 come from, and why is that different? There was a budget adjustment for fiber. I'm sorry? There was a budget adjustment for fiber. For fiber. Budget adjustment. What does that? Was it an amendment? Was it just you guys added it? It was brought before us for a budget yeah. adjustment. Vicki Edwards, uh, business administrator. We had to move <coughs> money out of our fiber project for Pan Am. Um, it came in cheaper than what we thought it was going to be to cover the fiber that we're installing in City Hall. So it adjusted up. Thank you for the You're clarification. Welcome. Our next item is uh, page 39, IT 22. This is for the storage area network replacement. Everybody needs storage. Here. Everybody <laughs> needs storage. So, and, and this brings me to my lack of explanation on Tuesday for the SQL Server. <laughs> that is a software license going on to that big bank of servers you asked about oh, that we yeah. bought years ago. Okay. So it's not, a, it's not a hardware piece. Okay. It's titled server, but it's not gotcha. hardware. Gotcha. Do you, have to, do you have to up the annual license on it or if it's a software program? Probably six years. So, okay, so it's a six-year license? Uh, well, uh, it'll last until it runs out. They average between four and six. So somewhere between four and six years, we'll ask for another. Licensing, okay. Yep. All right, and it will be compatible with city overall. Absolutely, right? yes. You know my issue with that. <laughs> Thank you. Our <laughs> has no funding for this year. No. Nope. Squirrel and money. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. I guess that's it for you. It is. That was easy peasy. Ta -da. Yes. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Thank you. Doing what you're doing. Thanks, guys. City manager. All right. Next is parks and recreation. Um, it's I, I parks and rec has a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. It's ten thirty. Going to the break beforehand. Yeah. Why yeah. don't we just take a quick break? That way, then we all come back nice and refreshed, and we can focus. Yeah, because it did say IT, then break. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching the schedule here. All right, so let's Focus take a comment. break. Um, we'll come back at uh, 10.35. They don't give us 11 minutes. 10.35, we'll be back.
and she still ain't listening, so it's okay. No rush. Same. She's saying uh, we're making up for all the times we had to wait for the smokers. <laughs> That's fine. All righty, folks, it is now 1040, and we are back, um, continuing on with our CIP discussions, which is the Capital Improvement Program, and we are up to Parks and Rec, so City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we'll just turn it over to Sandy. Good morning. For the record, Sandy Funheller, Parks and Recreation Director. Um, like you said, Parks and Recreation has quite a few CIP projects. Do you want us to go through page by page, or are there specific questions that you'd like us to address? I'd like to go page by page, personally, myself, of the ones that have appropriations for this year. Or have something for, what page are we starting on? 40. 40. 40. Thank you. So Our, example would be page 40. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, page 40 is our ADA transition plan. Uh, this is a phased plan. We are doing the first phase this year uh, at McKibben Park. That is in uh, progress. And then for next year, uh, we are looking at multiple parks. Um, and this will be providing uh, sidewalk connections for ADA access, as well as some, um, if it needs a parking space or a curb cut or anything like that, um, to make the site ADA accessible. This was part of the um, audit that we did for the transition, ADA transition plan. Um, and so this will gradually bring everything um, into compliance. I like Any, that. Anybody have any questions on this project? Okay, moving on. All right, so the, uh, let's see. We don't need to talk about the linear park. That one's on hold. Yep. Uh, uh, we do need to make a change though, because it is on hold. It had some money programmed in to operating. Um, in thinking that it would be constructed and then we would be maintaining the trail um, in this ne next fiscal year. So we do need to reduce that, which will impact operating. Can you remind me why that's on hold? Or I we forget. Put it on hold, what was it? June, June 4th. June 4th. The but, Myakachi Creek Greenway? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Greenway Linear Project. Okay, so it's a loss of funding from the surtax for the current year. For the current year, this isn't current year, this is the year after. But we, you still asked us to put that project on hold because it had approximately a million and a half dollars in it. Oh, trust me, I'm wanting it on hold for this year too. But our June 4th meeting was to place things on hold for the current year, mm -hmm. and then we would discuss the coming budget year here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so is it the suggestion, thank you for clarifying, so is it the suggestion to hold it for next year as well? It is in my book. Mm -hmm. I was say, that was, was you all's direction, not yeah. our suggestion. Yeah. So if, if you want it held, we'll hold it. But I have a question in regards to that hold because uh, 1.3 was going to be utilized for surtax, and this is one that we put on hold. Um, if the police department actually is able to build a steel building or something like that, and they need another half million out of the surtax to complete it, could this then be utilized for that project? I would hesitate to take it out of this project simply because as when we talked about this um, June 4th, this one has a contract um, that's got an agreement with the Herring Creek property of what we have to do under that contract. So I would rather, if we need the half a million, I would prefer to try to find it somewhere else. Okay. As a different project. Thank so you. Can I ask a question ahead, as a, on Carson. this? I, I, I thought we had like 1.5 million already appropriated for we it. We do. Right, okay, and so that's just sitting there earning interest, hopefully? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what is the minimal that we need to do to comply with that contract with the Heron Creek? No. I, I'd have to look at we'll it. We'll have to look at that. Yeah. And because I think that needs to be reflected in next year's budget somehow, some way. We can at least Does identify it for you. Yep. Even okay. if it's the engineering portion or something? Whatever it is that we need to comply with it, we need to know what that means fiscally okay. and then make sure that that's reflected. I, I'm going to agree with her. Um, 
we were holding them to the task of their them mm -hmm. fulfilling their contract. Mm -hmm. I don't want to negate you know, ours exactly uh, in return. So I totally <coughs> agreement. Thank you, Commissioner Carrizo. So just for for my understanding, when we're saying we're holding off on this for this fiscal year, that means no money is going to be expended, no activity is going to happen. Is that um, correct? In what everybody is saying on hold? Yes. That's our That's understanding. my understanding. It's, the project is um, at 100% construction plans. It's ready to go, but we will not do anything else. It will not be advertised. Which I'm okay with, but I still think we need to find out what the compliance is, so there may be a financial impact to it. Not this much, but there may be some sort of impact to the budget this year. Does that... Some of the money so may maybe go back we'll be, for a different project, or may, I don't know. Maybe we can get a consensus for city manager to bring back information about the compliance for the contract by June, um, so we can okay. have a, a discussion about it in June. He gave this me is the June, look. You mean I, July, July. Yeah. I mean July. I, he gave me the look. I thought that was kind of already going to happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to give me a whole year to have that conversation. But. So let's get a consensus to have city manager bring back information about compliance and contract requirements um, come July so we can continue this. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Lear, quit picking at her. She'll swear for the fourth day in a row now. Nah, that's I just because she's hung around me too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the blame. It's all good. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, so the next one is the Mayakahatchee Creek Corridor land acquisition, and this is part of what we're bringing back to discuss in July. I'm sorry, which one was that? The Mayakahatchee Creek land Corridor acquisition. land acquisition. Okay. Why are you bringing it back to discuss in July? I'm lost. Uh, that was a request to have additional information on the land acquisition for um, the Greenway oh, for the Tier there 1, Tier 2 priority list of how Spring to Haven, uh, and the Greenway uh, Master Plan. So now this is where I have questions. Yeah, I, I, have, I have another question on it, too. <coughs> Hold on, Bid. Um, he sheeted lots. The sheeted lot fund. Where I'm looking at in the HDE version where it starts in 102, Two, I guess, page 102, and there's uh, $32,000 there, and it says improve other than buildings, um, but then that Estreated Lot Fund kind of gets distributed out in 2019. What page are you on? Um, in the HTE page 102. Thank you. Or should we start calling it GovMax? I really don't know. Um, One change at a time, please. Yeah, right? One and then button. there's, like, actuals throughout the next few pages. I'm just a little confused about how this Estreated Lot Fund is being either utilized or increased or stabilized because there was allocations that were supposed to go towards mm -hmm. the purchasing of this of these lands and I don't even know where they are if they're even in here so the the allocation towards the purchase of these lands happened as you know a long time ago so it's not going to be in the 2020 budget because it's already been budgeted as part of a project that rolls year to year so you okay. won't see so anything you're not going to see the carryover no okay so how but if you look at the project sheet, uh -huh. you'll see that it has appropriated the date and down in the bottom right hand corner, the means of fu funding, you can see a sheeted lot land future project fund of 2.4 million. 2. 4 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that brings up the question that I have in this funding. Why are we even looking at 4.1 million toward this purchase? I mean, is that what's coming back in July? You're going to show us that there's 4.1 million properties for sale? No. The, the direction to bring to you something in July was because we've been following a 2011 resolution. Right, but why do we have $4.1 million and there's surtax almost a 
half a million of surtax sitting in there that could be used for something else when we're not purchasing lots quickly. I, I, I just don't get that. It was all direction by commission at the time, Commission right? direction was, in 2011. as part of 2011, mm -hmm. was to buy all those lots. And they right. funded the project, and this is how they funded it. Right. So since then, we've been working to try to acquire the lots as they become available for sale. Mm -hmm. And the money has to be there if they become available for sale. Now, if commission wants to take the money away from there, when a lot becomes available for sale, we'll have to find it somewhere else. But we, as staff, got direction to put the money into this. If you want to, if the commission wants to change that direction, you have to change the resolution or do a new resolution. Two things have what, to happen. What to I am going by is what I've been hearing. I wasn't here, of course, when all of this was. I wasn't up. here in 2011 to change it either. I got news for you. And I thought it was all coming from that sheeted lots and what was done. I think in the 90s or whatever has been mm -hmm. accumulating. 2006. Okay, it's been accumulating money. I mean, that's what was talked about on June 4th. Uh, but I don't know how surtax money got put into this, where in the history surtax got put in it for the future purchase of something when you don't even have an estimated cost of what those lots would even total. I think that well, was a decision in 2011. An we estimate didn't was made yeah. at one point. Um, of what those lots would cost, that it would be, I would say, the $4.1 million that is in mm -hmm. that project. The start of this was the DEP money, then came the escheated lot money. And at this point in time, like I say, somewhere throughout our history, I'm gonna see if I but can we, find what happened. We had happened. the DEP money through a grant that Stan mm -hmm. Frank did, but then we had to give that money back. No, that was a different or one. The DEP true, money the second was, one. Yeah, okay. was money that um, we got in the 90s, I, we got because yeah. general development had to pay a you? fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I try and help you? Sure. This money has already, the majority of it has already been expended from purchasing all the lots. There's, I know that it says expenditure to date is $49,000. That's not true. If you go to the mm -hmm. last year's CIP, they had already expended um, like $3 million because they have been purchasing lots here and there. We just purchased Jessamine, and that's not reflected in here. So I have a feeling the majority of this money that is sitting there is not sitting there. It's been expended. I There's don't think it's half being a million reflected. Dollars sitting there. A half what? a million. It's There's not approximately four. approximately $500,000 yeah. sitting there right now. Okay, so it's not the four no. or two million no, that's showing. No, we spent the majority... That's why we own all those lots. We bought most of them. So the expenditures to date line item on the CIP sheet is not correct, and I think that's what's prompting this whole conversation. Exactly. Yeah, if you look on this project sheet in the project rationale box on the top third of the page, it says in prior years 3.5 million was expended under a different project number, and this project was rolled over until all tier one or two properties are acquired. Where do you see that? And it's called project rationale. It's a uh, want. I see. I see it. I just. Oh, I see it. No, I see it. I see it, but I didn't see it. Easier right. for me to show you. I, I think that conversation will clear up I mean the future conversation will mm -hmm. clear some of this up definitely for me because yeah I thought they were wanting this was future means of financing is what I thought it was so 49,000 is all you have left in the pot for this particular a half a million it's about a half a million dollars well actually it's that's gonna, gonna drop to about 300 and some thousand because, because just the Jessamine property mm -hmm. hasn't closed right. yet something thousand okay so now we go back to the sheeted lot monies um, which is throughout those pages what do we have left in that sheeted lot fund because it's extremely confusing it looks like we're giving road and drainage money from the escheated lots for capital improvements 
i i just i don't even understand this because i don't ever remember that being a a direction um money from the estate lots going to planning and zoning and then eleven thousand for parks so in looking at what's in there right now there was fourteen thousand um, dollars planning and zoning that, and it has been spent this year so planning and zoning took fourteen thousand four hundred twenty dollars from the Ashita lot fund is that yes, what you're saying for what i can figure that out it says professional services my other. guess is it was for the yeah it was my for the favorite. ulbc rewrite we used a sheeted lot funds for ulbc rewrite mm -hmm. How did that happen? Uh, my guess is that without going into pulling up stuff that I can't read from right here, is when the um, project came in and all everything for it, we came to you all and said, this is how we want to fund it. And you all said, OK. It's an allowable use of the money. Yeah, I'm not no, I disputing I'm that. Sure. I just, it's, I don't ever remember allowing that, but OK. Now, your other questions were who else? This is one of those, like, hidden things. Oh. The other one is the the 1.4 million, but that looks like revenues. Um, For road and drainage? And so, well, can we go to the revenue part where it says on, on page 100, where it says there's a, in 2019, there's a actual revenue? of eleven thousand two hundred and three dollars but then mm -hmm. on twenty twenty it says one point four million plus how is there so the one point four million dollars is the use of the fund balance there's it's money the sitting there that's just been sitting there since a little bit Forever. before I started here and when the city got all the money and we broke it into those three mm -hmm. pots. Let's not say get all the money because that's a real thorn in my get all the money ass we were getting. on that one. Um, <laughs> the $1.4 million appears to be for price widening. Um, I, I believe that's what that. public, the yes. public works portion is. And okay, because it's on page 100, it doesn't say public works. It just says other sources, none operational. Yeah, that's the use of the fund balance. Okay, there is, because it has to go from there to the district. Is that what it is? No. Um, there's not a current revenue. The only current revenue coming into that sheet of lots fund is investment earnings. Right. Okay. So in order to balance a budget, you have to have a revenue source and a expenditure. So the revenue source at this time is fund balance. Um, you have to spend down money that's just been sitting there. So you're saying you put the 1.4 in there from fund balance as the revenue and as the, the revenue, and then the expenditure comes out um, under the road and drainage side. That it, makes it will sense. be in this fund, but it's a portion of a road and drainage project. Right. So 1.40, 1 million four hundred fifty thousand two hundred eighty-five is being held. And it says it's going to be expended for the price widening project. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what the eleven thousand that's being accounted for for parks is just the interest amount, and that's on page one hundred and four. That's actuals. Yep. That yeah. That's the actual from 2019. Mm-hmm. See where the confusion's setting in because I I feel like one it's probably more than that, but two. So don't actually, they have a half a million dollars. The uh, the one that's on page 104 is a different fund. It's one of the three associated lot funds, but it is a different one. Um, that was the Parks and Recreation Escheated Lots Fund. Mm -hmm. Which and was supposed to go towards upgrading all of our community parks. Yep. And okay. that 11000 that was transferred out would have been investment earnings in that year. And at some point, you have to close these funds. 
so it was transferred to the general fund is my guess without going back through history for a parks project but to stop coming to you all every time one of these funds earns a little bit of interest we stuck it where park only could use it anyway I but to be able to close the fund mm -hmm. okay. and we had i remember having a conversation mm -hmm. with you all like, i do remember please that. let us close this fund <laughs> so my my question is how much is in those three funds left over the where are they left. allocated the only one with anything left um, is the 144, which is the Drainage. Land and Future Projects Fund. The one, what? The Land and Future Projects, the one we're talking about on this project. And it has the money for price widening. And at this point, it has the money for this Mayakachi Creek land acquisition. That's it. So the 300000 that's left is from the estimated lots? If there was a question, I missed it. I'm sorry. So the 300000 is from the Ashtiat lots? Because I see park impact fees are in here um, as well as... No, the $300,000 is left in this project is from the DEP fund. Okay. Thank you. They have you. spent all of their Ashtiat lot money. All right. That's what I, I didn't want to tap into something that didn't exist when we were talking about those surtax monies. That's where I'm, that's where this brain's going. It's kind of scary, but, um, okay. So we're supposed to have a bigger conversation on this whole, and then we did approve a land acquisition specialist, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I think that is gonna play a huge role, at least it did, in the land acquisition. Um, and then we get into the whole reasoning behind the Myakahatchee Creek corridor purchasing is not just to keep it environmentally and archaeological sound, it's also for flooding purposes. So do we need to take into consideration some of the new flood maps <coughs> that have been put in place when we do look at that overall? We're supposed to be bringing back another conversation on that. Because I think all of those play a role in that conversation. Yep. Just the, want to be the first conversation that we're going to have, simply because it's probably the easiest one, is the direction from 2011 of buying lots that have improvements on them, such as a home. Right. Because I think that's an, clearly there was a lot of conversation about whether or not we should be buying a, ho a house, mm -hmm. in essence. I and was, undo. That's just me. Yep. Yeah, and, I know. And it's undoing just that is very simple. Yeah. Um, but it requires you all to undo it. But I do want to see that resolution because I, I mean, me personally, I think there's merit. Listen, the lot is, is an insurance hazard if it's not raised and mitigated, and then you create a problem archaeological and and environmental on the actual Myakahatchee Creek corridor. So there's there's a slew of reasons why it benefits. Um, but in the past, we didn't wait for people to put them up for sale. We had our... We've sent letters multiple times our, to the owners. Right. And, um, and we retried and retried and retried. And okay. at some point, that wall starts to hurt when you bang your head against it. Yeah. Well, um, maybe you're not phrasing it right. Maybe you need to explain how much it would cost to actually build a house on a lot that floods on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that it? On that one, yeah. I'm good. Thank Anybody you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So the next one is Blue Way Greenway Access, Blue Ridge Park. Uh, so um, we have we are anticipating coming to commission uh, in July on the 28th uh, with a recommendation. Uh, this is for the expanded parking lot, um, and it also has some um, sidewalk connections for ADA access. You don't have any money going into no it money this going year. into it this year. Yeah. So we can, can I ask a question on that though, real quick, because the old CIP sheet from last year had a. $300,000 appropriated, but this CIP sheet is showing $353,000. Mm -hmm. 
and I want to make sure that it's the correct dollar amount. Was it Probably in place. Yeah, that was a budget transfer. A budget transfer from where to where? I don't have that in front of me, but it was um, the project came in a little bit over budget. Impact fees? No. Looks like impact fees. Where Our, was it? Uh, Butler Park Field Lighting. Uh, we were able to um, reduce the costs on that project substantially and so that we use some of that savings. And you can do that internally without that coming to the commission anymore? I was just... <laughs> <laughs> like you used to have to bring that to the commission to get approval to transfer funds like that. Not anymore? Not if it's not... As long as we're still doing everything the commission has to do, we're still doing the field lighting. Right. We had some minor savings on that and some minor shortfall on this. Well, that, okay, because the still within project the was already yeah, approved. Yeah, the so project was, was done. We didn't create okay. a project. We didn't yeah, yeah. increase yeah. the okay. overall budget. That makes sense. So my question then is the okay. field lighting project that was under budget that you took that savings and applied it to this, mm -hmm. was it impact fees that was used for the field lighting project? Was it impact? Yeah, yeah, because it was, it, was the same, the, it was the same. It was the same fund. Making sure. Because with everything that's going on with the new system, and the numbers aren't adding up, and I just wanted to make sure that it is the same funding source, because at the bottom it says park impact fees, but I've also found others that the funding sources aren't matching up either. So that's why I'm asking. Yes. Okay. As long as it was the same, then all good. Next. All right. Uh, this golf course, there is no um, funding in 2021. Mm. Is this even yeah, what's going on with this yeah. project? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing has happened with this project for a couple of years except we cleared some land, which is now pointless because it's all grown back. So the, <laughs> Trisha was our assistant director. Um, so we have done a lot of behind the scenes work for this, and you know because it is right on the creek, there's a lot of. Um, documents and, and review that needs to happen appropriately. So so we had an initial design by a volunteer group, um, which was outstanding. We worked with the stormwater management manager and NDS to clarify what could happen on this property based upon that initial design. Um, then we went to uh, get the surveys that were clarified from NDS that we needed. So we had the wildlife and wetland survey. Within that survey, the um, they recommended that we get in a hold of swift mud. We've had a swift mud permit put in, swift mud evaluated it. They wanted to have an on-site walkthrough. We spent a day walking through the woods with mm -hmm. them to make sure that their LIDAR maps matched what the um, survey said. After that, we took that information back to the volunteer <coughs> group with their recommended changes from swift mud. The volunteer group said, this is great. We really still want this, but it's kind of beyond our, our scope. Um, let's go talk to this other volunteer disc golf group that can do this. Go to the other volunteer disc golf group that can do it. Um, they spent some time looking at it, came up with a plan, but they also said, you know what, this is probably beyond our scope as well. <laughs> at that point, we went, we reached out to um, partners that we have within recreation. Um, there's a great company in California. He spent a lot of time looking at it. His response to us was to clear the whole parcel. Now I know that that's not uh -uh. something anybody here is going to accept. <laughs> um, so, good, good assumption. <laughs> so at that point, um, so at that point, we pulled back. We went back to Swift Mud, asked them, you know, what could we really do without clearing the parcel? They gave us some more advice. We are now in an SDR process so that we can get everybody to weigh in to make sure that we're not clearing land that does not need to be cleared. That we're being very sensitive mm -hmm. to the the wild uh, the wildlife and the wetland. Um, from there, we're going to go out and get somebody to help us design this disc golf course. So a lot of work. I apologize. It doesn't look like it, but we've spent quite some time on it. Thank it's, you. It sounds more like roadblocks than work, right? Um, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Carson. Was it, wasn't there a second alternative location mm -hmm. presented for this at Blue Ridge? Uh, for a smaller course. Right. And that would have not been such a disaster as what we got going on here because it's so close to the environmental land. You would still have would some still water have issues and some clearing oh, yeah, issues. You would. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that one is that would probably only be a six um, hole course, mm -hmm. which is much less desirable for the disc golf groups. 
So um, there's still a lot of benefit to, to continuing on the path that we have with this current parcel um, to try to develop at least a nine hole course. My concern with the current parcel is one, is it going to go above the, what, the budgeted amount? Because it sounds like it just may. Um, the longer you postpone the infrastructure, the costs increase. It's just, you know, the way it's, life goes. It's, it's a minimal impact. It is. It is a minimal impact, impact so to the land, well. but it's still an impact to an environmentally sensitive corridor. So those are the two reasons why I did not want it here in the first place. Um, I mean, is there a cost savings in just scrapping it from here and moving it to the Blue Ridge and making it the six and be done with it? I, I don't know. Well, you'd have to go through everything that they've they already, gone, already through gone through for this I don't one. Think you have to go through swift mud and all that. Well, you would yeah, for yeah. general permits, but you wouldn't have to go through all of the it's my understanding we would still need the still surveys need the and we would need a swift mud exemption. So we, well, we Whether still have to have an environmental and archaeological survey because you all put that as a requirement on every project. So whether swift mud required it or not, this commission requires it. Mm -hmm. I, I say continue. Yep, well, leave you don't have any choice now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> leave it be and move along. Move along. Do the best you can. All right, next. Okay, uh, environmental park improvements. Uh, so this is for um, the addition of the, or, or the replacement of the restroom building at the park. Uh, oh we have Lord. received the building. Uh, we had to go out and do a separate quote for the removal of the existing and the installation of the new. Um, so we are, um, if that is in process, we have that quote um, and we're hoping um, to get that awarded and, and move forward. The bathroom? Current year or 21? Current year. Okay, thank you. Uh, Springhaven land acquisition, oh, nothing sorry. in this year, and that's all part of that same discussion in July. Yeah, we put it on hold, but yep. if, if by chance a miracle happens and the developer or property owner comes up to the city and says, hey, are you still interested? We would let you know. Immediately? Before uh, June, that's okay. for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, can you summarize that one again for me? You. So there was, um, this is the Springhaven corridor. There's the a, purchase of all that land. Yep. Yeah, there's a okay. chunk of lots there that one person owns. Um, we tried to buy it. They wanted twice what it was worth. Right. They took it off the market. We tried to buy it again. They, now they want even more. Mm -hmm. um, so. On June 4th, we decided to put this project on hold, but I believe the question was if the seller should turn around and say, you know what, we think we would like to sell it, we'll come back to you all. Okay, I've got, I got, I got a question on this. Uh, as far as I know, the estimate or whatever, when somebody, our appraisal that we found, it, it came in like 600, no more than 650,000. Yes, now we as a city cannot pay any higher than the appraisal. Yes, Actually we can. Mm -hmm. We can decide to pay 1.5 when it's only worth six and a half. I, I believe what the city attorney let me know is as long as you find a public need and purpose for it, that yes, you can. Um, you'd probably have a whole lot of questions to answer. <laughs> it's not illegal to do, but it wouldn't be popular. Okay. There's a, I, I'm still thinking that 1.5 is high. And again, I'm thinking about the police department, this is mm -hmm. surtax, and if they need another half million it's to, to erect a steel building or something, I would say pull it from there and leave the million in. My thinking. That's, Go ahead. if I may, that's... I'm following the same path because the 1.5 is at a surtax and we already have, what was it, 1.5 for the expansion of Price Boulevard, right? Uh, out of the Ashita Lot Funds was, well, it's 1,450,000. Some of that's been spent, but yeah. Okay, so you're close to 3 million right there between mm -hmm. the two funds. That would... Go a long ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For the Why? needs that are immediate. 
which is right. part of the reason why I said that not to take it out of that one project because if we need it, mm -hmm. there are others that I would like to that I would take it out of first. Because this this price has to get done. I mean, you know, when uh, it's going to come to a point where it's it's not ever going to be feasible if we continue to wait mm -hmm. and <sighs> drive down it. I mean, you know, you live there. I mean, <laughs> I don't have any problems. Oh. I do. Just like driving down South It must be the way that the hours that you drive. Um, drive it all different times. I just all I think that <laughs> this money could be better served for some of our large scale projects that have been waiting for a very very long time. The um, other that that are necessary to the life safety and well being of the people here. The other one that's really important and we haven't gotten there yet is the Tropicare resurfacing. That's from well, what that's I been budgeted, remember. Though. It's it's still looking for money mm -hmm. to get that's our next group. Huh? That's our next group. Of people. I know. I, I but we got to mm -hmm. remember. There's money that may be able to help get that resurfacing done too. Okay, we've we've resurfacing. talked about three it projects is. that this money could go to. Mm -hmm. So I think finishing up what we're doing and when and we we'll get have, into July, yeah. we'll know where which project it needs to fund. Uh, but I will state, yeah, I want to purchase those lots. You know, I, I want that thinking, that idea that we had for that to come to fruition. But I don't foresee that land coming for sale this year. And we have more years coming that we could put in a million or whatever from surtax. But right now we've got projects that are urgent. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if it will be city attorney or planning staff to place a um, overlay on property, a conservation overlay on property, which is not essentially a rezone, but it is. What would have to happen there? You see where I'm going with this, right? We are supposed to don't, have that conversation. No, 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 no. We're supposed to have that conversation about um, conservation, conservation easements, overlays. overlays, and combining lots. That's supposed to be coming to us. That's regarding the Myakachi Creek lots. And Springhaven was also part of that. And are you talking about Springhaven? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm trying to keep up because y'all jumped a price and now you're back to another road. <laughs> so we're First, roads. we were talking about money. And now my mind went totally somewhere else. Right. My scroll moment yeah. didn't happen. I stayed yeah, where you were. That. It's silly me. I'll try not well, to do that again. I'm just wondering, like, it's obvious that it's an environmental impact. So how do you go about the environmental overlay? So that's the future conversation. Yes, okay. ma'am. I wasn't sure if that was yep. ever discussed. Yep. I'm make sure I'm on the right road. It's a list of things to do. Okay. <laughs> it's a very long list. <laughs> just wanted to, anything? Want to say anything? Yeah. Just here for the giggles? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here for just the for walls. the record, Carrie Branco, Assistant City Manager. Just to clarify, um, so the consensus on, I think it was it June 4th, included the creek properties. Um, I don't recall it saying Springhaven, but we can include that on the conversation with the dissolving the lot lines and the rezoning. But I just wanted to clarify. We were it was conservation overlay discussion the topic yep. yeah. that was it was a very yes. general kind of topic so okay fantastic. we'll make sure we include that okay. fantastic anything else on this Springhaven land acquisition oh. okay moving on okay uh, at water park phase four uh, there is no money budgeted right now and as you know that or for this next year mm -hmm. and you know that this is being considered um, as part of the um, project with Colliers International okay. uh, question on that if anybody else okay, um, just it, what do you mean by part of the Colliers International the, P, the P3 are you saying, what the P3 for Dallas item, White Dallas White Thank you. um on the little sheet that was passed out at the end of the evening last night uh CIP expenditure budget it has on that sheet nine million dollars going in next fiscal year and I assume it's by surtax, I don't know that account number. No, it's so not I'm, at all. Huh? It's it's 
on this sheet, it shows this future funding. Um, I know, in the C, that's my question. In the CIP, it says future funding after 2025, but on this little sheet that we received last night, it has nine million going in next year. And I want to see which is correct. This sheet. Which sheet? Not the little one you got last night. It's, we're not putting nine million dollars towards that next year. Okay, so we need to either. Not that I'm aware of. I see it as 1021 to 922 amount 9,000, no, $9,650 on page 47 of the CIP. In the big book. Right, in yeah. the big book. Yeah. But yet the program funding date is 800,000. Yeah, this one makes sense to me. I mean, we've got that P3 uh, proposal out there. And so, yeah, I see. I, I'm not questioning the money and, or anything like that. I'm questioning the dollar amounts for next fiscal year. The CIP the sheet pages. has zero, but the sheet y'all passed out last night has 9 million going in next fiscal year. I see 9 million right here. It's well, I don't, I mean, I think it's wise to put it to 22 because your P3 might come back and. But if the P3 comes back, it won't be us spending $9 million. Exactly. So, so we won't need it there. But, but it gives you some sort of answer. You could then can remove it next year. Yeah. I'm looking you look here. at this mm -hmm. here. Spending it, it's I mean, it makes year. sense to me. But here it's after Just be removed next year if P3 comes through. So can we get some clarity on that for yes. in July? Thank you. Good. Another project I'll never see finished. <laughs> okay, uh, next one is the acoustic improvements. Oh. Uh, the, so this year we did the Mullen Center. Um, all the equipment was replaced and we are in the process of the um, sound panels that will be added to the gym um, in addition to what's existing. And so this project for next year is then to do the same um, at the Morgan Center gym. I thought we, mm, when we designed the Morgan Center, it was supposed to have all these ac acoustical advancements well, to it. Not for the type of meeting that, that was it was when you had the commission meeting there. It was in the gym. The West the Village gym. meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not set up for something like that. It so does not need as much work as Mullen did. It's more about the um, baffling, sound baffling. Uh, the actual technology is pretty close to where it needs to be. It's the sound baffling. So the, the amount, the split for the project is less to go to the Morgan Center. Okay, because that was like part mm -hmm. of the original plan was to make sure that we knew the problems we had with Mullen that we wanted to make sure those problems didn't exist in the new Morgan and but maybe they only considered it when half of it was being used and not the whole mm -hmm. that could be so just improvements mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. anything else on that okay go ahead okay Marina Park restroom mm -hmm. uh, so this is a current year project and that is actually in SDR Okay. Uh, Butler Park marquee sign. So this is a new request. Um, we would know we're not advertising a church out there. It was just <laughs> put in for an example. Um, but we would like to have a sign that has the capability to do some um, marketing of what's going on um, at that facility with Butler Park, the Aquatic Center, and Morgan Center, and could also be used for other city events as well to advertise those. And this is what, you know, I, I love the digitals. This is what I was thinking about with the social service, and I understand they want the monument or whatever, but uh, like they have their different events and programs. And, I mean, there's so much can be advertised uh, on these digital. I love them. Go ahead. Would it be a design like a monument sign, not this stick with a box? Correct. Okay, just making sure. Wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. You may want to have it, 
the well, stick it, with a box only because if it's down on the ground, no, it, drive, drivers yeah, are looking no, this I mean, way. It, it, it can be built up. Right. I know right. what you're know, saying. An elevated yes. monument I, sign. I, I think monument signs, it's sitting down on the ground and people aren't going to really see it if it's up a little bit. Okay, thank you. The entrance to West Villages is a is a monument sign yes. that has City of North Fort. Gotcha. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Dallas White Park. Uh, so this is the this was the conceptual plan, um, conceptual master plan design and site renovation, and that is what's being done with Colliers for the redevelopment. Okay, and again, that's 1.5 million out of surtax, uh -huh. and it's allocated mm -hmm. and being mm -hmm. held. And that 1.5 is being spent with Collier, or it's held on the side for the project construction. We. When talking with city manager, we, we weren't sure if we were going to need the money or not. We weren't sure what was going to happen with Collier's, so we decided to leave it there. If you give other direction. Uh, didn't, if I'm, and correct me if I'm not remembering this correctly, I think we already had money allocated to redo Dallas White. So rather than unallocate it, because mm -hmm. again, we're putting out a P3, we know how successful it was the first time we put it out. Um, reason why just doesn't change the fact that it wasn't successful the first time we put one out. Mm -hmm. We put this one out and nobody comes back and, and says anything, which I, I believe we'll have more luck this time. But the fact of the matter is if nobody does, there's still work that needs to be done out there. So rather than take that money away and then have to, and spend it on something else and have to find it again in the future, we've left that money as planned for Dallas white improvements. Yes. if. If Colliers comes back with something and it doesn't cost us anything, then that 1.5 million will be freed up. But we're in a very uncertain area with that right now. But this is showing the 1.5 coming out of this, this year. year. Not There's no money allocated prior to this year for Dallas White. To me, this is a carryover. I thought it was a carryover too, but right. it, this is showing that it's coming out of this year. And I'm looking at last year's CIP in their CIP sheet and there's no money in prior years from even last year's. Yeah, I think there was a different Dallas White plan. project number, wasn't there? There uh, was. Cheryl, do you remember? I think so. I think it may I have been remember it. Pool project. The no, pool, no. It, yeah, it might have been. There, there was a Dallas White project mm -hmm. number. I just Can you bring back more information yes. about this and the, the history of funding yeah. and if it got removed or reallocated somewhere else yep. and bring back more information? Can we get a consensus to have city manager bring back more information about the Dallas White master plan funding and prior years and yes. like a timeline? Yes. That's why I like this version because it goes yeah. back to 2016, you know. You're going to have to show me how to do that. I, I don't know <laughs> where you're finding your information on that book and I thought I was... All right. Learning curve. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, so the next one is a new request for field light controller. So yesterday when we had a discussion about the lights being left on um, at the aquatic center, we have the Musco control link right now. So um, if there's something going on with lights, we can adjust it from from our house through our smartphone. Um, this, with having this control link, it would bring the four fields at Butler and the two at the Larry Tennyson fields to this level of control. It also would allow us to provide a code for users so that they could turn on and off the lights um, on definitely and then either they would go off because they put in the link to turn them off or because they were pre-scheduled to turn off, we would still have that back control. Um, also, if there's a power surge or something unique happens and we get a phone call saying somehow the lights are on at midnight, we can adjust that directly from a smartphone. Go ahead, Commissioner. Kerr. So that means you could turn them on and turn them off remotely and not have to be on the premises, correct? Correct. And that would be the Tennyson field, the football fields, mm -hmm. plural. The two at GMAC and the four at Butler. Okay. So part of the special, um, what do you call it, the special event permits is cost of personnel. Is that going to reduce the cost of personnel for those rentals and not special events, but the rentals was for someone to come on the property and turn the lights on and that's the kind of 
conversation. We were. We don't tend to do special <coughs> events at Butler Not and special Larry. Events, but rentals. When we take over the when parks, over you're going to be renting them, right. so that's right. what she's right. referring to. There will still be light usage fees, but there wouldn't be that's additional power. staff fees to go and turn on and That's what I'm trying to get at. So, so ultimately, by doing this, you're saving those who would be renting out those facilities some money because that money is being saved on our end. Yeah. I don't know sense? that the fees right now that the county charges reflect that. Don't don't look at that. We we take it over. We have to figure out how much it costs to run these operations, right? Right. However, this will be a cost savings to the user because they won't have to pay for the personnel to go out there to turn them on. To the turn operational them on. cost is lower mm -hmm. because of this. Yeah. Yeah, we would not put that into the equation. Thank you. Where before you would have. No, you would have had them, to. We gave them direction to use Sarasota County. Just for now. Just for now. Right. I'm talking future. You know what I mean? That's just for now. It might be this time next year we have some sort of study that says <laughs> you're losing your butt in this and you better come up with some realistic numbers and reevaluate those user fees. And that's what I'm trying to get at is that this is a cost savings to the user essentially as well. Yes. <clears throat> Any I'm, I'm good with it. I just wanted to kind of get okay. that clarified out there. All right, next one, okay. Kirk Park. Kirk Park, so this is a, a scheduled replacement for the playground, um, and Finally. we have applied for a community development block grant that we understand is likely to be awarded, but we won't know that until October 1st. Okay, I, go, did you have a question, Commissioner Kirsten? It's not really a question, just a suggestion. Uh, Home Depot, have we checked with them because they do those neighborhood um, programs. We did it with um, the one off of Salford, I think it was, where we got Home Depot to come and contribute um, a lot of supplies and people, and then we had a volunteer group come in. I don't think you were here yet. The Blue Ridge? Um, was it Blue Ridge? No, it was... Um, we, we did one at, at Mullen when we put the playground in there um, through Kaboom with a it's community Kaboom, build, that's right. yeah. um, but there's some concerns with the community build um, mm -hmm. with risk mm -hmm. as far as what they can and can't do. Oh, for the love of God. We mm -hmm. did it on Mullen, and we also did it over there off of um, Southford. Blue Ridge is on Southford. Closer to Price. Okay. Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did it there. Well, this the the grant that we've applied for would be uh, would be fully funding the replacement. Okay, but I I think that, I mean, I'm just trying to say that if if you need other things, I think that's a worthy okay. uh, project or program to be looking into because we've done it twice here, and I don't know why Risk would have such a problem with it. Self insured now. Well. They have their own insurance, though. I mean, it makes no sense. Their employees are the ones who come and volunteer. We'll look into it. Um, I have a question on this. <clears throat> now that I understand that it's going to be the CDBG funding and you won't know until October, that would, and then when you find out if we get that funding, <clears throat> that would give us $225,000 in surtax to be used for something else. There's no CIP sheet for the Veterans Park in this book. No, there's not because we have not received direction on that um, because we have not brought it back to commission yet. Um, the, what your direction was was to meet with advisory boards, to meet with the stakeholders, mm -hmm. to talk about finding a new Veterans Park location. Um, we looked at potentially just moving the monuments to another location, and that is not feasible. Um, so it would be building a whole new park. So we've gotten as far as all the input from the stakeholders, but because we had um, meetings canceled, 
with COVID, we have not been back to those right. advisory boards to get their input. Um, we did put out a memo um, that, that had all up to date what we've done. Um, so as soon as those meetings resume, we can bring that back to them and then bring it to commission and see what you want to do. But it, it will be a, a high price tag to build a new park. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, there, there are um, options on this too because Charlotte County went, and I know that's Charlotte County, but they went with the uh, VFW or one of those posts out in Rotunda and they created a veterans park with that post on post land. And it was working together between the county and that post and that became their veterans location. Right. Same, same thing has been offered up and talked about here with our VFW or our American Legion, I'm sorry, post out here with their land and possible participation with city funding. So it could be, if they went that route, it could be a lot cheaper, but like you're saying, if we're going to build a whole new one, wherever that location, land, whatever, could be costly, so we might want to look in partnerships on a Absolutely. veterans park. It's a whole bigger conversation. It's, it's a bigger what conversation. I'm <clears throat> what I'm looking for, and I'll get consensus to see if everybody is looking for the same thing, because I, I heard during strategic planning that this was a priority for this commission, mm -hmm. that we put a CIP sheet in it with some money in it, so that way then we can get the ball started. Without having a CIP sheet, without having some money in there, it's just another thing on the wish list. Putting it in here becomes a little bit more of a, a priority and a reminder. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. I don't know why we can't utilize the land that's right out here in City Hall to the right. I mean, it's I, I right don't know behind either. the... I don't know either. I still like the old ball fields. Or that. The ball fields? Yeah. It's a good area. idea. Pan American. Oh, I'm Pan American. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. A, oh, that those old. They're really good fields. idea. I hear old ball fields. I go to Butler Park. <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah, it is yeah. a greater discussion and lots yeah. of areas. So, can we get a consensus to have city manager add in a CIP sheet um, for a veterans park, and we're going to have to find funding, but we'll have that discussion where it's coming from. Well, he's going to have to put the funding in to put the CIP <clears throat> sheet. So it won't at, at this point in time, it would be unfunded. OK, right. Um, so I we think what you're looking for is an unfunded project. So there's at least a project in here. Correct. Um, and we'll put a swag in there. What's a what? swag? <laughs> really? Will it be decorated? <laughs> <laughs> a what? It's, a, it's a guess. We'll just okay. call it that. And it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be a lot of money at the beginning because, you know, until we have for. a bigger conversation, we don't even know what it's going to look like. Exactly. That's why. But I, in order to put it in there, I have to have some dollar amount in there. Okay. So a hundred thousand dollars. There you go. Somewhere, somehow. Yep. I, I'm sure. You know, if, especially if you guys know this, this one project is going to be CIP funded through CBG grant money. We've got a quarter million dollars already. So. Because this is a priority for us, and we need to get going on it. Yeah, we don't disagree with that. Okay. We're just following a different process to get to the same place. I'm a yes. Uh, Commissioner oh. Emmerich? Oh, absolutely, yes. Fantastic. We can discuss that term later when we're not in a public Swag? meeting. Swag? <laughs> Only you get quoted for saying those things, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if that's a bad word, I just said it like three times. So. No, just one of the letters is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Uh, La Brea Park Restroom. Please, right <coughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah. Please. La Brea Park Restroom. So this is part of um, uh, the discussion we had with adding restrooms to some of the parks. So this will be the next one um, in the plan. Okay. So this one for La Brea Park, and this is a restroom? Correct. All right. This would this would be a really good spot to take some of that money for the Veterans Park. You know, and I don't even know how often they use those baseball fields over there anymore. I, I don't even think they get used anymore. So that may even be a very good location for our new Veterans Park too. So again, bigger conversation for another time. But this is $200,000 that we could possibly use for restroom slash veterans park. I don't know. But there's money here, too. I, 
personally, have a problem I like I like enhancing all of the parks. I mean, we're looking at the older parks, the older part of the city, and I like their parks being enhanced with the restrooms. So, I, oh gosh, that's very very used. Yes, okay. La Brea. I had yeah, I had it, a it, look. It's not it's not like it's for rented kids. for um, yeah. ball field use, but we have had requests. Mm -hmm. However, if it was improved. If the ballpark, if the ball field ever got improved, I think there would probably be a lot more use out there. Okay. So that revitalization in those areas. So I'm. But I, am, I am going to support the mayor's idea because I don't believe it's going to cost two hundred thousand dollars to put a bathroom up. So yeah, I think fifty thousand of this right could there. go away. Yeah. So I, I'm not saying to get rid of the bathroom. Right. I don't think La Brea Park is used nearly as much as McKibben. McKibben, um, McKibben has bathrooms. Yeah, okay. Yes. So why is McKibben even on this list? Where, where do you see McKibben? It says oh. currently restrooms are available. In, oh, it, they yeah, are no, available. Okay. Sorry, yeah. missed the word are. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was the next list. I'm like, wait a minute, these are all done. Oh, I'm trying all to right. figure out where the hell La Brea was. I had a brain fart there. <laughs> I, I, I know where it is now. I, I just, I'm like, all right. Okay, ready? I just couldn't remember so, it then. I got conversation. it. Huh? All right. Okay. Right. I know. I was like, never mind. Yeah. Park amenities program. So this is something we have programmed every year. Um, and this is um, this next year we're going to be looking at um, adding um, recycling, recycling receptacles to the parks. Um, we are going to have to update the contract that we have um, with the company that um, removes the trash in order to have that service. Um, and it's also looking at uh, the grills in the parks. I don't know the last time those have been replaced, but some of them actually have holes in them at this point. Uh, so we'll be getting those replaced and then bike racks and um, we've done picnic tables and trash cans this year. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Carson. Adding or replacing recycling and then you said you'll have to speak to those who <laughs> pick up your recycling and garbage there? Yes. It's, it's contracted Why isn't service. It the city? It, it is a contracted service. Why? Isn't it the same ones that do the restrooms and stuff yes. like that? That's a combined service from years ago. They clean the bathrooms and, and take a, the trash. Yes. They, they clean the bathrooms well. I'll give you that one. But, I mean, property maintenance used to do that. Why are we not doing that anymore? That makes... It's my understanding that it was outsourced under property maintenance. Yes. Um, this year or last year, it came back to Parks and Recreation that in, within our budget. However, it's been an outsourced service for many, oh, many years. years. My understanding. Yeah. It has been for years. Even when I was in property maintenance, we took care of it, and then it got outsourced. I would. I just, think we better look at that and yeah. make sure we're saving money that way. Yeah. Well, you were looking at one to two people throughout the city every single day that's all they did was the restrooms the garbage the trash and then if people used it you had to go back and do it again when right. you had rentals you had to make sure they were cleaned right. up and you had to come in later and do and that and they were employees yes they were yes but i'm just saying they ch management changed their mind and decided to go ahead and contract it out because it was one price no overtime no nothing but the contract doesn't have them coming every day Okay. Yes. They yeah. Certain locations they do. It's it's based Abs on the use. Right. Of the park. So we had an individual. One park may have been done on Monday. The next park may have been done on Tuesday. Then they would come back to the first park again on Wednesday. It was scheduled, but you had a full time person or two. That's all they did. I guess I just really and then the recycling which. The maintenance part, okay, maybe that is a cost savings. I really want to see that, that it's a cost savings. But picking up the recycling, why isn't why isn't the city picking up the recycling? Well, we'd have even, to pay for even, it for them to do it, too. But do what, huh? We to would me, have, one at a time, guys, would have, please, one at a time. Parks would have to pay for that. It's I, to Solid the, Waste can't provide a free service. They don't. To the district. Yep. Okay, so then the question is, is that a cost savings to have the city provide the service and recap the funding versus outsourcing? I mean, I think 
think we need to know that. You got a whole bunch of people. I want to throw something that happened some, 10 years ago. I want to throw yeah. something else in here, too. Oh, what would they be doing differently by having recycling? <laughs> to me, if you dispose of the garbage or if it's your contract to remove, you know, whatever's there, I'm not getting, if you have recycling, why that there's a change in the contract. So it, are they doing something different adding with parks, garbage and adding parks? Because yeah. some of them don't have recycling bins. The current yeah, contract the actually specifies the number of cans. I apologize. <laughs> the current contract actually specifies the number of cans at each location. So if we added in a, another set of cans, those would not automatically be within the contract. This contract does expire this year, so we're already going through the scope and preparing for it so the timeliness of this is is great for us to then go ahead and add the recycling okay thinking through contracts uh what do they do right now with the garbage and where would they be getting rid of the recycling i mean if you're going to put a recycled bin out there but they're going to carry it away and put it in a regular trash dumpster themselves <clears throat> why would we be doing this and causing costs I mean, that's why I'm thinking of this contract and how it's executed. At this time, it's not included in there, so we'll be developing that scope for the recycling part of it. Um, right now, in many locations, the contractor does put it in the back of their car or truck or whatever and takes it to a location that we designate. So those items would be um, listed within the contract, and it would be staff's responsibility to make sure that the contractor is adhering to all those pieces and parts within the contract. And the city would have to provide where the garbage is taken. They would have to provide where the recycle is taken. And, I, and I, I'm a recycle believer. I really am. But I don't know as we're really being cost effective uh, with this idea within the parks. So can I ask the question? So they pick it up, they put it in their car, and they bring it to our, our, our center, right? They put it to or to a, dumpsters. So many right. of our parks have dumpsters, so mm. there are designated locations so, where they're supposed so to bring the So ultimately, we're providing the service minus the fact that someone Walking has to five walk five. from point A to point B of putting it in there, but we're still the ones having to pay the tipping fees, and we're still the ones who have to pay the fees for recycling, but we're paying someone else to do it. See where I'm going with this? Like, it does not seem like it's cost efficient or a... a when you look at the whole thing. Maybe city manager can provide us some information for July on um, cost analysis for the trash related and to this and maintenance. I, I'm all about the improvements to the parks, right. all about it. Absolutely. I just am questioning that recycle aspect of how it would be executed, okay. whose duties you know, would it be, is there really justification or are these guys just going to be combining it and throwing it in a dumpster anyhow for them. Yep. well and ahead, Ms. Julie. not only that the <clears throat> maintenance portion i'd like to see too for the record julianne i believe a public works director so because of the way the city has grown and everything has evolved um and commissioner emmerich is right years ago we did it differently um but of course with the growing and the number of parks and the number of facilities uh in in determining do we use contracted services to do this or do we use in-house staff? Well, for example, facilities now has six people in it. Um, most of those people, with probably the exception of one, are, are building technician type folks. And you see them all over the place here mm -hmm. just doing internal city projects, which there's many. So that's to start. So then the question becomes, is it more cost effective to hire more people with the benefits and salaries and all that to go to the various city facilities, or is it better to include within the cleaning contracts? For example, at these city facilities, the city hall, public works, utilities, all over the place. As uh, Ms. Fundheller mentioned, they do the same thing, and you'll see them. They, they gather up the trash, whether you know it be in their car or however, and they bring it to the dumpster. Same mm -hmm. with the recycling. Now, we have, in my department, we have trained uh, Mr. Speak has trained his uh, the uh, contractor, the cleaning company, how important it is to recycle, just like we're training the folks in the, in the facilities. So there's a part where the, the employees do a certain amount and they bring it to a central location 
and then they bring it to the recycling containers. For example, outside of City Hall, I have them outside of Public Works and so forth. Same with the parks. So the alternative would be it, we could do that in-house, we'd have to hire more people, or we could factor it into the contracts. Now, when we have the recycling center here, it becomes more important and more cost-effective to recycle rather than trash. So we do educate also the cleaning company as well as the employees to make it all work out. But in the end, it's cheaper to factor it into the contracts than it is to hire facilities maintenance people. So you just said there's six facility maintenance people just in parks? No, not in parks. No. I didn't think so. In, okay. my, depart in my department in and department. facilities division, if I were to utilize, there's like one person that would be able to, you know, does that type of thing. They'd have to go around all the facilities to do this. Okay. It's just not cost effective. The other thing and is with her parks. And you have how many in parks? We have um, seven groundskeepers. Mm -hmm. Seven. Seven. We have um, six that are on a um, weekday schedule, and then we have the one new one that was um, hired to cover weekends and part of weekdays. The other, the other thing we found with the trash, and we did try it, especially when she she, she has her functions on the weekends and in the evenings and so forth, the rentals is you have to have somebody go there and get the, take the trash out. You know, you can't just leave it. So that's factored in, if I'm not mistaken, Sandy, you do have a certain amount of contracting help. Is it on the weekends for trash pickup? Um, we do, but when mistaken. there is... When, when there's, there's events. When there's yeah. a rental, though, that is something that our themselves. recreation... Well, we ask, we ask the users to do that. That's not always the case. So our right. recreation attendants are often going out to the park sites and they are collecting... As a well, supplemental service. Well, I, I can tell you, as someone who's rented Sarasota County Parks, if you don't pick up your trash and you, you leave it there, you're fine. Back. They charge you. They'll but, take it out but, of your money. And, but, and that's that's true. But somebody still has to go get it. Yeah. We can't just yeah. leave it there I and agree, find it. I agree. Right. Yeah, that, at least it's kind of cross, re, uh, you know, mm -hmm. revenue. But one, one of the main things that's not even being discussed here is prior to the rental. You have to make sure that that area Correct. is clean. No, you no, do no, not no. want garbage all over the place no. and somebody's renting it. It has to be done prior to it. So you have staff mm -hmm. go out there, make sure it's clean. This way you don't have complaints and people coming in. I had to clean this thing before I even used it. So my trash. there is a process on that. It is. Well, when this comes back, I would just like to see the uh, how it's going to be executed. Cost comparison. I, would like, yeah. I would like to see how it's going to be executed. If uh, we have to provide a recycle dumpster as well as a garbage dumpster, you know, for those sites, maybe there's one there already. I don't know. Uh, but I would just like to make sure that if we're going to put the cost into setting this program up, that is thought all the way through so that it can be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So let's get a consensus so we can move on to get an analysis of outsourcing of the restroom trash removal maintenance, maintenance of this um, at the local parks with how is the contract executed um, and with the recycling, the new recycling bins. Commissioner Amich. Yeah, I'm all for information, but I hope we're not going to be just limited to one week with all this information that's coming back in July. Well, yeah, it should I be mean, back we're, in a memo. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of information that's coming back. We need to take our time and look at each of these things that we're asking for and more information on. I just don't want it all crammed all into a few days. That's all I'm putting out there. I'm looking for a cost comparison between the way we do it now yep. and what would be proposed with the additional recycling pickups and specific to recycling, garbage, and maintenance as opposed to doing it in-house. And I want to see the amount of times that this contract's being done and what's the where's the savings? I want to see the savings, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. I really want to see that before. Not to say that this isn't valuable, don't get me wrong. Um, I also need to know the impact of the contract if you change to this and how many are we talking in addition and so on and so forth. So I think we're saying the same thing. I just wanted to be very clear because I don't want it to come back and they say, well, we don't know. And I love being a good steward of the earth. And so I do believe in recycling, but I would just like to see how it's all going to go through um, 
and, and just so do I have a consensus from you, Vice Mayor? And I'm a yes, so there, City Manager, you have your consensus. Just one thing I wanted to add sure. to it, because the realm of this, and we need to also know, this is what's being done, but how many staff members would be needed to accomplish the mm -hmm. same thing? You know, well, right, yeah, and that, I just want to make sure clear, staff, clarifying. because yeah, yeah. it may not be a job for just one employee. You may be looking at two or three to get this thing done. Vehicle. Exactly, because we have two. 26 parks. We used to have two. I know, we didn't have vehicles. as many parks. You got vehicles and stuff like that, oh, too. Oh, Lord, don't say vehicles. I'm just saying, it, it's, yeah. it, it, all, it's all needs to be factored in. Yeah, absolutely. We did have, what, two of them, two of them that used to do it. Pretty All much, right. yeah. So moving on to page 58, which is basically the same thing, but there's no funding on it for this year. Um, and this is a next year kind of thing. Yeah, now you're out into the out years. Yeah. So, it, it, I, think, I think all of these are out years. Yep, yes. That's all for 21. Right. For part. Wait, what happened to 56, Deer Prairie Creek? Oh, I'm sorry. I turned the page without doing that well, one. Thank there's you. No, there's no funding. There's no out years. These are all out years? Okay. I, I do have a question about Derek Curry Creek, though. Um, so when you go to last year's CIP, and last year we received a donation of um, $33,500 from the Conservation Foundation, that is not anywhere notated in here. It's According to this, it's saying it's all surtax, and that's not true. Appropriated to date. Appropriated to date is 33500 which was the grant we received, or, but that's not appropriate. It's not. It's just not listed down the it's funding not source. Listed it is in the, in top the funding part. source. That's what yep. I'm looking for. And and I believe that was Gulf Coast <gasps> Community oh, Foundation. Sorry, I said the wrong foundation. Yep. You're right. Gulf yeah. Coast. We, yeah. We'll get it added. Thank you. Somehow it needs to be. I've got a question on, and I know it's for future years, page 59. Um, Boca Chica, go ahead. Is that the neighborhood that said they do not want a park? Uh, we did a neighborhood? preliminary survey. They didn't want a full blown park with a playground. What they wanted was something that was very passive, trails, seating, uh, that kind of thing. But is that okay. And be a good veterans park too. Do we yeah. have exactly? Do we have any money in there currently? No, not yet. No. Okay. I'm kind of pushing this one off year yeah. after year yeah, after year. We pushed it off, but I wanted to see if I was remembering correctly that the neighborhood was, that was the one, but yeah, that for future funding, that could be veteran also. All right, well, thank you. With that, they may, if they don't want a playground, they may not want you know, a veteran's park either. Oh, no, I don't mean for the location. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about the money. money. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I would ask that we also re-evaluate those folks that live in that area because there has been quite a few changes in the population and the people who live in different neighborhoods and the the desires for that park may change. May not change. change, yeah. yeah. We would do that as part of the process. There's a ton of younger people there forward. now. We can look at it. No, oh, that makes sense. So that's the end. There's one I would like to ask about, and that is on page 61. The oh, garden I'm of. Sorry, can we get consensus on that to reevaluate the okay. desire of the community at the Boca Chica Park site? Uh, Commissioner Carrison would like a consensus to reevaluate the Boca Chica um, neighborhood neighborhood to see about uh, park. Do, uh, do, can I just ask a question? Sure. Do, you, do you want us to do it now because the, the it's not scheduled until 2022, and generally that's not something we would do till we got closer. Right, that's what I was just going to say. Well, the the manner in which it takes anything to get done in this city and this government, I would say yes, I'd like it now, and maybe we'll see it in 2022. I, I would next say fiscal within year. this year. This yeah. next fiscal year. Next, yeah. Well, that's what 21, I meant by now. Uh, I'm 2021. sorry. 2021. 
Well, when you said now, I thought you meant by July. No. Okay. In this in this fiscal year. That we're discussing. Um, Commissioner Armich? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Commissioner Carson? Yes. And I'm a yes? Yes. Right All right. And I would make sure you might ask about possibly using it as a veterans park. I would like to see our veterans park done by the time though, like I, I really want to see that veterans park completed by next year, not because this is an evaluation, which means that it would take a year to implement anything that's evaluated and you could see nothing for two to three years. And I really hope that our veterans park is but we got to have that conversation so we don't know what our veteran park is going to look like. Is it going to be? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. all right. Um, Chevron 61. H61. Um, Garden of Five Senses Nature Center with pavilion and parking. I, I don't see the need there. I, I'm going to throw it out there. I don't see the need. We have a beautiful, boundless playground. We have a beautiful Garden of Five Senses walkway area. We have that walking trail. We, we have a nature center going in at Warm Middle Springs, and then there's talk of, you know, chatter about possibly using that new site at Jessamine that we just bought that building. You know, we had a, a couple of citizens make that idea and suggestion. Um, I, I just think, pull this. My yeah, thought. Look at this. Um, this is for 20. But this is just part of the. There's no funding in it anytime right. soon. I right. get that. But let's, I'm saying, scratch this idea. Mm -hmm. And we have it going in other places. Yeah, the, this was just part of the original conceptual plan for that site. Um, so that's why it's in there. Um, at this point, um, there probably isn't a lot of space there anymore no. um, to accomplish this. No. Uh, and, and I agree. But I believe also. You talk about original plans. I think this type of learning center was supposed to be put out at Mayakahatchee mm -hmm. Environmental Park. It was supposed to be at Couple the. Um, it was part of the funding. Little Salt Springs, across the street from okay. Little Salt Springs. That's where it was supposed to be. So can we get in the funding of that environmental park? It, it's written in it too. I, I did some research on it because uh, Chuck English. Um, Mm -hmm. put a bug in my ear uh, so yeah I'm I'm fine with pulling it I don't know how you would set I have no idea where you this in that <clears throat> park uh, at this point in time the other thing is is if we're going to be putting a veterans park across the street and that old ball field gonna that parking. we're going to need the parking we uh, be a great place to have a couple little pavilions again veterans park is going to have a bigger discussion but I don't think this is an appropriate location for what, what's being requested. So I, I'd like to get consensus to pull this entirely. I agree. I, I you know, seeing the use now mm -hmm. as opposed to 2002, I, I don't believe it needs to be there. I don't think. I mean, back then we didn't have computers. I mean, not to the degree that we have them now, you know. So, yeah. So, Commissioner Armitage? Oh, yeah, pull it. And I obviously am a yes and vice mayor. Okay. So um, you, there's your consensus. Even though it was many years out, just stop talking about it. <laughs> that place, that area is fantastic. Uh, and I think if you start crowding it, it's going to lose its entire ambiance. So thank you. look at Mayakahatchee Environmental Park, though, for something like this. You might want to look into the history of that. Well, it's the count the counties at the time so that's why we shifted everything to little salt springs and then we were going to get funding through uh Dieter, who was supporting a bill and then that fell through so this is where it landed <laughs> um i have another one on page 65 it's a new cip project that was being brought to commission discussion it's not for many years out, but it's to put um, playground replacement at Pine Park. I have Pine a question on 60. Okay. 
Let what me page read. did you say? Um, page 65. Um, Pine Park is two blocks away from McKibben. I, I, I have never understood why we have two parks so close together. Pine Park is barely used. Um, no, it's used. Not that much. It's just a it, couple of blocks away. So we, as, as part of our process, when we do something like this, we always put out a survey to the, the neighborhood. Um, and uh, we had gotten quite a bit of feedback from that neighborhood, and in, and according to the feedback, it is highly used at Pine Park. It is. Um, this is more of a tot um, yeah. playground, exactly. whereas the McKibben Park is for older kids. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, what, I'm sorry. What's your schedule for replacing equipment, playground equipment? We've got like an eight to ten year um, replacement plan. Um, and we just reevaluate that every year to see what the condition is. Um, can it be moved out further or moved up? What what needs to happen? But generally, eight to ten years. Is it a national guideline you go by or state guideline or something? It, it's national. National, because Florida is different than Michigan for outdoors. Great. Thank you, um, Commissioner Carson. You said you had a question on page what? I do. I'm looking at page 60, but I think I read it wrong because the water control structures are actually portages for kayaks, correct? Correct. That's part of the... Because when I hear water control structures, I think utilities. Uh, no, this was all part of the Canal and Creek Master right. Plan. Okay. <laughs> I want to be clear. And Actually, then... The water control structures would be public works. Mm -hmm. Well... Just saying. Yeah, well, the way that it's worded, it says portages. And so I was thinking something totally different. Um, Langless Park. What page? Page 62, 2022. Again, I say put it out to at least 25. Um, you're going to have a whole master plan done of that mm -hmm. area. You're going to... This may be completely different, but I want that pushed out again. To 25? Yeah, I would, because it's going to take you that long to get back your review of the area and the, uh, um, what do you call it, activity centers. And then we've got uh, some other things at play, like the interstate access. I don't... Yeah, I'm fine with this pushing is it up like to 25. So far down the road. Commissioner Armich, are you? Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right. So that, there's your consensus on that for city manager. I know it's nothing funded anytime soon, mm -hmm. but let's just push it out until we have to get the master plan done before we can do anything with this. But at the same time, I don't want it to um, be lost and forgotten. Anything else? My next one is on page 67. I'm 66. Yeah. West Villages, South River Road. Where are you at? Page 66. Okay. Design and development of the parcel. Um, I do know that this was part of the Parks and Rec's master plan of days gone by, and it's uh, it has ball fields and some other things. Um, I don't know if I would even put this in the budget until a new reevaluation of that parcel is had considering all the things that are put in place now prior to when this was planned. Uh, I'm, it, I mean, it's in there for 25, so I'm fine yeah, with leaving five it. Years out. Yeah, five years out, that's what I was looking at. Yeah, I, I'd be more inclined to keep it there. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that this may not be the plan. Maybe rephrase it. Maybe rephrase it that it's not necessarily the construction of it. Well, it would be the construction, but you know, having the 
the the park plan and picture there makes it this is set in stone as to what you're going to develop there. You see what I'm saying? I, maybe the, the whole page needs to be updated because it's no longer a 63 acre parcel. It's there, more. There is more. So uh, the fire department may have something to do in right, there too. So yeah. We'll get rid of so the just picture and update yeah, the page. Update, update it. Yeah. The, the goal. How about that? You need a consensus? No. He said he doesn't. Let's get a consensus anyways, just to keep it nice and clean. CIP page 66, um, to get a consensus to have city manager update the page regarding the West Village's south. Let's just change it to South River Road Park um, on page 66, Commissioner Armitage. Yeah. Yeah, I would rather take the West Village's name out of it because it sounds like, I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. Northport's River Road Park. Exactly. Or Northport's River Park. Here you go. And I'm a yes. That. Yes. All right. Um, my next one is on page 67, the Warmill Springs Building Rehab. According to the appropriated date, appropriated to date figure of $1.979 million, when I looked at the old CIP sheet, um, it's only got $1.617 million, and I'm wondering where did the other 300000 plus come from? There were two projects um, pr previously. One was the Warm Mineral Springs Master Plan, and then one was the Warm Mineral Springs Building Renovation. So we put them together now that we've got that master plan. Um, they were essentially the same, just in two different projects. So you saved money. Okay, so you took it one project and split it out. We actually want the other one. We took two combined into one. And you combined it. Okay, now was, then why do you have CIP 68 then as a separate project? That is for the 60 acres, the phase oh, two. No, there was another project that was just for the master plan. That's completed. They saved right. money on the master plan, so that went and put got put into the rehab. There was a Correct. there was the master plan before we knew any of this 60 acre development. We had to do the master plan first. We knew we were going to renovate the buildings. So now that we have the master plan done, we put those two projects together and have a new one that is just for the 60 acres that'll be developed in the future at some point. It's the trails and the, the tower towers. overlook and um, the educational or can, I, can I throw something okay. out, just, just food for thought for the future when you're doing that? Uh, the little scrub jay used to hang out at uh, Warm Mill Springs a lot. Um, those towers mm -hmm. where you cross over a little bridge or whatever, mm -hmm. I think it would be cool to put in <laughs> the, the, the vegetation and stuff for the scrub jay to see if you can get a family come and actually be able so to create a scrub jay habitat is what yes. you're saying yes and and that way while you're bird watching or whatever you might be able to see old Florida those scrub oaks and what it looked like and hopefully some little scrub jays so just throwing that idea out as we're throwing ideas out, are you guys going to do a Mineral Springs Day this year? Uh, yes. In this fiscal year, I should say, the 2021? Yes. Uh, we're doing it in September. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to ask, are you going to do a aquatics day for maybe kids only at the pool for this coming fiscal year, 2021? I, it depends on what you mean by an aquatics day. <laughs> well, <laughs> so this is an amenity that our citizens have paid for. Um, and w the reason we did Warm Mineral Springs Day was to get people to see how beautiful it is, to see what it is to experience it. Um, I'd be kind of inclined to give a kids, kids only um, access to the pool uh, for a day at no charge. I don't know what kind of an impact that would have but this is a citizen taxpayer amenity, and maybe this is a, I'm just I, throwing out I, an idea. I love the idea, but I think you'd have to do it for two days because of the size and the... Well, because of the limitations yeah. right now, um, 
I'd hesitate to do it. I'm saying now. Fiscal, I'm not saying You're for this year. Next I'm saying year. for fiscal year 2021, yeah. not this year. There's no time yeah. to plan it for this year. We've only got a few day, few months left before school starts and we go back to weekends only. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying for 2021, let's start. I would like to see a, you know, the a kids can get in for free. Yeah. You know, anybody under 18 can get in for free. Mm -hmm. I like it. So I, I I don't know what the impact is. I don't know. I think. I don't think anyone knows yet. Yeah, Can't nobody know. knows much of anything with it yet. So let's get a consensus to do a kids under 18 free. But actually, I wouldn't just limit it to that. I would I would actually. Just um, all, all Northport citizens free for two days? I'm kind of thinking that, but. They, they would have to come yeah. up with whatever. So I wouldn't want to limit them trying to invent this day. So I would leave it to them okay. just and to come I, up with something. Again, I think it's day. essential to be two days. And maybe one day is family. The other day is children under 17 years old or something. Um, well, you, I mean, you're it's gonna up have to, to them, limit, you're right. You're going to have to limit have, capacity. You're going to have to limit I'm capacity. Two days. You're going to have to schedule hours of when they could come in, how long they could stay in order to rotate. So there's a lot of... How about we just give them the authority to create yes. some kind of a free day, weekend, week at the aquatic center, bring that back to us for um, final approval for fiscal year 2021. A resident appreciation. There you go. Northport, Northport only. Now, I know where Middle Springs is Sarasota County. No, this is Northport okay. only. Got it. Got it. I okay. agree. All right, so we, we need to get a consensus. Commissioner Armich? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Carson? Yes. And I'm a yes? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Great idea, Commissioner. Thank you. I come up with them once in a while. <laughs> So you're going to bring back those final ideas, um, obviously prior to it taking place. So we can. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anything else on Warminal Springs? Um, and that's all I yeah. have. I think that's all they got. Yeah. Um, I, have a while a, ago. I have a couple <laughs> questions, just so you know, City Manager, on this sheet that we got from finance, um, comparing what is in the book itself. There's a little bit of discrepancies instead of wasting time going over that. I think it's just a numbers input thing. Do you mind if I show it to you and go from the right there? Show it to them. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. All righty, well, let's see here. I think it's it is 12 it's twelve seventeen. It's lunchtime. All right, uh, one o'clock, guys. Five minutes, city manager. That be all right. So we'll reconvene after lunch at one p.m. Thank you.
remember when he was Um, are we ready? Fantastic. All righty. It is now 101, actually 102, and we are back for our final afternoon of budget workshops this month. And city manager, we'll go ahead and start with you. If you could tell us what page. Um, page 73, and we are on to public works. 73, public works. Thank you very much. And I will introduce Ms. Julie Belia, and she can take over. Public Works. Thank you, City Manager. For the record, Juliana Belia, Public Works Department. Um, our first project is our uh, R2 or R20 DSI drainage system improvements, and this is our annual uh, maintenance project. What, for, what page well, are no, you on? You on? We're on seventy-three. Seventy-three. Yep, they're going through the book. The big page book page. Okay. Take it, we all have different books. We have different books than you guys. Sorry, I was going by the, the handout from today. Sorry. All right. Okay. Price Boulevard uh, widening phase one project. Yes, good old Price Boulevard. <clears throat> and um, this is our... our Price Boulevard widening project. We are um, in the process. We've had we have the plans prepared for the five lane widening project. Um, we have a applied for a twenty five million dollar grant, where it's part of our funding efforts. We are still trying to secure the uh, pond sites uh, for our stormwater. How's that coming? Yes. We have two that are currently in negotiations. Let's get to my page here. I believe we had to acquire 16 total. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've closed on some, and we have we've a couple closed on yes, them. we've we've closed on a few, and um, we're we're not even halfway there, to be honest. Well, we're, we're, not, we're not we're not we're not in a very now. we're not in a very good spot as far as having all 16 secured. So if, if not, we're going to have to go uh, through eminent domain. We're hoping to not have to go through that process. We've been trying. The city attorney's office has been working quite diligently. Um, but yet we're right at about half, about eight properties. Yes, ma'am. So are you saying the eight are Out of all, 16. Eight are already purchased plus the two? So that would make it 10? Or no, is no, that eight including the... We, the we've purchased the six, but we have two more, two more properties. Six, six are in negotiations. Excuse me. Six, six are, are in negotiations. negotiations. And two are, uh, we have contracts to purchase, purchase, I believe. I have to check with the city attorney's office to see if that's been finalized. But the last report I received is they are in the process of negotiation with property owners. Do we have any purchased past tense that are owned by us as a city right now? I believe we only have a couple. Yeah. Two. I thought there I was two. Right. two. I believe we'll it's only two. Yeah, we'll get you an update on that for July of how where yeah, we'll we are. Have to, we'll have to be, yes, verify that. Are we over. offering to swap properties with them also? I mean, is that within... Right now, we've just been trying to buy them. Trying to buy, okay. Mm -hmm. And just for your benefit, uh, Commissioner Carison, we're on page um, 73, discussing Price Boulevard. So six are 
in negotiations and two we already own outright of the 16 we need yes ma'am that is correct thank you any idea how much longer until those are purchased and done and not off the top of my head we'll get to it we'll have something for you in july of where we are in the hall. Okay. Any questions? Sure. if we were to have to go through the eminent domain process how long of a process approximately is that i don't know if I mean, right now the courts are all kinds of backed up so i don't know i mean on a normal basis is it a year is it two years is it six months do you have any idea i don't i have not been through that process since we haven't used that process in a long time um, i'll check with the city attorney to see if she has any idea i'm just curious on time span you know mm -hmm. that's all I honestly don't know okay thank you so is it safe to say that is the hold up at this point with price widening? Mm -hmm. yes ma'am that's that's the biggest hold up right now okay and then financing the rest of it okay. which on tuesday you'll see a 25 million dollar grant coming in front of you all that we're hoping to get we've applied Kenny, i haven't even looked at tuesday's agenda uh, I've been busy that is that. not my fault exactly <laughs> well maybe no uh, <laughs> i looked at it <laughs> way before us <laughs> I looked at it but I didn't study it <laughs> okay um, speaking of grants um, in this in the CIP on the price Boulevard on 73 there's a total of 70 $7.4 million already appropriated. But when you go down to the little box that says means of financing, if you add those one, two, three, four numbers up, yeah, they don't match. That equals like 22 million. And I'm wondering where did those numbers come from? I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know if people can answer that. I guess part of it is because it's coming from other funds. Probably the 7.4 is strictly from this fund. So maybe that would be instead of. Instead of waiting, we'll just. Yeah. We'll get it to you. Yeah. And if I think maybe something like that oh, it might be a simple memo, unless you want to just talk about it in, in July. Well, Is there anything else on Price Boulevard? No, ma'am. Okay, next is the Tamiami Trail parking area south. This project um, started a few oh. years back, and um, so the design currently is going to be outdated as far as cost of construction and so forth. And if, if it's okay with you, uh, Mayor, I'd like to also reference the North because uh, Commission asked us to also um, move forward with the design for the North, um, which we did. So um, North is on page 81 and South is on page 74. Correct. So um, because it's outdated, we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to uh, recalculate and, and get a new engineer's estimate. Um, what we were going to ask is if it would be possible to push this, both projects out because one of the things the commission also uh, directed us to do is to contact all the property owners, and it was at my suggestion actually, to see if they would be interested in participating since that parking is going to uh, benefit them, if they would be interested in like an assessment help pay for this because it, it gets to be very expensive it was already close to a million dollars just for the south I, go ahead i'm sorry 
No, that, that's fine. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I am really, really, really behind this project. T totally. Uh, we think Toledo Blade and Sumter are these big accesses into the city, which they are off 75, but they fail in comparison to the traffic going down 41. Mm -hmm. And the, the look as you go down 41, where you've got the angle parking and then you run into where there's not any, uh, it looks like one area is business friendly and the other area isn't. And I think it speaks volumes uh, to anybody traversing uh, the city. Uh, if I were a business owner, no, I would not contribute to public parking. Uh, if it were my parking lot or something, yes, I would. I've talked to some of these businesses about you right. know, contributing to it. Uh, you would end up with the same, in my opinion, the same type of situation that you have over there with that Popeye Plaza, and everybody owns a portion of the, you know, the alley. Uh, you, to me, you kind of end up in the same way. If they're putting into the pot, does that mean that they own uh, those parking lots in front of their business? Uh, <coughs> I mean, I, I see an issue with asking private businesses to put into the public parking because of rights and stuff. But to me, this parking, I would rather see it sooner than later. Uh, I think it's valuable to the city. Uh, parking is something that, especially down 41, it just is lacking, uh, teetotally. So just to put that out, I am, I have been for this project since I've come on board. And this has been three years now. But Vice, Vice Mayor, if, I, if it's okay if I respond to that. Of course. Um, part, part of the issue is um, many of those, in fact, most of those commercial businesses along 41, it, it, definitely those two segments, were built under very old, outdated parking regulations. Yep. So the issue becomes the commercial uh, property owners, they don't have enough parking to right. begin with. And um, quite honestly, the parking that we're, we'd be building is to benefit their commercial businesses. So that being said, I think the thought process was um, just for the south parking area alone, it was going to cost uh, right around $900,000. Um, so is that really fair and equitable to pass that along to all the taxpayers? Granted, everybody will benefit from the commercial businesses. But if a new commercial business would come in, they have to build the current parking standards. So that was our thought process, and, and I had suggested that, you know, probably close to a year ago. And the commission had said, yes, you know, proceed and see how you make out with that. It was just a means to try to get some supplemental monies to help with the costs, because it's very, very expensive. Grant's so, failed. yes, ma'am. The, the grant funding failed. But, but in the meantime, in the meantime, since we don't have enough money for both of these two projects, and we will have to go back to the drawing board with the engineer's cost estimate, we would just respectfully request, we need about, we're about $445,000 short. So if we would take all of the money from the north parking, or excuse me, the south, and a little bit more from the, the, the north, then we would be able to, to do the Tropic Air Boulevard reconstruction project. The what? The Tropic Air Boulevard, you know, the repaving. So you wanted to take the money yeah. from this to use out yes. in the estate. Yes, and that would gain us time to yeah, redo the engineer's cost estimate and come up with better numbers. Why do we have to have an estimate on how much it's going to cost before you actually proceed? I mean, to me, the engineering makes the design. It's been sitting around for, as I said, I've been here three years, and it's been sitting there longer than, than I've been here. Well, so as long as they've got the design and we know that there's an uptick why do we have to pay somebody to tell us that there's going to be a 15% increase? Because we have to know what we're going to have to budget for. And in that, in the three years or four years, we, we tried for three years to get a grant. And of course, we didn't get the grant in all three years. So we, we're just going to have to know how much we're going to budget for. Because right now, just for the, the south parking lot, we're close to a million dollars. So if that, we need to know how much that's, you know, going to have to go up. 
And you have to pay somebody. I mean, to do we can a do it in house. I have, we, I have no problem I having done. Oh, we, we can do it in house. That's we can not estimate a problem. it, but the number tends yeah. a high likelihood of being incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, so we will come back to you with, again, a best guess. Okay. And if it's wrong, then we'll have to budget differently. We could be wrong high. We could be wrong low. But. I know I wanted both sides done, but uh, I know tropic care needs to be done also, but I don't want to steal the whole pot from one to give to another. Um, can we do one side of 41? Right now we don't have enough money to do either side of 41. We don't. No, ma'am. I'm how, sorry. How short don't. are we on one side if you combine the two? What was the estimate for the north, and what was the estimate um, the engineer gave us for the south? If you could, the the estimate for the south is one million ninety five dollars six hundred, and the estimate for the north is really close to the same. So it's almost one point one million each. Correct. Correct, about one one point one million each. Yes, yes, ma'am. And you've got how much? A hundred thousand dollars. Woohoo! Close. And, and you want to put a hundred thousand dollars over into traffic here? Oh my god! <laughs> 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 um, regarding those numbers, um, we have appropriated on the south um, on the CIP sheet thirty four thousand dollars. <coughs> But when I go to the CIP sheet from last year, it had four hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars in surtax, and I'm because trying to remember the, where did it the go. The CIP staff is recommending doing exactly what what Ms. Belia just said is putting that money into Tropicare Boulevard. Oh, so this is this reflects this our is reflecting that. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're then, just going to leave a hundred thousand in for this project? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Pulling out the 400 and putting in the okay. Tropic Care. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Carson. Tropic Care, you're talking about the path? Because no, I the, thought we already no. budgeted one. Not the path. Not the path. No, ma'am. Just, just the resurfacing, the dark fiber, and the. Uh, budgeted for that. In the, nine, that was supposed to be done. And this there's year. not enough budgeted for it. That's right. When we add it to the project, the more you add to it and the more time that goes by, the more expensive it gets. But we added to it in 1819. Mm -hmm. And now that we've got better numbers. And then in 1920, we got our estimates and we budgeted for it then. Mm -hmm. And we were told that would be completed this year and in those this estimates budget. estimates were not enough. Okay, so how much was it short? For the reconstruction or for the bike bike path? For the, the tropic care for the resurfacing for resurfacing. Four hundred and forty five thousand dollars. Okay. For sure. We couldn't find that in somewhere. We just did. Well, but yeah, no. this year, but you know, it's been over a year that yeah. this was supposed to be done. It was but, a priority yeah. in twenty eighteen. <clears throat> yeah, and yes, ma'am. Doing the work you asked I mean, you added the dark fiber, that had to be calculated, figured out how much it's gonna be, and there's also all the other work. It's, and as we went it's through It's a this priority, but everything <laughs> seems to be a priority. And when everything's a priority, it means it's got to get prioritized. Priorities the, need priority. The, the more you other have. problem is that this is rehab, and wouldn't that be part of the, um, the, uh, the money that we pay for the roads, the road rehab fee? Uh, construction the traffic bond, road fees. The bond. Road bond. Bond. Road, road bond? Road bond? No, bond. no. This the, was not part no. of the road no, bond. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the road construction fees. The construction uh, traffic road fees? Right. Yeah. So is that money being utilized? The surtax for this? money is being used for this. For, for this, we're using surtax money. We use that typically on a routine maintenance every year for the roads. Yeah. Well, technically, I guess this will be a routine maintenance too, considering. And, and yeah, it's the not a road short bond. answer is yes, we could use that money for this. And then the money we're using for that, or the, the projects we're using that money for right now, would have to come from, the, from somewhere else also. Right. All the money is allocated to various projects. If you want to pull a one funding source to this one, then that means something else gets unfunded. 
I guess my problem is is that it's taking so long. I mean, I was told specifically that this would be completed this year, and people in my neighborhood were thinking that it was going to be completed this year. And this is the first time mm -hmm. that I heard there was a delay due to funding. Well, and that concerns me. Please connect the path to this repavement. The path is a completely the separate path project. Was I, out. I know that, but we okay. were going, we had money okay. there too that right. we could pull for this. Mm -hmm. So is there anything still sitting in the path? He specifically said to push the path <laughs> out because this was a priority. Yes. And that's, that was the reason we, we pushed push it out. out. And that's why I'm wondering if there was money sitting there that could have covered the 445000 The pathway was um, only budgeted like oh, it had over 2000 at the time. I what mean, there was nothing. What page is the path on, guys? I'm looking at it. Path is page 76. 76? Yes, ma'am. I thought it was over two, two, it's two million. million. Yeah, it's two million. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the old budget book mm -hmm. as to what we had done then. But appropriated to date for the path is two million. Two million. So and why see, why see. didn't anybody come to us and say, hey, we're short on the resurfacing of Tropicare. We're yeah. short a half a million dollars. Can we take a half a million dollars out of the shared path? Why didn't that conversation happen? And I thought that's what we were supposed to be doing. If we needed to take it from the path, we could. That was kind of the whole reason why we pushed the path exactly. out was because yes. we needed and the money for we've been working on it, and now we're coming to you telling you that we need more money. But wow. when did you well, know that you were short a half a million dollars? It that wasn't we... that long ago because we've been working on this project all year. If, if, I, can, if I can explain a couple things. Um, we have been doing a lot of work on this project, Tropic Air Boulevard reconstruction. It started out just to repave Tropic Air Boulevard. Once we had surveying done and we, we had testing of core, core samplings and all that, what we found out was we have a lot of base failure on that road, okay? So that added to the cost of the project. In addition, we have drainage issues. We have old pipes, and I think I reported on that a couple months ago. And then, of course, we had the dark fiber installation, which we have to factor in. But primarily, the two, the two issues we have that, that drove the cost of the project up was the bad base failures and also the drainage work and, and replacement of pipes and so forth we're going to need to have done. So I go back to the original bond reconstruction mm -hmm. and the whole point of the bond rehab was to fix those base failures. Why was this road not done then? It just was not included in the 266 yep. miles of roads. Because actually, Tropicare has been repaved a couple of times. It's, it's just that also, also, it was in there with the war mix and all that. We have the whole, mm -hmm. whole history of that road. We've had floods on that road many mm -hmm. times. So now we have base failure. We have not in the past uh, replaced the pipes and all that because it's extremely expensive. So now we have a, we have a situation. It's, a, it's heavily it used by heavy traffic. You know, a lot of heavy trucks, a lot of construction traffic uses Tropicare Boulevard. Yeah, it does so. because you've got a large... Uh, and personally, I would rather see the 400,000 stay in the angle parking and use the 400,000 out of the sidewalk out on Tropicare. The multi-use path? Yeah. That's my personal take on it. I, I want to see the multi-use path as well as the reconstruction done this year being the next fiscal year. The, the, You're going to be the, a lot of money short. The, yeah, no yes, ma'am. The, the money and also the time. Uh, the multi-use path is probably going to take about 18 to 24 months, and we really and truly need to get moving on that reconstruction of the street. That's that's very important because we we have a lot of I mean we have a lot of bad areas that need to be fixed as far as the base is concerned. It's concerning for us because the, of the amount of uh, heavy construction traffic you have on that road. Um, Plus, you have drainage structures, you know, pipes and so forth that need to be replaced. So it's 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 of an immediate need to, to do that project first. So and keep on moving as far as the design, the planning, and all that for the path. Okay. You had you have seven hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars for the sidewalk. Oh, that's San Mateo. I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, Kristen's calendar. 
to go back and tell you some more of my thinking of why I would put the money back into your angle parking. Right. If you're going to still go to those business people, it's going to look a whole lot better if you've got something in in there in it. Correct. And that they're supplementing to benefit them uh, rather than going to them and having empty pockets. Right. And then asking them to foot the whole bill. Uh, but the multi-use path, you've only got half of the amount that you need, and it's in that area. I would rather see the money to take come, it out of there and then fund that there. later. Yeah. One more time, you were saying to fund the multi-use path with the money from Tamiami Trail. No, she's no, the opposite they were, of that. Oh, they I were see. trying. I said put it back. I don't agree with if that. If I can weigh in on the Tamiami Trail parking, um, I, I, I see the need out there, but the only benefit people are going to get are those businesses. Mm -hmm. And it'd be different, you know, when we did the angle parking by the library, the benefit was also for the people that patronize the park, the veterans park that's there. There was the benefit for the library. There was the ben there was a bigger benefit more for the park. Um, so we paid for part of that, and if I remember correctly, so did the county, or we got a grant or something for that too, um, at the library. But if you're putting it on the north and the south, the only benefit is those businesses. I will never park there unless I'm going to that business. There's nothing else, there's no other reason for my car to park there unless I'm patronizing that business. So I understand that you're talking about doing a cost sharing. Mm -hmm. I would like to see it be 30% the city, 70% the businesses. We will then have to be responsible for maintaining it from here on out, not the businesses. It would be city property. But to ask the taxpayers to pay, you know, 70% or 80% and the businesses only pay 20 or 30, that's not right. This is strictly benefiting the businesses. And the more I'm talking, the more I'm leaning towards 80-20 or even 90-10 with the city maintaining it. Well, I, I totally agree because when we first designed this, which is way beyond... Yeah, a long time I ago. I mean, this was a long time ago. Yeah. This has been in the, the making I, for probably close the, to... Yeah, six to eight years at least. Oh, more than that. Maybe even 10. No, no. I was here the first time and that was... Well, the pod parking was like 20. Okay. That's so even longer. My point is, is that it was all supposed to be financed by TIF, remember? Yes. Taxing. Yes. And mm -hmm. we got now turned you're, you're down... Right. Through it for a CRA through the city and the county and the whole nine yards and that's why the financing fell through and mm -hmm. it sat on a shelf. So here we are. Years again. ago they called it pod parking with the right. tip. Mm -hmm. So, I mean maybe that's a way to look at it again. Uh, maybe with a different commission we can go back and create a CRA and and get tax uh, increment financing for it. There's a very variety of different ways to help with that particular corridor. And, and I understand saying that it benefits the business, but I'm a citizen that goes to that business. And so it's benefiting the citizen also. And there's umpteen businesses up and down there. It, it's not just a handful. I mean, I'm that, not, that, that's our number one corridor for commercial. Right. Now, I'm uh, not going to. And I drive there and people are in muddy ditches, no, in the right Right, but they're driving. They're driving there in muddy dishes, and they're going to businesses in muddy ditches. But I'm going to tell Our you right city. now, these kids on Tropicare are walking to their bus stops in the fog in muddy ditches in four feet of water. I'm not taking money away from that. That's it needs to be done. Exactly. I'm not saying no to that, and I'm not taking money from that. I'm trying to find a place for the money to go to it, but also leaving some money for the 41. So it sounds like to me we have to have a bigger conversation on this um, cost sharing for the parking lots um, on the north and south of the trail. And I don't think that that's a conversation we're going to be able to have today. Um, I am in favor, I think it was Vice Mayor who suggested taking the half a million dollars out of the path 
don't and agree. putting it on the road to get the road redone. I because think that is the greater need when you're looking between path on Tropicare or road on Tropicare. The I road I'm hearing is a much greater need than the path. How do you say that's a greater need? I think they have to be done simultaneously or else you're going to, it's gonna cost way more than what we're thinking. Well, the, the problem is, Commissioner, it, the, the path is going to take 18 to 24 months to get constructed. We need to get that road fixed first. We can still be doing the design and everything else with the path. Why can't you phase it then? Why can't you do phase we can. one is we from, can. and then we can do it that. reduce the cost overall, and then you phase it from Sumter, you know, uh, Van Camp to to Sumter, um, and Sumter to, to Toledo Sumter, or Sumter to Toledo. So, or so if I can suggest maybe what we do then is in the upcoming year, we work on that phasing plan and then also maybe within the next budget year, we could but be see, able to do phase one. But see, now you're talking three years before we see anything come to fruition. We've already been it's waiting it's already three years. Us. This is what it's aggravates me. Yeah. But if you remember, one, we had a public meeting and in case anybody doesn't remember how painful that night was, <laughs> this room was packed, and we literally had to call the police in because it was getting out of control. Um, and it was decided to push the path out. Yes. But it was decided to push the path out only because of the resurfacing project that we believed was going to be completed this year. Yes. And, and now that that's not true. But it's been being worked on. It's not like when we budget something, it just happens because we write a check. They had to go out and take core samples. They had to find out the true condition of the road. They found out that there's a lot of more things that need to be done than were originally thought. We've been working on it all year long, and we've added new things to it. So every time you change a project, but the it causes delays. But the adding of new things was done way prior to this. And when we got out there to start getting the work done on the road, we discovered that the road was in worse shape than we did. We are bringing that back to you now with the information and what we believe the cost to be and a way to fund that. So and let me, bottom line is I want to know how do you allocate money to get these two projects done? And if it has to be a phased approach, then so be it. But well, we can, so we're short just for round numbers, say $500,000 for the road. We can take that from the shared use path or we can take it from the par the parking. You all get to decide that because mm -hmm. you are clearly not in agreement on it. So you can tell us which well, one you I want know, to rub. I know this path is, or path, this parking mm -hmm. is not going to happen this year. I know it. So uh, we did not go out to the business people and stuff like that for it to occur this year. So I know we're going to have to work on it next year. I just didn't want them to approach businesses and be empty handed. So, uh, and make it look more like a partnership. I realized too that when we, it wasn't that long ago, we sprung dark fiber into this project too. Yes, it was last so, year. It was last year. Last budget cycle. And we told you we were gonna figure out how much it costs. We did that. You know, I, I'm sorry that the road is in worse condition than we thought it was. No, no. You have no control over that. Right. And um, we are adapting to that. Now the, the question was, okay. if I can finish, please. It's tried three times. How can I fund both of these projects? Yes. Take half a million dollars from the, the shared use path mm -hmm. so the road can be done. Work on the shared use path. The whole road? The whole road will be done. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Ma yes, yes, sir. Including the dark fiber. And, and thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. We really got to work on that with her. <laughs> I need to get to the eye doctor. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, um, and then the shared use path will have a million and a half dollars left in it. We can phase that in, get as much done this year as we can, which, and we'll come back to you with which sections we can start on and do with that million and a half dollars and find the other two and a half million dollars at a future time. Can I, can we come to a compromise and just leave 250,000 in the, in the uh, parking? and then push the rest of it over to what you need well, out there on traffic care? I say you leave 50000 into the parking. Mm -hmm. We've got hundred right now. So this is only so twenty five thousand. Well, with what's in it right now, because keep in mind, the proposal that we made to you all in this book 
funds Tropicare to be done without having to take anything from the shared use paths, leaves 100,000 for both, of the, both sides combined of the parking, and leaves $2 million in the shared use path, which allows us to do a little more. Um, instead of a million and a half, we have two million in it. I got an idea. Let's, I think what I'm hearing, and let me, let me say it all and then correct me if I'm wrong. What I'm hearing is, regardless of the monies in the CIP sheet, I am hearing $50,000 for the trail parking to be budgeted for the trail parking, 25 and 25. I was just going hang, with a flat let, Please, 25. hang on. 25 and 25 for the parking, north and south. And then the priority is to get that road Tropicare done. And the path. Hang. The first priority is to then take the money from the parking lot, put it towards the road, the excess money towards the road. Mm -hmm. If you still need more money, then you take it from the path, and then we are going to phase the path from Van Camp to Sumter, from Sumter to Toledo Blake. But only 25,000 for North, 25,000 for South, get the Tropicare Road done, and then continue focusing on the path in a phased approach. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I don't know. Can I ask a question though? It, and it has to deal with the path. Now, I, my understanding was when we were talking about the path, I thought it was only going from Toledo Blade or uh, Ponce de Leon to Toledo Blade. We are going all the way to Van Camp now. Okay, that, I, I just need a clarification also, on that. I also no, it we has were, to be. That's what I was talking about. I thought we were going to have another conversation about the path because we were making it sh skinnier and we were making it um, more impervious instead of concrete. I thought we had a con we asked for a conversation based on the citizens meeting to come back with a, another conversation on how that would look with cost effectiveness. Uh, for, for the record, Jerry Traverso, engineering division manager, the, the design consultant in his scope, he's designing a path, an eight foot uh, multi use path trail mm -hmm. from Ponce de Leon to Toledo. Yes. After that, per the commission's request, we did a cost estimate of how much it would be to do a sidewalk from Ponce de Leon to Van Camp. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got a request for another uh, cost estimate. How much would be to do a whole sidewalk from Toledo Blade all the way to Van Camp? So there were mm -hmm. like three different uh, scenarios. Mm -hmm. It was always Van Camp to Toledo. And Van Camp to Toledo was the, the, the repaving is from Van no, Camp to Toledo. The, that the, one is the, the whole. Path. The path was always Van Camp to Toledo because those children are on Van Camp walking down Ponce, uh, Tropicare. Uh, it, very clearly, it was Van Camp to Toledo. And it was going to be in a phased approach, Van Camp to Sumter, then from Sumter to Toledo Blade. No. And it was going to be on one side. Commissioner. Commissioner, I think that was changed yeah. in the commission meeting. Yes, ma'am. It was. I know that's how it originally was proposed. That, that's 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 why I asked because in the beginning, the path was only going to go from Ponce de Leon to yes. Would you listen? This this is what happened, in my opinion, from my recollection. That's why I questioned it because I was not in favor of the path being eight foot wide because it did not incorporate the people and from Ponce de Leon to. Van Camp, because we were excluding all of those children and their bus stops. That's when I came up with a suggestion and said, hey, what if we just went with sidewalk? The, they came back and said, well, we got to run around here and run around there. And we, there's, there's different avenues on doing a sidewalk. I says, but as long as we're doing something from Van Camp all the way to Toledo Blade that would service everybody out there, that's when it got changed and we went with getting a proposal for a sidewalk. Then I believe after that it went back to a path again. And mm -hmm. I don't, uh, we were just going to have more. All I can tell more... you is in 2016, when this was proposed, it mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. It was a path, slash, actually it was supposed to be a sidewalk from Van Camp to Toledo in two phased approach. 
twenty seventeen is when we discuss the fact that that road is atrocious and that it needs to be recircled. Mm -hmm. And that's when we combine that's them. when we combine we combined them. Combined that so then, get done at the same time. Do then <laughs> in twenty eighteen is when fiber gets brought into it. And then we're told that they can't afford to do all of that. Then in 2019 is when we say, okay, you can't afford to resurface it, so let's push off the pathway and let's do the resurfacing. But that's going to be done this year. And here we are, 2020, talking about it again. You see why I'm pissed? No, I understand. Like, how many years does it take to get something accomplished? And, and it's I ridiculous. I'm just giving you my recollection from me sitting up here from what the conversations I had about this. Well, N nowhere um, in the beginning was it from, in my recollection of our conversations, was Van Camp to Ponce de Leon included. Well, it wasn't. That's why I argued it. Well, let me tell you that as far as the resurfacing, the atrocious portions of that Tropicare Boulevard ends at Sumter. So if you have to phase in so the, the, the pathway along with the road, mm -hmm. you can do Van Camp to Sumter because that is the primary worst area. Then from Sumter to Toledo. Because Sumter to Toledo is not nearly as bad as the Sumter to Van Camp. So Specifically the Gottfried area, which is where I live. So I know. Nobody's arguing that that's not the worst part of the road. It wasn't said once by us. What we're saying is what was approved to go out was not Van Camp to Toledo. It may have been the original discussion, but when a commission approved something that went out, that's not the, the area that was included. And we put out what was approved by the commission to put out. So now that we understand that the need for getting the road of Tropicare done from Van Camp to Toledo Blade is the number one priority. How do you say that's the number one priority, though? Based on what they're telling us. If you live out there, it might be the number one priority to get about two blocks done. But if you're, going to, and if you're going to do a roadway, and I remember this conversation with Price, because Price was going to be done in three phases, if I remember correctly. It was. Mm -hmm. Just think it'd so, be done. So hang on. They said that it'd be cheaper if we do it in all one time because the guys are out there and they're moving it. Now, if you, if you do only one area of Tropicare, we are going to have the other areas screaming down our throats, why, why weren't we picked? Why isn't ours getting done? How come they get to have theirs done first and we don't? So we said to do the entire length of Tropicare from Van Camp to Toledo Blake. Let's get that done. That was last year. I, now I So let's get, I say get it, it all done. done. Get it done in the two phases. But, I'm not budging on this one. Well, These then kids we're going to have to walk in that water every single but day during the, the school year. The kids at the nonsense. other end are also walking no, in. No, they're not. No, they're not. So we, we can sit here and argue this all day long, and we need to get a consensus because I see that we are all on different ends of this. So, Commissioner but Emmerich, and then we're going to get a consensus. I, I, I just have a question here because we've gone back and we've asked for more information, and we're supposed to have other discussions about the path, about the path. So then or, or the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. right. Can we have that conversation? I mean, I want to know what the numbers are the numbers between are an eight foot path and maybe a four foot sidewalk. Yes. And that's then we that's a sidewalk. difference of, of a lot of money. City manager, when are yeah. we supposed to have the path conversation that we request? July 28th, uh, July 28th. Meeting, yes, ma'am. Can we push it up to the June? You have all your numbers. You have everything, right? Yes, ma'am. Can we amend the budget? I mean, the um, agenda item for this coming Tuesday. Put that discussion on this Tuesday, so that way, then we have the discussion. We can give direction for this coming budget. Yeah. Sure. I think you better add how much is it going to cost if you phase in. From one section, uh, from Van Camp to Sumter, then Sumter to Toledo, with the combination 
of a sidewalk and the repavement or a path and a repavement, whatever the hell it is, and how much that's going to cost overall so that that also is an option. Now, I just want to clarify, and again, Jerry Traverso, uh, for the record, that there's no design being done from uh, Ponce de Leon to Van Camp. For what? what I was for, for, for the either path. the trail or the sidewalk. And I was asked, it was for a cost estimate of how much that would have been uh, done. The design and permitting that we have is from Ponce de Leon to Toledo Blade. For the path. We can for the come path. up and for say, hey, this will cost approximately this much. Uh, and that's one thing that we say, okay, can we have the plans? And, and going back to the facing of the plan, uh, we've got to be time conscious that that will have to be designed, will have to be submitted to Swift Mud go through the permitting, that portion, and if we're going to tie the roadway to that section to do it concurrently, then that will push that section even farther out into the calendar. And sometimes splitting uh, what Mayor said about the, the price, uh, when you split these roadways, you pay twice the mobilization, twice the MOT, so at the end, it, it ends up cutting more than if we do it the whole thing kind of like uh, repaving and then going back and doing a path well the, the yeah. path is completely separate than but it's still going to cost more it's rather than material. doing it all at the same time it's different material well theoretically no. it's, it's 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 asphalt yeah the the the, right. the path same is going to be a, an eight foot asphalt path yeah that's mm -hmm. what that's was. right that's is your what design was. ready from but Ponce to can can i ask the design question? is ready for Ponce. we can do from Ponce. To, to Toledo, Toledo, because to that one is ready to go. Permitting, approval, right. design, complete, everything is, is ready to go into the shell. Okay, let's get a consensus to have. Let's let's break I this into little bite-sized pieces. I just had a, I just had another question, and, and it's going to where we're going with the design and everything from Ponce de Leon to Van Camp. Let's just say we're going forward with this. We can always add that little section later later at the end of the project yeah. and with your timing it may just be a short period of time from where you end up completing it and then going back out there and just finishing up that yeah. smaller section yeah that's all that's all i wanted to get at it can that would be like phase three of just button it up at the end mm -hmm. i was thinking the same thing and you're that's probably, all i'm looking at and you're probably going to have to do sidewalks there because there is not enough room for the multi -use for path. a multi-use path yeah. All right, so let's get in a uh, uh, consensus to ask the city manager to amend the road and drainage district meeting for June to include this conversation that they were going to have in July. Yes. 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 Okay. So there's your uh, consensus to amend the agenda for road and drainage. And with this conversation that's been going on, you started to get uh, a consensus to yes. <laughs> leave in those parking areas yeah. 25000 So let's get a consensus to leave $25,000 in the CIP for the parking north and $25,000 for the CIP parking south. And the rest of the money we will talk about in just a minute. So let's get a consensus on the parking lots. Yes. I'm a no. I think yes. it needs to be 10 and 10. Yes. Okay, so we've got $25,000 for the north and south parking lots. Now, for the money, we need to know what the total amount of that money is, not based on the CIP for the road work. What money are we talking about with 25 in the parking? And for north and south, so we only leave in fifty thousand. What is our amount we have to work with to give you direction on how to allocate it? So you just put extra fifty thousand into his pot. Can I At one time when we were looking at this, there was enough money, I thought, for both because I said emphatically I wanted the path done for the kids. <laughs> and it went with the doing the resurfacing. Can 
keep in mind what we've done to prepare this. We already took the money out of those. You, you're taking an additional forty-eight thousand dollars out of them. So, at, because what we proposed to you was that it already has the money removed from them. And was that, the money removed, leaving twenty-five in each one of those projects? If I, if I, give me just a second. Okay. So we proposed a budget, a CIP that funds the Tropicare Road rehabilitation, the road, by taking the money out of those parking um, items on 41. We already took $426,000 out of those projects. That leaves approximately $100,000 in the parking. You're taking, an, actually you're taking an additional 48,000 out of them. So since we've already funded the road, that would put the forty-eight thousand dollars into the shared use path. Correct. That's fine. There you go. Okay. So, you, so now, based on the CIP project that is currently before us, mm -hmm. the road is funded yeah. from Van Camp to Toledo Blake. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. That is the correct. Road, yes. That is correct. Yes, so ma'am. Now you have an additional forty-eight thousand dollars for the shared youth path. He shared shared use path. Whatever path it is. Whatever path. Okay. <laughs> we don't know what it's going to be until Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So the sidewalk path, right. whatever, the Tropicare walking trail. Walking trail. Now right. has an additional forty-eight thousand dollars in it. Correct. Okay. okay. Gotcha. How much money do you have in the shared use path currently? Two million and thirty-six thousand dollars. Two million thirty-six. Mm -hmm. And we spent four hundred and thirty four of that for the design. Two million thirty six. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ask us put another forty eight. Hang on one second. Or... And I would need to verify that forty eight number. I'm not positive yeah. about it. It did no. it's a roundabout number. Even if so almost honestly forty eight thousand dollars is not gonna make that big of a deal on a four million dollar project. Not at all. All right. So we have consensus to take that forty eight million. Forty-eight thousand. Go ahead, Jerry. Forty-eight thousand. Yeah, we're, I found a tree back there. This estimated forty-eight thousand dollars from the parking lots to apply it towards the sidewalk path. Do I get a consensus from you, Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carrison? Yes. Um. Yes. 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 Okay. So now we have. We're back to About. zero. Yes. <laughs> okay. Question. Balance budget. Commissioner Carrison. The um, project for the Biscayne sidewalks. Hold on. Okay. I'm, that's from Ellington to Price. Where the hell was that? To Glen Allen. To Glen Allen. Glen Allen. Um, almost, almost all of that is somebody else's money. Okay, that's what I. How much? Uh, how much is not to someone else's money? If we don't leave in there what we have in there, then we'll lose the other people's money too because we won't be able to do the project. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't know Nothing, nothing to move out of that one. No. Okay. Can and I then, ask a question about two seconds? No, I have a question on the other subject. Yeah, same here. No, I was looking to get my money. money. Thank you. Okay, yeah. hang on. The Go ahead, Commissioner Emmerich. No, I understand that. But coming up in Tuesday, like I had asked before, instead of the full wide path, did you get numbers for just a sidewalk doing that whole area? Because that's what I asked for in the conversation. I, I believe I did it. It was a while ago, but I can go back and check. And, and if not, we can do a, a, a cursory estimate. based on. And, and, on and that's fine because you may have, instead of doing eight foot wide in that path, and you cut it down to four foot wide, and it may be concrete rather than asphalt, the, the numbers are going to change, but you may get a lot more distance with a smaller sidewalk. That's, that's what I wanted to compare. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just wanted to make that clear because I, I want those numbers. I want to see what the difference is going to be. That was the same question I was going to ask, and it was you who brought up the four-foot sidewalk. Um, or five or five. whatever it could be, you know, whatever whatever standard. Five foot. The bridge for it was going to be the most costly right. part mm -hmm. of it. I remember that. But... You, you can go a lot further with that five foot than you can an eight foot. Right. But that was the that's what I want to compare out there. That's 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 the meat and potatoes on how we might be able we might be able to fit everything in with the money that we have 
just changing our perspective on what we want out there. That's what I'm trying to get accomplished. Yeah. Commissioner Emmerich, if I could mention too, I was just mentioning to Jerry, since that's an arterial, it's gotta be six feet wide sidewalk mm -hmm. instead of five feet. Because it's, it's, it's not a local. Right, right. but okay. whatever the case may be, what the specifications we'll are, Rough that's, estimate. you know, it, you're okay. still cutting off two foot. Yes, sure. So okay. it, it's smaller. Yep. That's all. So are we finished with the conversation about the the parking lot, the shared use, and the road for Tropicare. Well, I'm trying to look at these other projects. Okay, we'll go through so each one of them. any of them can, Let's but go I get through what each you're one saying. Of them. Okay, gotcha. so basically you have your direction. We're going to have a bigger conversation on Tuesday. You know what to do with these numbers as of now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, Thank so let's move much. on. <laughs> Anybody Turn else have any stuff. questions on the Biscayne <laughs> bike lanes? <laughs> What page no. are you on? Se um, page 75. 75. No. What's, the, what's the size of those bike lanes? Are they going to be the five, six Huge. foot? Or seven. We're going to seven. Seven. And if we reduce it to a five foot, like the rest of it. Then you lose the money. Then we yeah. lose the money. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so we're done with that. Tropic Care One, San Mateo uh, sidewalks. You had a question on that, uh, by, uh, Commissioner Carrison. Uh, San Mateo. That is nothing this year, right? Correct. But we have over <coughs> seven hundred thousand in the account for that, which has all been spent. Which means we have nothing in it for this year and I thought so the sidewalks are complete because I thought that we had that, that's not done that's I, coming up I thought we Has had said that designed? this was going to be done by this year as well it is in this year's projects to be done to, to uh, be done just uh, just to explain what that we were getting this done and finalizing the, the design of it and part of the 700 included a lot of uh, drainage improvements toward the south near the Coca Plum. And at that time, we uh, noticed that Utilities is doing a water main. And we asked them to send us some of the survey data that they have in order to uh, try to save some money for us to get some of the, uh, the data close to Coca Plum. And then we realized that if we can coordinate the project with them, and do it what is called a ghost with it's like it's going to be their main project the water main and this is still being in conversation with the utilities if we can do these two projects uh jointly under one contract we go back to the it will be paying one mobilization one mot so we can out of this budget we can we're forecasting some savings now how much i cannot answer right now that question but it's something that we're working with them to see if we can get both contracts under one and do the, the water main and then the contractor, instead of just putting dirt, then build the sidewalk and, and do it all together. So this is on hold again. Yeah. Because we're waiting on utilities so that we can combine it. Yes. And more importantly, to avoid putting sidewalks in that somebody's gonna tear out and then we go back in. Tear it out, water line in. Yeah. I, as I understood it, most of the utilities on San Mateo, the pipes, I remember them being put in over a year and a half ago. So I don't know. Here comes, right. Here comes the you? great pumpkin. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Rick Newkirk, utility director. No, uh, San Mateo is, is really a, a weird setup. It's really challenging between Hillsborough and Price. Um, it zigzags in and out from side streets. It goes from 12 inch pipe to six inch pipe back to 12. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in those gaps right there to make it one um, complete pipeline on San Mateo from Hillsborough to Price. And the 100% plans are due to us by the end of June. So this will be completed when, 2022? No, it'll be completed in 2021, yes. With the sidewalks? Yes. Oh, yes. For real? For, for real. For real. Yes, ma'am. Trust me. I'm putting that down in...
Can I ask one question? Based on what I'm seeing on the CIP sheet, it says that we've appropriated $774,000. So far, the expenditures to date is $752,000. I don't see any money for construction. Is that already been taken care of? What, where is the construction money for this? $155,000. They can't be right. That's no. not correct. I think no, that's, that's what is left. left. That is what yeah. is left. The difference will be the, the, the survey that we paid for part of right. the survey. Right. What I'm 19, asking 19. about mm -hmm. is where's the construction money? If this is supposed to be done next year, this year, next year, where's the construction money? May, Mayor, this is, that is an error. That's, that's an error. What's left, that's what's left. Okay, so you're going to update the CIP sheet for next? Yes, yes, ma'am. We'll update it. I am so glad I asked that question. Thank you. And you may want to update the description to include the utility project at the same time. Okay. That way then we, we yes, understand this is a, uh, a, a tandem project. We spent 21000 to date. Well, it says Is that what they designed? Yeah. <coughs> the number that was, that's in there is actually the available balance, not the expenditures. Survey. Total program funding is the available balance? The uh, the number where it says expenditures to date is actually should be the balance to date of what's left. Balance to date. It's wrong numbers picked. You guys will work on that for next year, I'm sure, to make it a little bit. Online it, Thank you. it just Survey. says okay. schedule okay. of activities and construction. Okay. I'm looking right here right now. I'm looking right here. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else on that one on the San Mateo? Going on to the road rehab on page 78. I do have a question on that. Okay. Um, this is done. This 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 CIP sheet is done. This is completed. We are now in the punch list, final punch list stage yeah. items. Well, we started Go ahead. The notebook. Yeah. Oh yeah, we we have we, an amendment. The, yeah. the amendment. original contract is done. Is uh, minor punch list and uh, rehabilitation and, and minor sod. Uh, we added the Northport Boulevard as an emergency paving to this contract because we have some money left over from what we added for that. Uh, issue with the pavement. So uh, we're, we're uh, going to be starting the paving of the Northport Boulevard uh, on next Monday. Okay. And then it will be completely done. This road rehab would be the cold water. The one we went out on the tour. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. That area. You might want to have your project manager go out and double check to make sure everything's done because I can tell you in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. they cleared a path along the road for the, the edge. sod not that wide it's not, and it hasn't is been sodded nothing okay and it, it's now getting its own side because of all the rain okay so we will have that sharing that with so you project savings yeah. great project savings <laughs> runoff area um so and notice i'm not saying a word there. guys yes i have <laughs> are you saying that the entire road rehab is done because i've gotten complaints about some sections no i just can't we're, remember we're saying where. the road rehab from that particular year's the, project is the restoration done. activities such as the mayor's mentioning about the siding is not completed throughout that's part of the punch list and the restoration and the issue with the side is like all over, when when we got, get the heavy rains, the sod fields go to its availability of getting it. So they're in the process of sodding now. I'm talking about the roads. Okay, the roads Is are done. It, the roads are done. Yes, ma'am. Because ma I've been the roads told are done. that there's an area, and I have to find the area that was not done. Okay. So yeah, no, no ma'am, the roads are completed. No, hold on. Not all the roads ago. in the whole city are done. That's what I was trying Just to clarify. Just in the project right. area. Just in We've the project had, it's area. It's a multi-year project that's broken into certain roads in certain years. That's that one's done. Thank you. Okay. So, so there are other roads for yes. next year yes. that are exactly. part of that project yeah, are that, every are, yeah. that every, are... Every year what we do is we identify around 45 miles of roads to rehabilitate. So this particular 2019 project area is complete. But we have other roads coming up for 2020, of course. That's what I wanted to clarify. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
All right, so next year there'll be a totally new batch of roads Correct. that'll be in their little zone that will be rehabbed. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yep. And do we even know what those are, we'll what zone those. that is? Yep, we'll get to those as we get to a different Would you project. please get us There's a project um, for this every year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, then, if you could get us a map or street names or something. Yeah, a usually link. we have or a, a map. list of roads. Or yeah, a list of roads or something or map or something. This way if somebody complains, it's like, yes, it's on the list. Yeah. I know there's like a, a search engine on, but it's a not very user friendly. Um, so, the, so the six million is what's going to be used this year for this road rehab. That is for 2019. We are finishing okay. that in this in this budget year. Correct. Okay. So what's for 2020? That will be. It's on page. Well, why am I looking at this then? Because I was asking Page a question. Page 78. I was asking a question on that. Forget it. I was asking if it was done, and I wanted to double check the area that it included, and then it brought to the question about the There's sign. another one on page 87. That's the 2020 road rehab project. Mm -hmm. There's another one on page 89, the 2021 road rehab project. Okay. So so, Mayor, for this project, we're still in the restoration for 2019. When we say it's done, the roads have been repaved, but all the restoration work and punch list items are not completed. Right. Yeah. That's what I just learned. wanted to clarify that's that. That's what I learned. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's why it's in here. So, the new projects are on 87 at $5 million plus, and... This is a water control. I think you said 85. Did you say 87 and 89? 89 is not. Where? 87 is all on um, 91. 91. So page 87 yeah, I is. Yeah, I see it now. So the 6000000 plus on 91 is a different area than the the five million plus on eighty seven. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Right. Yes, ma'am. And you will have both these areas completed within next year. Uh, for twenty, we're going to uh, twenty is going to spill over into twenty one. Mm -hmm. But twenty one, we will get completed in twenty one. Correct. Yeah, because we will yeah. try to see if we can get them uh, concurrent. Those we might probably we might end up doing those two together. Here's what my point is. Are you really going to utilize 11 million plus? Yes, ma'am. And more. Within the 2020 21 budget? Yes, ma'am. I will. It gets spent out before yes, it gets completed. Yes, ma'am. Because saying. I've got more roads to pave than I have money. So I can oh, assure yeah, you it will, it will be done. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That one, I can assure you. I still don't know why we aren't using some of that money to go towards the Tropic Care, but you said it wasn't even included in the in the study no it was not included in the road bond pro project when we did all the 266 miles of roads right right but it was not included in the routine maintenance road the routine annual maintenance either Seven. i'm still trying to get caught up on the roads what we call gap roads from the bond that we didn't have enough money to do the, in the area of the bond I've got two two years of roads left on that that I owe to the citizens. I've got to get those done. And in between, I've got roads that are failing. I'm trying to get those done. So that's, and that's what, one of the ones that Jerry was mentioning with Northport Boulevard. That's one of those examples. What about some of the roads that were done, but they weren't really done up to par, and they were part of the original bunch? The original bond roads. Uh, because, like, Lagami is one of the first ones that was re, redone, mm -hmm. and it's already failing. And that was only that, and Lagami that's what was, was Lagami. Lagami. This one, yeah, Lagami. Lagami. That was imposed in this one. <coughs> I don't know. I'm asking because it was like Lagami one of the very. Was done Lagami with, was done yeah, Lagami this year. was done with cold water and Zoratoa. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when what? Cranberry. Yeah, it's out on Cranberry. Yeah, correct. That was during yeah, that this year. was done this year. It was done yeah. this year. Yes, ma'am. Well, mm -hmm. someone needs to go look at it. Okay. All right. That's it for the road thing on that one. Sorry. 
Does anybody else have any other questions on road and drainage um, CIP sheets? Because I think we're to the point of sidewalk uh, rehab, restoration kind of stuff. Does anybody have anything else? Well, you're talking about well, all the CIP sheets in the road and drainage or just that one sheet we are just talking about? No, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just wondering. It seems like we're to the point where we're in year-by-year-by-year by year by year projects. Does anybody have any further questions for road and drainage CIP sheets? No, I don't. Uh, we, we're, we have the uh, sidewalk here, Price Boulevard, from Atwater to Barcelona. So what's your question? Uh, that's budgeted for this year, 296000 plus. It's page 79 on the CIP? Yep. Right? Yes, ma'am. Why are we, is it, I mean, Barcelona to Atwater, I've never seen anyone walking on, on price there. So I'm just wondering if this isn't something, I don't know what the justification for this is. Commissioner, if, if I may, um, this was at two years ago, the request of the police department. There is a bus stop located near there, and to keep the children off of the street, they asked that we have this section of sidewalk in on price. That's, that's the sec segment. I don't think they're still there, though, the bus stop. I think they moved all the bus stops off of price. We'll have to check. Yeah. Because if they move the bus stops off of price, they're not walking on price. And that can be part of the price widening project. And then that frees up 296000 plus. Can you we'll check come it. back by yes, July with information? Mm -hmm. Let's yes, get a consensus to have this discussion um, regarding bus stop in July, Commissioner Emmerich. Sure. Commissioner Carson? Yes. Myself, yes. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was just going to call your name. <laughs> Soon. And then... <coughs> Hillsboro Cranberry Intersection Improvements. That is getting shared costs, correct? Yes, ma'am. 50-50 with Charlotte County. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And then um, we have a multimodal path amenities design for a hundred, well, no, over a million dollars there. What for page are you on? Page 85. For what? From Ortez to Tuscola. But there's no pathway there. Yes. What, what, what's the plans here? This this is the direction of the commission for this um, multimodal path amenities design. And um, we have the budgeted amount is 115200 for design. We haven't spent anything to date. And so far, um, we're estimating the construction a little over a million, but that has that would come out of surtax, but that has not been budgeted yet. That's an unfunded amount. <coughs> going here, isn't that what you're asking for? No. Up Future here, you're funding up requirements. Here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, all we have is one hundred and fifteen thousand and two hundred. Yes, ma'am. That's correct for design only. Can I throw something out on that one? Sure. Um, I'd skip the gazebos, mm -hmm. especially on 41. Mm -hmm. <sighs> especially after what we learned after the senior yeah. center. And on 41, there's been issues, and I just wouldn't include gazebos. I will take those off. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be honest with you. I say skip the whole thing because a lot of this stuff could be uh, done through um, MPO. That's how we got what we got now. Mm -hmm. um, and 
some of it's going to be impacted by f dot so i personally say pull the 115 out of it um, keep it as unfunded um, with that uh, we just issue a task work order for the engineering firm to do the design and we have uh, our 115 budgeted and their uh, their budget for their cost estimate for doing the design came at 99 just short of 100,000 so the task work order will be I think that we even issued the, the task work order and, and we're having the the pre uh, <coughs> pre design meeting for them. So did you see sign a contract with them to do the design? No, they're under the the engineer library mm -hmm. that we have that for these minor designs. So are you legally obligated to follow through and have the design work done by them and spend the hundred thousand dollars? Well, we will have to or just call and cancel. We'll, 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 we'll check in. We'll that. check and see what the ramification is. So we will have another conversation on this in July. Um. Now, can I ask a question on that though? Since they're coming back with the answer and it could be July, um, if if they are available to cancel, is that the will of the board, or are we going to wait till July and make that decision? Because they could be in mid design by well, that that's point. That's a great point, Commissioner. You know, so we that's need to figure point. out. So, so if if we can cancel it, do you want it canceled? Yes, that's a, a great point. So <laughs> let's get a consensus that if they are able to cancel the contract, to go ahead and cancel and that contract, if they're able to cancel the project. Um, or their request for the design and the request for the design that yes they can then go ahead and cancel the the project and design cancel the project and design reship the money to uh, Tropicare's path and keep the project in unfunded so that it can find funding through MPO and other means yeah well it's got a million dollars future Ma future future funding I know but it's so needs to be in there for MPO Mayor, yeah. if I can yeah. make another suggestion, uh, perhaps if they've already begun the work, we would only pay them for the work completed and then cancel the remainder. Yeah. And that'd be fine. I mean, I, what if what they've done is $50,000 worth? Then you're kind of. Well, if you when, want. When did you put in the request? Hang, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. Hang on. Uh, I'll say three, four weeks ago. Oh, well, that could be in mid design or something. I don't know. Or maybe they, they didn't started. even have a pre design conversation yet. So. Oh, okay. Then. So maybe nothing. Then. Maybe, maybe nothing then. then. We'll, 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 we'll check. check. We'll check. Mr. Carasone, you said that if if you want it to be an MPO project, don't we have to have a shovel ready project for MPO no. to okay. Just want to double check. You're thinking of like road widening, but this is more of an aesthetic and safety mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. They claim it's safety. And Aesthetics and safety? Yeah, and we've gotten it in the past where they've paid for bus stops and shelters and sidewalks and yeah. those lightings every two feet. Oh, yeah, exactly, with very bright lights. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a consensus, Commissioner Emmerich? Yeah. Commissioner Carrison? Yes. I'm a yes, Commissioner Luke. Uh, Vice Mayor. Like leaving it in so for it to be funded later. Uh, so, but I'm fine with having the information brought back in, in July. This was to That's get consensus that if they can cancel the project and the engineer to continue working on it, do you want them to cancel the engineer work? The design part of the it. The design part of it. No. Oh. Okay. So consensus was three to one with uh, Vice Mayor um, voting no. Okay, can we get consensus that if it is canceled, that the money gets shipped to Tropicare Pathway, um, but leaving the project in as unfunded? So I have a question for staff on that, and that has bearing to do with how I voted last in the last set of questions. Uh, will MPO or anybody else fund you if you don't have um, a design or 
money in it? I mean, if it's just sitting there unfunded, will they still aid you? Well, the MPO has different buckets of, of money, safety funds, and they have uh, capacity improvement and, and, and um, tra transit. Uh, we will have to go after that and, and see if, uh, I know the safety fund is one of the ones that we can try to sell it as safety mm -hmm. improvements. And uh, that's, that's the, will be the, the best uh, route to take because those are the least competitive projects in that area. Uh, but a certainty of getting funding from them, uh, that's, that's nothing is certain with the MPO. Do they require criteria? Do they require that you have a plan, that you have money? Have is there, or do um, they fund you for everything? Usually with the MPO, want? if you have a shovel ready, that it's the plans is ready, it's just looking for money to break ground and build it. They, they look better in their grading scale. For if it's really? like we're looking for money to do the design and do everything, then they kind of uh, go down the list in the priority uh, in, in their eyes. When, but we, get, we can try. When we did US 41 corridor mm -hmm. between Biscayne and Northport Boulevard, right. did we have a design? No. Did we have uh, anything but uh, it wasn't even in the budget, correct? No, correct. It was not. Right. It was just a simple request, a line item in the MPO priorities. In fact, I think it was actually listed as 22. Yes, ma'am. You're correct. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was is money came available and we got that priority. Yes. Thank you. Which area? It's the every two foot lighting for those lines, the lighting. Kind and yeah. and the the, yeah. the sidewalk and the, sidewalk and and the gazebo, that. the yeah. entire they section. They approached us about the paved path. That's different. Yeah, that's that's a little different. She's talking about a long time ago with the whole lighting plan and all that, and the and the gazebo and. So, so let's get a consensus to shift the money from this $115,200, shift that money to the Tropicare pathway, keeping the CIP project for future funding of $1 million plus. Commissioner Armich? Yes. Commissioner Carousel? Yes. I'm a yes? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, she's not done shopping for money. Damn right. I know, and she's holding on to her purse. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just caught between the two of them. I know, right? City <laughs> facilities. <laughs> mm hmm Which one now? Which one? Page 83. 83. Yep, going and back. Phase two. That's public works. Right. Out of the road and drainage department. You have over seven million being budgeted. Where's that coming from? Is that all impact fees? Let me see here. Most of that's coming Most in twenty two. Um, that seven million is in twenty two, not we've only got about twenty two, I see. Nineteen and twenty one is two hundred and fifty thousand for the engineer design. Push it out by one year, put the two hundred and fifty thousand in the tropic air. No. Don't that worry, it's not going to get done until 2025. No, but we're in design right now, and we are also, uh, we just had an environmental study and also the archaeology study completed, and we're, there's a little strip of land for access. We're trying to work with the owner to get across, to hopefully to purchase it so we have access. That's on the property we own. I, I really need to do something. We are busting at the seams. I got people in trailers. I'm running out of parking for my equipment. It's, it's getting tough. We have the um, we have the alcohol hall. <laughs> still, still trying to sell that alcohol hall. <laughs> and I may have a new tenant. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of parking there for you to put your stuff. I might have a new business partner coming in with me. <laughs> with his big steel building. <laughs> you say something about purchasing land. No, we are we we own the land currently that that we're wanting to put the uh, phase two on. There's a small strip of land that runs in front Side that we need canal. to get access to oh, in, access in front to of the it. property that, we're, we, that we have. So we are in negotiations trying to purchase that. Privately owned? Privately owned, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, I'm just saying that, you know. Um, you can move Chuck over there. There's a pool. 
Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Took away my childhood memories, that child. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Just like that. As long as we're weeding through uh, the next page, 84, uh, that's setting us up to get that intersection or yes, whatever address. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm not even Yes, ma'am, that's, that that's setting that up. Oh my God, she's not taking money from that one. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. already, she did she ask. She asked. asked. Yeah. She asked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she already was she denied. Mm, no, I asked specifically if it was a shared cost, and it is. And they said yes, so there was no money a very available. Long time. Um, just like the high school light, I wouldn't touch that one either because I know that's a priority as well. Um, I've got one for you. Mm -hmm. If you go to page 94. I wasn't there yet, but I was getting there. Welcome sign on 41, and it's got $117,000. How about we scratch that project entirely and put that $117,000 in the Tropicare path? What page? 94. 94. That's where it was. Okay. Oh. Actually, yeah. I okay. would say in a different number. That's uh, all. I would like to do what you've been doing. Leave it in, but unfund it. This is something that we've talked about for years and years because it, that welcome sign was taken down. Mm -hmm. It showed all of the Kiwanis and the civil groups and mm -hmm. stuff, and it's I'm something that the citizens have been asking, so I would not remove it entirely. And that picture right there is actually it, the one that was removed, isn't it, Julie? That is it. Yeah, yeah I remember it. doing yep. the ribbon cut on it. there's the uh, solar panel. Mm -mm -mm. So I agree. So you want to leave it in? No, you take the two hundred and thirty seven thousand and six hundred out. No, there's not two hundred and thirty seven thousand. There's only hundred and seventeen thousand six hundred. The other oh, hundred and twenty is in next year. The hundred and twenty is for next right. year. For next okay. year. So we're just so gonna take one seventeen out, put it into the Tropic Air, leave the one twenty for next year, and yep. it's really a three hundred thousand dollars fine. Oh yeah, that's a monument. So, but yes, exception yes, people per when, you say, when you say next year, you really mean the following budget 22. year, right? 22. Okay, I just because when you say next year, I'm thinking next budget, which is what we're working on. So, the 117,600 from this monument sign would then go to Tropicare. I'm okay with that too. Let's get a consensus to remove 117,600 dollars for this fiscal year surtax funding for the welcome sign on 41 and apply that money to the Tropicare path. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. I didn't need to ask Carousel, but for the record, mm -hmm. Commissioner Carousel. <laughs> yeah. Myself, yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. All right. I think that we can get grants for as well, honestly, or something. Where to next? I don't think there's anything funded in the rest of these um, fiscal years or anything. I think they're all future, future, future. I was looking at the water. Sidewalk and pedestrian bridge on Woodhaven Drive. I think that's future, future. What page is that again? 93, and we have 120,000 in there. Not till now. We're designing it now. Um, Design. Trying to think where that is. Woodhaven. It's a sidewalk that goes Rock from Ridge. it dead ends and then goes to. Um, That's not the Cranberry area, no. is it? No, no, no. no. Up at Toledo Haberlin, Blade. Woodhaven, it's, Haberlin, East End. Yeah, it goes from Haberlin to Haberlin. Where, the, where Bobcat yep. Trail sidewalk ends. By by Toledo Blade. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. Bobcat Trail is. You know where the next nine, nine the next nine the golf next course nine used golf to be. Course. And Toledo Blade goes back there and wraps around to Haberlin. Okay. Why are we doing that? <coughs> Connect the... There's a gap. In the sidewalks. There's a gap. Yeah, yeah connect. And there's lots of kids and yeah. There is a lot of kids back there. there. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I thought, it does it go around the ni next nine? Yeah, it comes it comes from Toledo Blade, you know how you have Woodhaven, and then it goes wraps around out to Haverland. Mm -hmm. The reason why I ask that is what it 
Is that where that's where the golf course is? The commercial zoning is? Yeah. Remember years ago, the next nine, that one. Yeah. Well, until you don't play the little one, the little driving range. Right. One. But yeah. I remember years ago that they were supposed to be putting those up themselves. It wasn't supposed to be our responsibility to put the sidewalks up. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And they didn't do that. No. But they're finished. They sort of Farther closed. Yeah. 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 To start it, but no, they didn't. They didn't put anything in. They didn't. I think you are out of funding pages, there, ma'am. Oh wait, she's still got utilities. Let's... <laughs> Sorry, Rick. <laughs> no, different. I know. Um, I'm just. I'm just teasing. Is it possible that some of these maintenance and annual, so for instance, on page 96, when we talk about the bridge rehab and repair program, that there's going to be some cost savings? I mean, there could be. Well, we it's just, been, it's or it could be, you know. I'd nothing like to, for this year anyways, yeah. but I no. mean. All out in the future. It's not, it's probably not gonna be cost savings by then. I think I am out of options, damn it. All right, I'll have to go back through the others. Hmm. All right, I think uh, being nothing else to discuss. Going once, going twice. Well, All right, you got new Sold. numbers. Thank you, Run. thank you very much, with. thank you. Look forward to the conversation on Tuesday about that path. We'll have it ready. Numbers and, and making some final decisions so that we, we can get it reflected in the July uh, workshop. Okay. What yes, I would suggest bringing back is the changes that were made so that that multi-use path has now more money to it. I mean, there's got to there's got to be another half million to it that we have that total to compare okay. what can or couldn't be done. Okay. Right. That's yes, exactly what I, where I was going to go. You hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. All righty. Let's see where we are. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah, we're way I'll behind. I'll be back in a, in a moment. Huh? You're way behind. I know. We are now 45 minutes behind, way behind. Sorry, guys. Well, the um, next is utilities. It now is 2.33. Let's come back at 2.45 and do utilities. You're welcome. I need something to calm my blood pressure down.
for some reason tripled the first three numbers in that bottom right hand corner. We have no idea why. Um, we can't fix it, so it's being fixed for us. So I just wanted to see if that would suffice rather than type up a memo, send it to all three of you. It will be fixed by the July meeting. What but, uh, page? 73 page. So it, it's good catch, um, but I'm hoping that's one less memo that we'll have to write. Yeah, if I can just tell you that it's a glitch and it'll be fixed. Sounds great. Thank Every, you. Everybody sufficient with that, or do you guys want it still a memo? Because I think we had a consensus on that one. That was for the sheeted lot? No, this is for the price full of our wide yeah, but which one was true? All of it. The... The first, first three, three numbers items. in the bottom right hand corner, not the 40 oh. million, but the first three. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a 555 five, five or something. Well, no, then there's still a there. problem. How do you have $11 million in transportation impact fees when the only project has been budgeted to date of 7.4? We'll have it all fixed by July. It's, okay. It's just pulling the wrong number, pulling the numbers the wrong way. All right. So we'll see you corrected CIP sheet. Yes, ma'am. All righty. All right, so city manager, I guess we have utilities left, and then we'll take another no, Utilities is left. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, you're sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Rick Newkirk, uh, utilities director. Um, I'll try to make this short. Uh, I know it's been a long day, and I do realize there's another meeting um, for you folks again at five o'clock. So um, I've got 23 CIP projects um, on board, but. I'd like only to discuss uh, nine of them that pertains with the 2021 budget. The other ones are in way out years, um, and I don't believe we, unless you request to talk about them now. Uh, so what I'd like to do is start on CIP page 105, and, and that is the Mayakahatchee Creek, the water line from the water plant to Ortez. Uh, that project right now is in purchasing, ready to go out to bid. Um, so that project is unscheduled and it will be completed um, in 2021. The okay. next- Which page was that on? Uh, Ma'am, that would be okay, CIP 105. One. Right, thank you. Uh, the next one is CIP 106. Wait a minute. On, on that one, that's that looping project? Um, sir, that is, it, we, we've got a water line running from the water treatment plant to Ortez. Um, it runs in different segments, and once again, it's very similar to the San Mateo project. Okay, so from the water plant to Ortez, yes. not up and, and down Ortez. One straight 16-inch pipe instead of 12 to 6 to 4. Gotcha. One shot. Good enough, thank you. Uh, the next one is on page 106, which is our neighborhood uh, water and wastewater uh, line extensions. Um, that is out right now uh, to uh, our engineering firm, Giffels and Webster. We should be getting a report back from them very soon. That was delayed just a little bit because of the COVID. Um, so that put us back about a month. Um, and then once we get this put together, we will be requesting a workshop with you. This is to, to go out into the neighborhoods with the questions that we received from the commission. And so- from the neighborhoods, you mean like Madagascar or could, looping? It, they're prioritizing what, what areas oh, would okay. be the best. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, the next one will be on page 108. Um, we kind of touch base on this with Public Works. This is our water main on San Mateo and Price Boulevard to make that a one-shot one deal instead of breaking the pipeline up. And like I said earlier, we will be receiving 100% plans on them um, in the end of June. Uh, the next one I would direct you to uh, would be on page 112. Uh, this is, you, you'll see this again coming up in water. Um, we budget $50,000 a year um, in both of these accounts, and it's, it, it's in there for, uh, it's, if the city does projects or a developer does projects and we see that they only need a six-inch line, 
but we know in the future it would take a 10 or a 12. We have monies in there to pay to upsize that portion of the line. And uh, we use that, you know, as needed basis. <clears throat> uh, the next one would be on page 113, which is the water pipeline, uh, what the, the pipeline on the, on the bridges, not replacing bridges, replacing the water, the water line on this one. And this is for uh, the Haberlin, Woodhaven, and Toledo Blade project. This is for design only. What we do is we, we design several bridges in one year and then go ahead and construct in the following years. The next one I direct you to is page 114, which is water distribution improvements. Um, this one has already been, been, been designed. It's sitting on the shelf. We're asking for funding in 2021 to construct um, Hartsdale Street, Aldovan, and Totem Avenue. And once again, it's already been designed, shovel ready, just need to construct it. May I ask? Is this the looping projects? Pardon me? Is this looping projects, the, the, it's, the connecting, connectability looping projects, whatever yes, you guys call it? Dead ends, yes. Okay. And what so we this, have is we, we, we have a number of projects, and be, every year this will come into place, um, and we prioritize. We, we know where we do most of the flushing and just dumping that water on the ground. It's, 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 mm -hmm. it's expensive. So you said it's... it's uh, Hartsdale, Hartsdale, Aldovan, and Totem? Totem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have those citizens been notified that this is going to be coming up in the next year? N not as of yet, but they will. But it, when do you notify them? Well, I'm kind of hoping uh, I don't want to notify them until I get the budget passed. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, get, I get that. So. Whoa. Um. Okay, smarty pants. <laughs> did, I, I, I didn't mean it that way. Yes, you did. <laughs> I don't mean to be, I, I didn't mean to be, I, I didn't mean it that way. No, it's all good. Penny made it's me do good. it. No, I, once the budget is, is passed. We will do it right away. Okay. Well, I, I can I jump off that? Because I agree with you. I know that they're doing something over in the Chamberlain area, and they literally only got information within weeks of the project. But I think that was, I think that was the ditches. That wasn't you. Guys. That wasn't us. Yeah, that wasn't you. That was my <laughs> favorite on my shit list. No, road and drainage. The last one we did was the Janine. No. <laughs> we almost made it. <laughs> what? No cursing? Yeah. Oh, no, that was so three hours ago. Oh, no. no. <laughs> no, before you started to give me a headache, okay. <laughs> Actually, no, it wasn't you. It That's right. <laughs> it was. It was the dig out of the ditches. Yeah. They only got like a three. Yeah, week the last one we did, um, Waterline, was Janine, and they were notified months yeah. in advance. Um, the next one I'll direct Can your I, attention. I'm sorry, before you move on. <coughs> So I appreciate you're going to be notifying them, but are you advising them of the financial impact that this looping project is going to give them a year or so later when they are required to hook up? That will all be, we, we have a generic uh, letter that we sent out, that we send out, um, and it does explain that, Jennifer? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Jennifer DeRoche, Assistant Utilities Director. Um, we let them know that we're coming in to do the project, but we're, what you're asking about specifically is the 365-day notice um, that requires them to connect. Um, so we don't actually send that out until you know the project is, is complete and in service. And actually, um, we've delayed that um, you know several times based on commission direction or you know, um, years ago, we had commission direction in 2010 to delay that, and then y'all delayed it when we went and did the Madagascar project. Um, so it really just depends on the requirement comes into play when we actually give them notice that they are required to connect within 365 days. So it really depends on whether we're given that direction to move forward with that 
by commission. But if they build on a vacant lot, they are required immediately, correct? New construction, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you. Uh, the next one I would direct you to page 115. That is the Ortez uh, water main um, to re replace that water main. Sarasota County is replacing that bridge. And um, if, you, if you look at that picture down at the bottom, you, you can see our pipe right there. Uh, that pipe is gonna have to be relocated um, due to the expansion of that bridge. Um, that pipe right now, what, we're gonna go one step further with this. That pipe right now is an eight inch pipe. And we do know that in the future, possibly the near future, there'll be water and sewer extended out to warm mineral springs, which would require a 12 inch water main there. So why are, while we're in the process of removing and replacing this pipe, we will go ahead and pay to put the 12 inch pipe in. So it will be all ready for when it comes time to do the warm mineral springs water and sewer extension. It'll already be in place and done. Is this going underneath? Yes, ma'am. It will yeah. be directional drilled underneath the canal. Thank you. That well, All of our bridges we do nowadays, we are removing them from all bridges and placing them underneath the water. So you're going down underneath and then back up? Yep. Mm-hmm. Hmm. How interesting. This way it's not even visible. Oh, I just, you know, just was found that interesting. That there's that kind of technology these days. That's cool. And actually the city. So what happens if it breaks underneath the the water way? The, you're gonna, the, the you'll just water you, you'll have to shoot another line underneath it. So how do you know? You look for the bubbles. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> Pretty much as the commissioner said. Really? Uh, now, one thing about the pipe that's being placed underneath, it's, um, I think it's one of the city manager's favorite saying, it's HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. And, and um, it, it's actually, it's a solid piece of pipe where the majority of your PVC pipe comes in 20 foot sticks. Um, this is melted and fused together. so. It is one solid piece okay. of pipe. Thank you. The only thing I was going to add, Mayor, to that was if you go down uh, Cranberry, uh, down by 41, we just did um, one under the water on the Cocopunk Canal. And on both sides of the um, project, <coughs> there's signs up there that, in, that direct anyone who sees anything that looks a little odd to contact us because that is our pipe under there. So it's pretty neat. Cool. Advertising. The things you learn in budget. Uh, the next page I direct you to is page 116, Myakahatchee Creek uh, Water Treatment Plant Improvements. Um, this is a, it, it, it's a multi-year project. And when you're talking about water and wastewater plants, it's continued upgrades. Of all, every year things got to be done. Um, in this particular one right here, we did that structural analysis and they gave us different sections to do on the pipe. Um, so this one will be uh, work to include work on filter improvements, rehabilitation of the flash, flash mixer, and rehabilitation of flock basin number two, and rehabilitation of the clear wells, wells and pump room. And the last one um, I have to speak about is the waste wa wastewater treatment plant improvements. Um, that is a project that goes out, oh, page 118, I apologize. You. Yeah, you've been going really good until, until then. Until then, yeah. I know. That's normally how it happens with me. It's you okay. skipped 117. Was it funny? Uh, 117, um, yes, I'm sorry. 117 is just like the Wastewater side, that is a project that we budget $50,000 every single year um, for developer needs or city needs to pay for oversizing. Um, so on page 118, um, the wastewater treatment plan improvements, uh, that is the replacement of clarifier number three, rehabilitation of the headworks, 
um, the helipress, uh, the bar screen replacements, and coating of the 2.5 million gallon reclaimed water storage <coughs> tank. And all the rest of the projects are out in many, many years. So um, that is the end of my CIP, and I got myself and my staff here to answer any questions you may have. Fantastic. Anybody have any <coughs> questions? Me? I do have one. One. Okay. One. It's a biggie. Uh, utilities building, the admin building that um, didn't get in mm -hmm. get, didn't get done in Talon Bay. Yes, um, I can tell you the stages we're at in that right now. I would now. appreciate that because I, I'm just I want to make sure that this doesn't wait die. ten years. Oh, yeah. believe you me, um, this no. is you know uh, we've been working on this a long time, and mm -hmm. my my major goal was. Um, as you all know, I am in the drop plan, and I would love to see this building, me be in it while I am still employed with the city. Um, otherwise, uh, you may have to hire me as a sub-consultant or something <laughs> just to come in so I can In other words, it. you're not going to go anywhere until this is done. Uh, until okay. it's done. Yeah, I um, do believe we did away with consultants. <laughs> <laughs> Just Could you please give us an update? I would be unpaid. Grateful. unpaid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, unpaid. Okay. The, the update of that is there, we're looking at three different uh, parcels of land. Uh, they've done a heat map. And, um, you know, it's funny. We even asked that. We have a meeting tomorrow with our consultant at 10 o'clock um, to go over all of that, to put it together. Um, once it's, we get everything put together and I meet with the city manager, um, I believe the direction that I would wish to go is um, a workshop on that with the commission um, to get direction on, on, on what way. It'll be very similar with a few changes to the last time that our consultant presented to you. And the last time we presented to you was several different pieces of land, why we thought it was the best and all the calculations. So we have done that, and we've added some other pieces of property into the equation. So like I say, we meet with them tomorrow um, at 10, and to get a, a much better, clearer update of where they're at and what pieces of land and everything like that. And then I will be meeting with the city manager, and I believe the next steps then would be to meet with you folks to get direction on where to go. But this project is right at the top of my radar list. Okay. Um, the money that's already been allocated, the $13 million, um, so basically, are, are you, those parcels, are they city parcels, city-owned parcels, or are they parcels we'll have to purchase? Uh, um, right now, there are two city parcels that's okay. um, in the equation, okay. and that's what they did, their, their feasibility, their study on, um, to see, but um, I do know there there are two city-owned properties, but I'm sure you, somebody's going to want to make me pay for them somehow. Well, okay, so if but, we went with the city-owned parcels, it's uh, it's easier to purchase in-house parcels than out of house. I get that. Um, my bottom line question is: There's no money in for this year's budget. Are you? If you get the green light and you horse trade these parcels, um, you probably would be going to design of the building. I just want to see, do you need money? Is there money available for this year to keep this project going? Well, actually, we, we've got set aside right now $16 million. I see 13. Oh, thir 13. Okay. So do you need to set money aside for this fiscal year because there is none. You know, that $13 million isn't a project, it will roll over. Okay. So it, it's it's fully funded. So the whole project, construction, design, permitting, everything is fully funded with $13 million? Uh, d design, land, construction, and equipment oh. uh, for the $13 million. Okay. Do I was unaware that it's steel building. <laughs> I was... It was hey, there's the algo. No. Over <laughs> <laughs> there in that area, it might work. I'm going to make her go over there. 
I'm going to push over there. Uh, Commissioner Armrich. On, on these properties, do you, and I'm not asking for exact location, but approximate location within the city, where, where might they be? Um, one of them is next to Public Works on Price Boulevard. Um, the other one is a piece of property um, that the city owns off of River Road. Okay. 63 acre park? Is that? No. 30. Okay, well, we'll just have to. No, keep no, we, this can, we can go with that. I'm just looking I, for. I, I, I do know it's off of River Road. Okay, we'll, we'll keep the suspense until that meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Anything else for utilities, guys? No, Great presentation. Um, I, I wish we had more questions for you. All right. I'm kind of glad you he don't. Doesn't. But <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you for the update, too, on the project. Julie wishes she had it that easy. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Julie's always wishes she had it that easy with us. <laughs> no. All right, so city manager, we're finished. Um, but I do have um, a couple questions that I wanted to ask based on the information that um, we had been given in these past three days. Um, one of them was Fleet. Fleet gave us a sheet. And on that sheet, I noticed that there were three vehicles that got totaled. I was unaware of that. I just want to make sure. Are those employees okay? Yes. Okay. Everybody's okay with the, the... Everybody's okay at this point. Fantastic. So then I now... Good news. Um, did we get reimbursement from any other insurance companies or parties involved? Or we is have it... some from our own insurance. Um, I believe at least one of them, if not two of the total vehicles, were... Both vehicles involved were ours. Um, I know. So, you know, when we crash into ourselves, we... We crashed into each other? It, it may have happened. Um, <laughs> Oops. So, okay. Do you not want to go there? No. Do you I really think not. I would want no. to go there? <laughs> they right. want them to crash into each other, but... <laughs> it Didn't happens. know anything about it. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> the person might have told you who they work for. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad the employees are well and, and they're not hurt. Thank you for that. Um, speaking of employees, how is Mr. Victor? Is he well? Is he home? When's he, he coming is, back to work? He's in the rehab. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a charge in four departments, and I'm sorry I didn't ask this. It's a general question um, about copies made. Um, IT, HR, Aquatics, and Parks Maintenance char has in their budget line items charges for copies. No other department has items for copies. So I've always thought that when you lease the equipment, copies were included. No, you pay a, co a, you pay a per copy charge also. Okay, so then why don't the other departments pay for Because they all copy? lumped it into their rental and lease line. Ah, gotcha. You can... Break it out into two, or you can just it's okay. a copy your. I just was curious because some had it, some didn't. I wanted to get yep. clarification, so thank you for that. Uh, I already talked about the Veterans Park, War Mineral Springs, Kids Day at the Pool. Um, a couple of years ago, we had asked for a community fund so that if a youth baseball team made state and they wanted to go to state or they made nationals, they we would have some money set aside because they're actually being ambassadors for our city um, on some stage that is outside of our general area. And we had asked to create a fund for that kind of activity. Um, I think it was, somebody was going to Rome, is what um, was coming into my mind. Um, and the I, band. Huh? The band. The band, the yeah, I think it was. Um, I don't know if they went. Um, but I was just wondering, is that something we can still do? Um, maybe using our contingency fund that has fifty thousand dollars, make that like forty-five or forty-seven thousand dollars, and put three thousand dollars into something like that for our youth. I would think you could just pull it out of the contingency fund. I mean, if if the commission says, "Hey, we'd like to give them three yeah. thousand, you just pull it out. You don't have to. Separate. You don't have to have a line item for something like that. 
conversation about that. We did have a conversation, but it didn't happen. Billing numbers, gotcha. Okay. I see the comment. I'm sorry, I didn't get it through. So we have a policy that's coming to you all. It's been to legal for review. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question that was outstanding that we just answered. So it will be coming to you all for review here in the very near right. future. Excellent. So I will not cross that off our list of directions until after we have that conversation. Thank yep. you. All right. That's all I got, guys. Um, I don't know, City Manager, I know we're supposed to be giving you direction at this point. I think you've accomplished that all throughout the rest I of the think <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I think you got a bunch of direction. I think we, we did it line time. by line, by <laughs> item by item, all through this whole meeting. Um, I don't know, Vice Mayor, do you have anything, any follow-up questions or anything that you may have overlooked during your Q&A? No, uh, everything that I had thought of before, I believe, has been touched on. This has been an intriguing workshop day for me. Um, this is where all the commissioners get together. And even though they might have pet projects or whatever, we have to work together and look at the priority for the citizens. And so um, I hope anybody viewing that sees that in the end, we do come together with priority. And we can change things that staff brings to us and alter those types of things because of projects that have been thought of or in the works for years and years, and the need just keeps growing and growing. So um, actually, I've enjoyed it, and I'm never going to get in the way of Vanessa when she wants money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Commissioner Armrich, did you have any last minute follow up questions or um, comments or anything? No, uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that the people out there that, that view these proceedings are learning as, as we are going on and seeing how and why things are done and just not assuming certain things. There are procedures and policies that must be followed. It does take a long time for some process to take place, i.e. the tropic air area, and it is a need. We're, we're working on getting that, and we're, we're accomplishing it. It, and, and it's between us and staff making sure that it gets done. And just because we know that these items are priorities and they've been on the books for years and years, we're not increasing the millage in order to accomplish those projects or those priorities. We're taking from here, there, doing whatever, setting it in a priority system instead of saying, oh, yeah, we want this. And so... And, and I had that conversation with the city manager right before, right when we were at break, and we are currently right on track at keeping the millage at exactly the same as last year with no increase. So I think staff really needs the applause for cutting back and going through their budgets, making sure that they have everything that they need going forward and making it a little bit easier on us making those decisions. You know, we know things need to get done, and they're getting it done. And it, it is the staff here that made that happen this year. I agree. Commissioner Carison, do you have any last-minute questions or comments or anything? I agree. I think you got to thank staff. But I, I think you also, because I don't know if, I can necessarily say with 100% certainty that we're giving them all of the tools that are necessary to get what this commission asks of them. Um, I think that if we, if we actually evaluated it and gave them all the tools that accomplished our requests in a timely manner, you'd be looking at a whole lot more hike <laughs> in taxes than what we saw last year. So I don't want to put that onus on our, our um, employees. What I do believe is that our staff has worked diligently and most importantly, our city manager has worked diligently in making sure that he came in in a budget that we had um, asked for that was 
stabilized that came in in the same millage and I think that that really um, says something and um, we've cut a few things nothing of great you know large quantities that's going to make a big difference we did a lot of shifting um, which allowed it to, to stay revenue and expenditure neutral but I think that uh, all in all this commission did a very, very good job in really analyzing this budget. And I, I really do feel bad that I wasn't a part of this portion last year because I was dealing with a death. And, um, but I'm really very proud of this commission because what's, what's put out there um, is not true. And it's not accurate, and it's not how governmental budgeting works. Um, and with that said, I want to say I'm very proud of our staff, of our city manager, of everyone who works every single day to make sure that the tax dollars that are spent from our residents are absolutely justified in every way, shape, or form. Um, kudos to you. Because I know that this is not a staff or a management or an administration that just goes in and thinks they have a blank checkbook. If anything, they rein us in. And that was seen with the police department uh, and, and their needs. But yet we knew that there were more needs than what was presented. So I just want to make sure that those naysayers out there, those people who believe that things should be done a certain way and that you can coincide and co-mingle um, you know monies from from different departments and uh, why can't we just get rid of everybody and outsource it doesn't work that way folks and and you know educate yourself before you go believing everything on Facebook um, this city manager is a phone call away an email away and learn Learn, learn, learn. I have taught kids over and over again, and I always tell them the same thing. Don't believe what people tell you. Do your own research. And I beg the Northport populace to do the same. Because yes, you're gonna see an increase, but no, it's not because the city commission makes $90,000. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, there went my new Mustang. That's it. So the only thing I want to say is I want to thank staff. I know how hard it was not only to prepare this budget within the confines that we gave you, um, but to do it at the same time you're learning a whole new system. Um, so I, I, I recognize how difficult that was. And to get us the books ahead of time more than just a couple of days, I was so yes. happy. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, it, it, you guys have been working on this for months and to give us only three days to go through it is, is grossly unfair and I'm so glad that you guys recognize that, especially with the huge learning curve with this new system. Um, so I, I want to say thank you for that. Um, thank you, City Manager, for following the direction that we gave to keep it at the current millage rate, not to raise anything, um, but still meet the needs that need to be done in the city. Um, that's really all I have to say, but at the same time, I am going to give a personal shout out to my fellow Commissioner Carousel. Um, this is your last budget cycle. Amen! <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you because of your previous experience and your previous um, budget cycles you've gone through. You, you were a teacher to me, and I want to personally thank you for that. Well, so. um, phone call away. Not that I'd answer, but you can try. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you, Commissioner Carazone. Uh, Commissioner Carazone did bring up something when she was talking about the commission. And I, it would behoove anybody coming into this seat that you go back and you look at what happened in the past, uh, say four years before you come in. Uh, I came in late behind you guys but I didn't know the full history of where budgeting, millage rates, and stuff happen 
the two years. Oh, yeah, I saw the number. Right. But I didn't know. I mean, I had to ask the city manager this year, why does this book say that, and why does this say this? Why is this for three years prior to me coming in? And he explained the history to me. I am extremely proud of where we are at as a city right now at this point in time. I did not realize how far behind the eight ball we were in 2017. Had no idea. Found out the history and to go in three years time to where we're balanced and we can do and accomplish what we're accomplishing this year with COVID and everything else that's going on, I'm proud. And the next commission's coming in, they got a whole lot brighter future. <laughs> <laughs> to their budget workshops than what we were faced with. So they also have big you. shoes to fill. Very big. Let's not forget that. And big. and FYI, we're not going bankrupt. <laughs> I did read that. I went, what? <laughs> so as we close this uh, budget workshop, I just want to remind everybody that we get to do it all over again in July. Oh, um, and we are not for everybody that's out there listening, the media, we are not raising your millage rate double digits. All right? I cannot stress that enough. One more time before we close, City Manager, do you have anything that you would like to add, and then we'll adjourn? Oh, you guys covered most of it. Like I say, I mean, I have a great team behind me. They make this job a lot easier by doing you know, not only what you all request, but what I request. I told everybody going into this, I said it last year, I said even more stressfully this year, that this was going to be a lean year, that the direction was to leave the millage rate. It wasn't changing, it was not going up. The millage rate did not go up. Departments reined in everything they asked for. Um, they truly, I believe, for the most part, asked for needs, not wants this year. Um, you all acknowledged that, I believe, at the very beginning of this, that you were presented with a very lean budget. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that, and I thank the team that I have behind me that helped us get there. Um, I am so glad I'm not in finance anymore because <laughs> I didn't have to learn this new software and institute it. Um, I just got the pleasure of having them do it. So, <laughs> but I do think Kim paid me back on day one. Lachette. Here, you get to make the presentation. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I did notice that. But, it was uh, an awesome presentation, though. <laughs> fortunately, all I had to do was give it. I didn't have to make it. So, but... No, we, we have a great team, and I, like I say, I appreciate the direction you all gave us, the ability to go through this book without a tremendous amount of pain this year. Um, we worked hard to get you something I think that you all can be proud is adopt, adopted, gives our community what they need without cutting back. Um, no, we're not going bankrupt. Um, yeah, thank you. The, I, <laughs> we have worked hard over the last many years <coughs> to get to where we are. We have continually gotten ourselves in a good financial position that will always be a priority of mine I think you all know that um, and with that like I say, just thank you for where we are excellent seeing nothing else city clerk city attorney uh -oh. finance oh public comment public record or public I saw you wave your hand and I'm like that's right public comment you say someone's saying nope. we're going bankrupt man no public, no comment? public comment excellent Alrighty, guys, it is 3.27. We'll see everybody back here at 5 o'clock. Wait, what? Bye, everybody. No, 5 o'clock.